the best chess players in the NFL are getting ready to compete for bragging rights and for charity. This is Chess.com's Blitz Champs Tournament, and it starts right now. Welcome in, everyone, to Chess.com's Blitz Champs Tournament. I'm Danny Wrench. I am joined for the next six hours by former NFL lineman, avid chess player, good friend of mine, mathematician. What else can we say about the man, John Urschel? John, are you excited to be here? I think you've already said too much. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be here, excited for a bunch of really fun chess games. I'm, I'm really excited to see what these players do. John, you were in the NFL for three years. How, how popular was chess in the NFL locker rooms and around? We see all these, all these guys playing chess these days, especially on chess.com, but how popular was it while you were in the league? I think incredibly popular. At least when I was with the Ravens, a lot of guys would be playing chess. If I had to pick a board game that like was most popular, 100% chess. They're not playing checkers. They're not playing Othello, so... But well, I was going to say, at first, you know, board games, not the highest bar. It's nice, but they are playing chess, at least not checkers, not not Othello. Are there other board games you would even play, you know, besides besides chess? But um, yeah, Go Go doesn't really show up in a NFL locker room. I mean, it's it's not the highest bar to cross, but it's it's a bar. So, okay. yeah, okay, a well, lot well, of a lot of chess with friends. You know, it's the, the gateway drug to chess. Well, for those who don't know John, I, I know it's uncomfortable for you that I, you know, talk so talk so great about you and brag about you, but we have to remind everybody of who you are. Uh, the bio of uh, John Urschel, he's an MIT mathematician, currently a Harvard Junior Fellow. He's a former NFL offensive lineman, three seasons with the Ravens. Uh, you were an All-American at Penn State. You got, you got a Penn State guy in this event today and Micah Parsons, so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. And you're also... You know, you're 1850 at Rapid, but let's be honest, you know, when things are clicking and you've got yourself a Catalan, you're definitely better than 1850. I'm going to say that. What do you think? I think I'm a little, I'm a little rough around the edges. It's, it's been a minute since I've been, uh, since I've played some chess, you know, okay. it's also been a minute since I've been, uh, since I've been on a chess.com stream, you know? That's true. And you you used to, you know, you John has his own streaming channel. We're not going to put pressure on him to launch that again. But John, John was was uh, regularly streaming chess there for a while. And you've been busy, you know, who knows with family and you know, you've got you've got a whole, uh, you know, whole mathematician job, career you know, that know. you're that you're doing. But um, all right, well, Let's dive in. Let's remind everybody of what we're going to do here this weekend. This is Blitz Champs, as we said. Uh, the first time we've had a tournament for just NFL superstars, but it's a format that we use often when we're when we're doing events with celebrities. Those of you who know and love Pog Champs, you'll recognize that we're breaking the players into two groups here, A and B. Uh, you get three points for winning a match outright, two if it's a tiebreaker, win one just for getting to a tiebreaker. And then the time control is, is pretty popular for, for this type of format. It's not too fast but not, not too slow either. So it's exciting and we get the job done. John, as some of you said, you're kind of rusty right now. Here's a bunch of guys jumping into a, a high stakes tournament for charity with a pretty fast time control. Your thoughts on how they'll handle that kind of time management with the 10, five control there. Yeah. It's an interesting time control because we really have a diversity of players. We have some players who really play a lot of blitz. They're used to fast chess. And then we have guys like Larry yeah. who really are more correspondence guys. And so it's going to be interesting to see how both types of players adjust to the rapid time control. Yeah. You know, the blitz players need to slow down, think about their moves, blunder check, but also Larry's going to have to move quickly and not get behind on the clock. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to talk a lot about what these guys are all on chess.com regularly, but as John is saying, Larry is a guy who seems to only play correspondence when you look at his account. So how is he going to adapt to it? Obviously my bias, you know, will be there as a, as an Arizona sports kid rooting for the legend himself, but we'll, we'll see how he handles it and everyone else but speaking of not just larry all the players in this event let's look at who our nfl players are uh for those of you who maybe didn't know or haven't followed the hype for this event building up we've got six nfl superstars starting with group a john amari cooper jadobi awuzie and then cave on thibodeau who are you most excited to see throw down as group a kicks things off so i've been doing a little bit of scouting of the six players and i have to say i'm really most excited to see amari Amari's an aggressive player. He gets after it with both the white and the black pieces. 
And I think we might see a little bit of fire on board today. So I'm I'm really excited to see Amari's games. But- and I'll give Amari some some behind the scenes credit for those who don't know. I mean, there obviously a lot went into putting this event together, but Amari has been a guy who has been super pumped about this from the beginning as, as early as a several months ago. He's on chess.com all the time and he's taken lessons. And uh, so he he is pumped as far as stylistically. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what he what he does. Uh, but um, but yeah, Amari, Amari is definitely pumped. Uh, then after Group A, the next three players you're going to want to get to know. As you see, we have Eric Armstead. We have Micah Parsons, Penn State. Well, I'm going to ask John who he's rooting for in this group, but I'm not going to need him. You know, I'm, I'm not going to. Not, not much of a secret there. Not much of a secret there. These Penn State guys stick together. And then Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, before I let you talk about, about Micah Parsons and, and Larry, if you want to, let's just give a shout out to Eric Armstead real quick. For those, uh, Eric was online this morning playing rapid games. He played 30, more than 30 rapid games today in a single morning preparing for this. John, have you ever played 30 chess games in a single day? Not just rapid, chess games. No, it, it's crazy to me. It's, the question is, is he actually on the West Coast? Because it's it's like one o'clock Pacific right now. <laughs> Has he just been, did he just like wake up early like it's game day? Like, I want to know what's going on over there. No, seriously. And and again, you'll see his username and you guys will fact check that because we know our we know our viewers. They'll be like, wait, well, let me check that. It's it's been amazing. So he's clearly getting ready. Also, again, talking about Eric, who's kind of stole the storyline in that group B. He was supposed to have a one hour lesson this week, John, with Benjamin Bach, mm-hmm. Grandmaster, who, by the way, made the RCC final earlier. Shout out and congrats to, to Benji. Oh, he did. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. He made the I, RCC I saw final. his commentary last week. I loved it. Yeah. But but he ended up turning that one hour lesson into a four hour lesson with Bach just a couple of days ago. So he's he's pumped, Mr. Eric Armstead. Um, but all right, so let's let's take a look at what the schedule will be there. Um, Eric, like Micah and Larry, will be kicking off later. But we kick things off in Group A. We have Chidobi Awuzie, Kayvon Thibodeau. They will be the first matchup. They're already here. Amari Cooper showed up super early. He'll be throwing down in Game Two. Chidobi has a back to back. Chido knows he knows he's got two games back to back, as his username is on Chess.com. And then you have Kayvon Thibodeau and Amari Cooper rounding things off for Group A before we'll we'll head over to Group B. So. Uh, I would ask you which uh, which matchup we're, we're watching here, which one we're super pumped about, John. But I think we know we got the we got the uh, the players ready and the first matchup, Shadobi versus Kavon, right? It's going to be yeah, exciting. I'm excited for the first one. It's uh, it's going to be a good one. It's uh, it's well, a here fun we are. Clash of styles. Got them, I've noticed they're uh, they're both sporting sunglasses. We see yeah. they're talking to each other there. I love that. They're ready we, to go. I see Cheeto has a uh, has a nice necklace with his with his own name, so he'll never lose it. If he loses it, they know <laughs> He'll never lose it. bring it back to. Also, we see that Kayvon is sporting a background there. It looks like a Zoom background that he's got with. Uh... Okay, so they're taking a second to add each other as friends, we've been told. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, then the games will be kicking off. So just hold your horses. But we're not in a rush here because we're going to have a lot of fun. The dr- the his His charity is the dream with a J. And so you see it right now. Kayvon just moved over to take a bite of those. Probably some, I don't know. Maybe a salad. What do you think? I, I'm gonna guess salad. You know, okay. he's in training. Keep gotcha. it, keep it light. Maybe some cold cereal. Maybe he enjoys a bowl of cold cereal. That doesn't look like a cold cereal chew. You're right. That, that <laughs> looks like it could be a salad chew, though. You know, this is like, oh, I just, you know, I finished OTAs, finished mini camp, getting ready yeah. before training camp. I gotta, gotta make sure I'm lean. Yeah. We've yeah. got okay. So we'll we'll ask him maybe, but just because I want to say on that note, we will be interviewing all the players. So for those tuning in who are you know, fans of these guys, your fans of the NFL, we're going to get to know all of them and talk to them about their love of chess, how they got into the game, and maybe even hit them with some some, some surprise questions about their upcoming seasons and all the things that uh, that we might expect. Kayvon, obviously a lot of lot of talk about him in New York, right? He's a new New York Giant. And then you've got Shadobi Awuzie coming off a good Super Bowl, even though his team lost. A good Super Bowl performance by him individually. So, um <laughs> Anyway, let's let's meet all the players and talk about their their ratings real quick. We we showed you how the groups are broken down. Let's just show everybody, John. And any of those ratings jump out to you as far as a surprise um, no, in regards to how they stack up? If anything, I'm surprised how tightly grouped they are. I'm surprised how close all six of them are. And it's it's going to be interesting to see who's a little underrated because some of these players haven't really played so many rapid games, so. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not clear. If I had to guess, and I know it'll, you know, for the uh, 
in the interest of just being accused early of being biased uh, for Larry. Larry, oh, Larry plays lots of daily chess games on chess.com correspondence because he likes to have dozens of games going at a time if he can. So it's that's going to be an interesting thing to see. Is he really the lowest rated player in the field or is he just not thrown down in rapid uh, to really show his chess strength? He's putting up about 1400 plus in, in daily chess. So anyway, so that that's the one that I think sticks out to me as uh, an outlier. Um, all right, I'm going to make my prediction then. I, I'm i going to say Cheeto okay. is going to be someone to watch out for. We'll, we'll see. All right, so we'll, we'll see. Let's talk about what we're playing for. We'll uh, be watching out for that as this event goes on. First place is 25 grand for the charity of their choice. That's a pretty meaningful, a meaningful dono. Um, we'll talk about all the different charities the players chose as the event goes on. Um, and then even last place, 10 grand, 10 grand to their charity just for showing up and playing and uh, pretty excited to, to help these guys in their charities. They're excited to do it as far as what they're playing for. Um, and there, there's the list in front of you, Micah, your, your Penn state guy, he'll be the only guy that we, we say, Hey man, what's the charity you haven't picked yet, but otherwise um, some awesome charities chosen by all these guys, John. Yeah. And if he's in doubt, I can, uh, I can give him a multiple choice for some Penn state charities. Okay. I'll have some at the ready. <laughs> There you go. The Penn, the Penn State charity uh, alum there. All right. Well, um, yeah, we're getting getting excited here. You know, okay, so you mentioned Cheeto as um, the guy who you think is maybe the, the outlier. Cheeto's probably going to be, if things go according to plan, be our first interview um, mm -hmm. as far as um, we're going to be catching up with all of them. And he's a guy who I think – he so this is a funny story he burst onto the scene for us as far as recognizing just how long he had had account on chess.com an account and how active he was when we found out that joe burrow was playing on the site we sort of oh, dove okay. into to the story around joe uh who was playing actively and and still is all the time um and there was an article written i think for sports illustrator something about joe bringing chess into the locker room and we learned that really it was cheeto who got joe into chess and he he doesn't lose to his teammates very often. Cheeto's better than Joe. He been, and he would definitely probably tell you that. Uh, but he's the guy who got Joe Burrow on Chess.com. Okay. Wow. This is this is high praise. So he's a he's a Chess.com OG. We're gonna see how he does in this first game. I gotta say, I I looked at some of his games. He's a he's a big center type of guy. I'm expecting some like E4 C3 out of him, trying to take control of the center. So we'll see see what happens. Okay. Yeah. There you go. He's got uh, he's sporting the Colorado. For those who don't know, he went to the University of Colorado, and I think, I think we have I think we have liftoff here. Oh, we have liftoff. Okay, look at that. We've got we've One got action, E3 everybody. by Kavon. E three and then D four. Interesting. Out early. Okay, taking with the queen, which is it is a little early, but okay. Interesting opening. Sort of. Uh, Larry, Larry, in his comments about chess, talked about how valuable the queen is. The queen is the most important piece, like your quarterback in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So you got to be a little careful with her. I don't know that Kayvon has gotten that tip yet. It'll maybe be like NFL legend giving a tip to the rookie, like, hey, treat your queen like your quarterback. Let's not bring her out too quickly. Exactly. All right. All right. This is this is going to be interesting. Position. Remember, everybody, this is these are players who are normally nfl stars love chess but not a lot of opening theory maybe here by by cave on here moving the queen a lot this is a good lesson that you don't want to bring your queen out too early look at cheeto okay. man let's taking on h3 doubling the pawns also both these players are playing quite quickly they're playing like it's a blitz game you know they they have time so i think it might take a little bit to adjust to the new time control yeah, what's funny is even though that capture and the double pawns happened there, I think that it may actually end up helping, helping Kayvon. He's now got that bishop on the long diagonal. This is um, mm -hmm. this is the type of, oh, but it's the diagonal in, just closed. But I, I imagine he's he's trying to take control of the d5 square. So yeah. you know, he, I'm sure he has ideas. Oh, this is good stuff. This is despite yeah. the early queen out by Kayvon that had us a little worried, he's regrouped. And the truth mm -hmm. is this position is now very close to equal I, I was about to say john that that light square bishop is something catalan players dream about knowing that you're yeah, a but catalan then he player, just but he just crushed my dream then he crushed your dreams with e4 yeah, but the question is where is white's king going i'm curious to see 
Yeah, big question on the king, and big question is, because Kayvon played this idea, does he see... Oh, okay, a little too late now. The Black Knight comes to F4, and Kayvon's queen is on the run again. And both of them still have uh, more than 10 minutes on their clock. Let's... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. You know, sometimes it's nerves out of the gate, right? Mm -hmm. Gotta be, you know... Uh, here's my first cringy football reference, which I'm not going to apologize for yet again. You get your one apology, but okay, this is a, you know, this is your out of the gate, right? Maybe you're a little nervous, right? The nerves are there. These guys are playing super series? fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the very first series. You got to get the jitters out. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, there's truth to that. I think no matter what you're playing, the truth is whether it's, you know, football, chess, whatever, I think playing fast when you're nervous is something that a lot of people can can fall into so of course look at that move bishop g5 dude I, i'm i'm liking your pick so far about cheeto all these little tricky tactics he's coming up with yeah. the bishop on the king everybody he's got devious intentions to move this knight with a discovered check uh-oh and cave missed it let's see let's see if he sees it the knight can move anywhere in its check including taking the bishop for free you could give a double check if you're super into that. Might even be better, honestly. You can open up Black's King. I mean, a, yeah, that's true. Oh. I think probably just taking the bishop makes sense, but this move by Cheeto shows that he knows. I love that okay. username. Cheeto knows what's up right now. And maybe Cheeto is just deciding, hey, I want to simplify first. I'm about to be up a piece. Let's take the queens off. You see him, you see him like rubbing his hands. Yeah, there. yeah. It's he's like, like he's, salivating. Oh, he, and he saw it. Yeah, he knew it. There we go. Yeah, he's got a piece. Okay, well, I, I see them kind of, I see Cheeto kind of talking. I think it's open mic night for these guys. I'm pretty sure they can hear each other um, talking trash, everybody. So yeah. adding a, a fun piece. element there. The knight on F4 has great control. It's hard to get rid of that piece. Covering the D5 square, this is this is looking good. I like my pick so far. Yeah, I, I so you picked Cheeto to win the whole thing. Is that what you were saying? Well, I mean, okay, you said Larry was your favorite, and I'm just saying Cheeto's my favorite. Okay, well, there you go. So uh, do I think Larry can win the whole thing? I do, actually. I do think Larry can win the whole thing. I mean, we're going to see how he handles the faster time control, but right now your oh. pick is looking great. Cheeto is playing okay. strong chess up a whole rook after well, that last move. All right, we had an exchange sacrifice. Let's see what's going on question is as white how do you get counterplay here how do you keep your chances yeah. alive you know when we talk about events with with players who are not professional chess players and mm -hmm. have done a lot of commentary um for pog champs with that and hikaru hikaru always does a great job of like talking about kind of the blunderability of the position like okay despite the advantage because we know they're not pros what's the chance of someone blundering and i like what you just said because i think one of the problems for cave position is I think Black's moves are so easy, it's hard to see a place where they blunder. As long as there's a knight on the board, sometimes there's a fork. But the truth is, I I like your I like your point because it's hard to see how Cheeto blunders this position right now, despite yeah. uh, despite the fact that Kavon still has the centralized knight. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's not clear at all. I mean, you can take on f6, but how are you going to mate with just a rook? How are you going to create right. tactics with just a rook? Yeah. So that's an interesting move there. Kavon's preparing h4 and probably g5. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that. But uh, but still, it's hard to it's hard to imagine, and also it seems like Cheeto is trying to double on the c file. Yeah. So. Right. We'll probably see c4. Maybe. Yeah, c4 should be played. C4 and then b5, perhaps. Remind everybody. Yeah. Kayvon is white, Kayvon Thibodeau is white, and Cheeto, Cheeto, Awuzie, sorry, Chidobi Awuzie. I'm just going to say Cheeto knows. Cheeto, Cheeto is uh, is is black here, and up a whole rook. Oh, and, and because Kayvon didn't play C4, now we've got, now we've got even more problems. This has been impressive, John, because it's not just that he's winning. Like, this is like, this is a way higher level game than an 1100 game right now for black. Oh, absolutely. This, uh, I think his rapid rating was a little underestimated. Agreed. All right, and now he's doubling on the on the second rank. This is just uh, this is textbook. Yeah. No, look, at, but he's, it's not even that it's textbook, John. He's playing it so fast. This is like yeah. 
we had those those games in pog champs where you go like oh my god this guy it wasn't that they won it was how they won that says mm -hmm. they might they're probably a favorite because at this point playing yeah, fast two now with tempo yeah this is yeah. these are i some think the first moves. time we saw sardosh pre-move his way to a mate like he did mm -hmm. the queen rook ladder every oh, i forget okay. who i was doing commentary with that day but we were all like like whoa okay like that's a that's a huge thing for someone to pre-move to mate and and sardosh did go on to win you know the uh probably still the most watched chess tournament of all time in pog champs three so um by the way again yeah, yeah, no, so, it's been it's been great ahead. to see so far the the question is this is always something that tells you sort of how strong a player is, is what's their technique yes. converting a position that's completely won and sort of finishing to mate. Yep. So yeah. And not see. stalemate. Remember stalemates exactly. happen in these events. You got to watch out. So I agree. <laughs> exactly. I think, I think the technique and how fast they move is a huge early indicator of how strong these guys are. Um, and again, like all of you chat, like we don't know how strong these guys are, right? We know this is going to be a fun weekend with NFL superstars playing chess for charity. This is often a huge mystery. You come in here and you just don't know what you're in for um, until they start moving the pieces. So, um, and also a quick reminder to chat, you can tell who's black and white by the color of the clocks as well as the color of the score. So just to be a little helpful there, we saw some questions on that. So there you go. Um, I like that the night is around, John. There's always a chance for a fork. Mm -hmm. This is true. Not, I mean, look at this Although, guy. Although, this is, I mean, the White King is completely cut off. This is really good technique. I'm going to make an early prediction, though, too. Cheeto may be the favorite, but let's not let's not say that this lopsided game means that Kayvon doesn't have a chance. I feel like he blundered out of the gate early a little bit. This is true. But he's played well. He's kept the knight on mm -hmm. the board. Mm -hmm. if, if, he could, if he could think of this idea of creating a pass pawn, sorry, advancing the A and B pawns. This might give him a chance for an outside kind of mess, but he's running yeah. out of time to do it. Running out of time and the G pawn is gonna run quite yep. quickly. Yep. And here it comes. And this might cost Kayvon the night, unfortunately. At this point, they're playing so fast, we could have just had them play like a best of seven bullet match. I mean, <laughs> they are not using their time on the clock. <laughs> All right, now now uh, Kayvon knows he's facing a tough decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think best decision is you have to take on G3. Yeah, and, and he does it. He does it, and we'll see if he can come up with a, a way to make this tricky. Stalemate is always a possibility yeah. when players right. don't yeah, play as high stakes. You just try best. to get rid of all your pawns, right? This is yeah. the best. Oh, okay. Cheeto was pre -move. Was that a pre-move there? There's a borderline pre-move there with the... That uh, was quick. Look at this, dude. He's just... All right, let's push to A5. There we go. This is a good technique by Kayvon. Let's hope for yep. some stalemate. Okay, there's checkmate on the board in one move. If he sees it, he does. And he Cheeto does. knows... Well, I guess we know who one of the favorites is now. Um, Wow. That was... No, you heard it here bro. first. You called it. That was impressive. Um. He says he hasn't lost to anybody on his team since the start of the year, that being Cheeto, knowing that he plays with guys like Joe Burrow and some other guys, some other uh, Bengals teammates who we won't out there, out there usernames like we accidentally did Joe Burrow's at one point. <laughs> um, so, but he, he doesn't lose that often. And, and when you see this, he's backing up the talk right now because Cheeto just, John, what can you say about that, man? That was impressive, bro. Yeah, no, it was, it was great to see. He took, he took his chances. He was laying threats throughout the game. Little simple threats like a discovered attack on the queen via the bishop, this discovered check on the king. He put his pieces in good places. And when you do that, good things happen. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're if if we've I think he's talking, he's talking to Cave <laughs> on about whatever his uh, his guys in his room with him. So shout out to uh to the whole Cheeto crew. That's true. Okay, and Kayvon, Kayvon needs a two-minute break, All so right. uh, we're gonna we're gonna chill here and talk a little bit. Again, shout out to the University of Colorado. If you got any uh, Colorado, yeah, fans. go Buffaloes. What? What? Go what Buffaloes? What? You talking to me? 
<laughs> I don't know. I didn't talking hear to me? you. <laughs> um, anyway, well, all right. Looking at the players, so Cheeto, you called it as maybe the most underrated guy. I don't know how you knew that, but that was impressive. Of course, we haven't seen four of the other players yet, but wow. Um, Cheeto knows, um, and uh, he's... He's crushing it. By the way, uh, to give a to give a shout out to Kavon too um, early because we'll be doing it regularly throughout the event. Kavon has a fan club on chess.com. Uh, you can uh, go to go.chess.com slash play Kavon. And he's got a he's got a fan club that uh, maybe our mods can throw the command in chat and give everybody a chance to join it. Um, I don't want to spoil anything too early, but obviously those of you who saw Kayvon Thibodeau get drafted by the uh, Giants for the NFL draft he was wearing a chess.com logo on his jacket for a reason and he's an ambassador of ours and he's going to be doing regular events so if you're a New York Giants fan just a Kayvon Thibodeau fan there it is there's that logo you can see it right there he purposely pulled that back John to show it it was pretty sexy I love that pulled back the jacket flashed the logo no no that's nice shout out to the team there look at that zooming in on that baby Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, but uh, yeah, Kayvon is going to be doing regular events for his uh, for his fans. And like I said, don't want to don't want to talk too soon about what those are going to be. But um, but go join his fan club if you haven't already. Um, go to chess dot com slash Kayvon dash club. My apologies. I said play Kayvon, but it's dash slash Kayvon dash club. So there you go. There you go. John, are you ready? I feel like the nerves are gone now. I just feel excited. I, now yeah, now I'm we've excited. got the first game in. Yeah, yeah and hopefully Kayvon, you know, he's gotten the nerves out. He's ready for game two. We'll have the black pieces and needs to strike back. Yeah. Um, so, John, you know, we're going to be talking about these guys, you know, how they got into chess, their views of the game, what it does for them. Mm-hmm. Kayvon says he approaches chess like a game or sorry approaches football like a game of chess Mm -hmm. tries to think strategically think several steps ahead i know that it's you know you you hear commentators right when they're talking about nfl games any sports game it's a chess game out there between the coaches and how how much do you how much do you feel like you know that's a big part of what makes an elite nfl player is this you know the cerebral part of it um and what do you you know what are your thoughts on on cave on saying he approaches football like a game of chess it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, uh, Kayvon, he's a, he's a rush end and any rush end who's, you know, really worth, worth their salt is a cerebral rusher because when you're rushing a tackle, you know, it's not just running up the field and trying to get by them. It's looking at what are they giving me? Are they giving right. me the inside move? Are they giving me the outside move? Are they leaning on me? Or are they sitting too far back? Seeing what they're showing you and then preparing things sort of like moves or plays in advance. This is something a strong sort of rush end has to do. And I think he's, uh, he's absolutely right. Well, you were, so you just said, what's the tackle doing, right? You played the other side of that, right? You, you played, you played guard mostly, right. But you know, as just an offensive lineman, like what is your, what are you, what is your approach to that? You know, too, like how, how much, I mean, okay. You're a mathematician, right? You're obviously Mm -hmm. a very smart guy. Like what was your approach? Did you do the same thing as far as staying ahead of, of the, you know, the defensive linemen, of the rush. Well, unlike uh, Kayvon, I spent most of my time, you know, sort of like on the left bench position. But uh, <laughs> but when I did get a chance to play, no, it's, it's, it's really useful. And there is a very cerebral part of the game. Looking at, so as an offensive lineman, looking at the defense pre-snap and trying to ask yourself, what are they showing me? What are they trying to hide? What are they about to do? Studying a defensive lineman and trying to understand what are they going to do the rest of the game? What should I be prepared for? What should I be setting them up for? And there, there really is a lot of a lot of thought and a lot of sort of study that goes into a football game that really the fans don't ever see and usually don't hear about. Yeah, one of the things that I think of when you talk about that too is obviously one key difference is chess is a one-on-one game, right? And there is a one-on-one O lineman versus the guy they're rushing, but clearly that's it's more than that, right? You have a game plan with the rest of the offensive linemen, and how much of that game plan can be dependent on? Hey, our whole strategy against this guy is to push him toward the middle or push him toward the edge, and then if someone else drops the ball, right, and not thinking ahead, that changes it, right? So is it is it a regular sort of strategic powwow about those multiple moves ahead sort of thing? Oh, absolutely, because especially in the league, like unlike college, everyone in the league is good. Everyone in the league 
is talented. And what separates good teams from great teams is trying to recognize what our team is very good at, what their team is very good at, and trying to adjust what we do so that we can limit sort of like their best players and we can make the most out of ours. And so that's that's really a big part of winning football games in the NFL, making those okay. adjustments. Yeah. Well, I see some comments in chat too. People saying that Kayvon is... Uh is uh, maybe maybe an early candidate for rookie of the year. We'll see, right? The uh, defensive rookie of the year, right? You know, at least he's uh, going to be at the top of the list there. So, um, all right, well, we're, we're actually going to take a really quick break because we've uh, we've got some things to, to pull together here as the players get set for their second game. So everyone holds your horses. The Blitz champs here on chess.com will be back in just a few. We're just having tech issues with guys. We're just having tech issues with Kayvon. Nice vamping. Cool.
we are back with blitz champs more action just around the corner cave on thibodeau is back here for game two along with chidobi awuzie chidobi played fantastic chess in that first game but cave looking for revenge here in game two uh with the black pieces john yeah, and I just noticed Kayvon is also rocking his college gear. We got a nice little Oregon shirt there. Oh, I didn't see that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. I love that. That uh, It takes a college, you know, grad to recognize it, or even someone who went to college. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I missed the memo. Otherwise, I would have, you know, I would have had some Penn State gear some on. Penn State but... gear, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, There's always tomorrow. Action is underway, as we said. Uh, Cheeto Nose is now white, okay. playing e4. You called it big center. Oh, big knight center. f3. Okay, I was expecting c3, but he's going for d4. Kayvon playing the French here. Yeah. We'll, we'll forgive him for that. <laughs> you said it, not me. Um, <laughs> shout out Interesting to move, knight c3, trying to induce d4. These guys to, are playing fast and playing. To theory. come back to E2. This is very interesting. And look at Kayvon playing C5. Okay, so we yeah, said he's going to return cool. with a comeback. I like his opening so far. Mm -hmm. By the way, it looks like he maybe switched to his phone. He's still on webcam. He's, he's got his uh, phone, perhaps, he's playing on. Sure. And uh, Cheeto took off the sunglasses for the record. Those of you keeping track of the wardrobe. Yeah, Cheeto's vibing right now. Yeah, we, we. I think we need to ask what he's listening to. Yeah, he's he's jamming, um, and no headphones either. So he's uh, whatever's playing is probably playing loud. But look at it. He's he's again. This has been impressive so far. Two games. He's got a great position as white. Okay, that move queen d two a little yeah, a little awkward. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, his position is perfectly solid, but. Black has a surprising amount of space for a French. Yeah, no, good call. You don't normally see this structure. Uh, you prefer the knight to be on c6 just so that this bishop remained open, but still this is a really solid position. And this is a little revealing here, John, right? Obviously players of beginner levels don't always know how to play closed positions. Mm -hmm. Um like that. He's put his queen and his rook on these squares when typically you would really want to do something like instead move the knight and try right, to attack over F4. here. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Quick decision. Both players are still playing quite quickly. Yeah. I think and... if we were to give advice, you know, right away, you know, and 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 we'll we'll obviously catch up with the players is clearly there's a there's a lot to think about in these positions and they have a lot more time than they're using. Again, I think some nerves. Um, but yeah, okay, wow. Knight takes and then F5. I know the eval bar is saying that white's in a great shape here, John, but but why? Let's, yeah, let's try to figure this out. But if the, Do you... if, the if the black king gets out of the center. And, and you support the center. I think black is in a really good spot as far as, whoa, G4. G4. Aggressive chess. But what? Let's see. It plays G4. To, what a nice to idea. Try to undermine the knight on E4. Yeah. Shido oh. recognizes that the knight lacks protection if the pawn is removed. Mm -hmm. But very risky to open up your king with that kind of pawn advance. Mm -hmm. kind of thing that could come back to haunt you um unless you get a bunch of material john in the center right. just at this level when you have a wide open king always leads to potential tactics later right you think about moves like maybe bishop h4 or similar ideas at some point could be quite deadly now that the pawn is on g4 you know you wish you could move it back. Oh, I, li I like that move bishop h4 that was a nice idea to hit f2 i don't think that oh. I don't think either player saw that, but now Kayvon takes the pawn and is, is doing okay if he... By the way, speaking of your bishop h4 idea, now I'm looking at knight takes f2 mm -hmm. and bishop h4. That would there be the tactic go. of the day so far. All right. You ate your Wheaties this morning. I, I did. <laughs> well, I, I, I stole it from bishop h4 because now that we see that, and I don't know that 
I don't know that Kayvon's going to spot that, but what a what a chance that would be to blow open White's King there. Okay, backs up the knight. Understandable decision instead. Right, defending the g4 pawn. Yeah. The question defense. is, where is Black's King going to go? Yeah, that's a really good point, just to point out to everybody. The queen hits the square, which means Black cannot get castled right now. Right, and also covering the c8 square, so, you know, things like queen b6 and castling long are also out of the question. Right. Cheeto making a really solid move there. I really like the way this guy plays chess, just coordinating yeah, between bishop on the light g6 squares. and just threatening mate in two, right? Yeah. By the way, yeah, very nice. Bishop to g6 yeah. check, king f8, and queen f7 is checkmate. In fact, this is a huge moment. If Kayvon doesn't see this, we could have a very quick double knockout, double kill here for Cheeto. Uh -oh. oh, and, and he missed it. All right, and here let's see. G6 and queen f7, mate. Let's see what Cheeto had in mind. Oh, misses it. Okay. We have, we have life still, as long as Kayvon still, gets It's still on the board, coming. it's still possible. He's okay. just defending his queen, keeping the king in the center. Bishop g6 and queen f7 is made, everyone. Mm -hmm. Avon has to play something to stop this, even if he doesn't see it. He needs to accidentally get out of the threat. Mm -hmm. But the question is, actually, how do you stop this idea? Like, you can stop mate in two, but I don't see a good way to stop this idea of the bishop and queen getting in on the light squares. I, I think the only, the only way to do it would be a move like knight f8 to retreat the knight, but that's hard to spot. And then rook e5 and everything right. is falling apart. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you can move the queen. Uh-oh. Again, ah. mate in two is on the board with bishop g6 and queen f7. Mm -hmm. That is just... Cheeto gets all the credit, because even if he even if he didn't see it last move, playing bishop d3 means he clearly spotted it, and now he's just... He's uh, punching Without his... Having to, yeah. Now that he doesn't have to worry about his queen being undefended, he executes his idea, and I think that is our first match. Yes. And I, that is our first very clear favorite in this event. Shadobi Awuzie is, uh, well, the, the hard work pays off, I guess, because he's been playing on chess.com longer than a lot of people. And look at him. He's all smiles right now. He knows it. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a game, man. Just. All right, yeah. Kayvon <laughs> taking his time and the pre move. Pre move. And he points at the camera. I don't know who he's talking to, but he's like, you see, he's describing the diagonal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. up, bro. He's GG's, all over it, man. Bro. This is uh, this is uh, his world right now, and everyone else is living in it. Good games, guys. Uh, Cheeto, we're going to send you over for an interview. Tell Danny the looking prompter. All right, and I think we're gonna hear from uh, from right. Cheeto very soon. Correct. Yep we we've we're gonna have an interview with uh, Chidobia Wuzie. Uh, we've we've got him joining us right now, I think. And uh, there you go. Remind everybody who he is, right? Cincinnati Bengals cornerback had the the interception in Super Bowl. Uh, though his team did go on to lose. It was a big moment, and uh, you felt like the momentum might have turned right there. But we'll talk to him about that. Um, and he plays chess with Joe Burrow and other Bengals regularly. And right now, that 11.06 rapid rating is... Yeah, we might need to change that very, very Yeah, we quickly. might need to change that very quickly, right? Because um, this guy is clearly better than his rating. It wasn't just how he won, John, but how quickly he won. And... Mm -hmm how efficiently the kill was. Yeah. All right, well, we've got um, the standings, early standings. We've only had one match in the book, so those of you who've been with us the whole time, you know it. We've got one person leading the way for Group A, and uh, he'll be playing a back-to-back -back match next with Amari Cooper. But uh, Chidobi, dominant, and like you said, John, um, way underrated at 11.06. Right, and uh, in the second match, Chido's going to have a chance to uh, just – completely win this uh, group a outright with another victory so cheeto already gets three points for the first match victory and if he takes care of business in the second game well Kayvon and amari will just be fighting for second place yep 
Yeah, and second place will still be good enough to be playing in the the championship bracket on Sunday. Uh, but still, it, it'll mean that uh, Cheeto is not just uh, taking care of business in Group A, but showing everybody in Group B who who the best player is. But uh, yeah, so uh, this this was super impressive. Chat, let us know let us know uh, how uh, surprised you were by that. I'm sure a lot of people checking out Cheeto's account and being like, "Yeah, no surprise. This is uh, this is pretty." Pretty epic right now. And, you know, Kayvon will have a, a chance to see. Who knows? Maybe Kayvon and Amari, you know, will have a uh, a close match, and it'll be a close match for second place. But right now, I don't, I don't have much else to say besides that was dominant and impressive and uh, one of the much faster match than we anticipated. Game's over in, in, in 10, 5 minutes. So, all right. Um We have uh, Cheeto incoming. Cheeto, uh, Cheeto knows Chidobi Awuzie, the uh, the winner of the first match here in Blitz Champs, will be joining us here in just a second. Throw throw us some questions in chat. I've got it pulled up, and if I see a great one, I'll pull it out. Glad to have everybody with us here on this Saturday. We got almost eighteen thousand of you with us on Twitch, and uh, the day is only just beginning. So we are excited, and we've we've got an interview coming up here in just a second. Um, John, I feel like the first thing we're going to have to ask uh, Cheeto is, uh, you know, whether he came prepared for any of that because it was so impressive. It was like, you know, that was prep that could have been used at the candidates. You know, that yeah, was yeah, more exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Was, like that? Uh, oh, we we liked it. That was uh, we liked it. Yeah, that was did. that was fun to watch. Okay, yeah, definitely. Is that the question? Or I see I'll setting my camera up as well. Yeah, we've oh, got you, man. So I there mean, we go. Now we got you on screen. I think we'll just ask that. Like, it was fun for us to watch. Was that fun for you to play? I was very fun to play. You know, chess is you know a game that I play pretty often. Never too serious, unless you know someone like Amari Cooper would want to play next. That's that's a rivalry that's been built up over time. So that's where it gets really um, intense. I hate losing. I hate losing in chess. So yeah. Well, you hate losing. You came here to win this event. Let's just go go right there. I mean, like, did you prepare for this event? Um, and if so, like, how much how much are you playing on Chess.com these days? And what would you do to get to get ready for something like this? Uh, yeah, well, uh, Chess.com was gracious enough to offer me a coach, and uh, I didn't wasn't able to use him to his ability because my because because of time mostly. But um, and other than that, you know, I just play constantly. You know, when I'm pretty much have any downtime on playing chess, um, reading about chess, watching streamers, watching YouTube. Um, and I'm a, I usually play Blitz, so Rapid's a little bit more slow paced and I get to think a little bit, uh, I get more time to think, so it's a little better for me, I would say. Okay, who's your favorite chess streamers? Who do you like to, who do you like to watch? Who do you like to model your game after? <laughs> It'd be hard for me to model my game after anyone, but uh, I would say I watch Hikaru probably the most. And uh, Gotham Chess. Um, I also like Daniel Nar Narodisky. I think his yeah. name is. Daniel. I, Daniel. I played. I played GM Hess too. I played him, but he had like he gave me crazy odds. So uh, I won't count that. But I did win. Oh, and, nice! I didn't know oh, that. Oh, you listen. That's a win's a win. <laughs> that is awesome. So, know that Hess <laughs> is uh, one of my best friends. He's never let me win. So you've got that yeah, under me. And he's a little you'll see, like, my best win was GM Hess, but yeah, go ahead. Well, we're we're uh, yeah, we're obviously both friends with Robert, so we are not going to let him uh, let let him live that down. Even if he did give you odds, that's awesome. So, anyway, man, you know, so thank you for doing this event, taking a step mm -hmm. back, and just appreciating you know the fact that you're here. It's the, journey. This is going to be a lot of fun. Talk a little, talking a little bit more about kind of the. Uh, the bigger picture of chess you know so a lot of players say that they use chess you know as as a way to improve their critical thinking and they apply kind of the strategic concepts to football cave on thibodeau has talked a lot about that as far as the way he likes to approach things um and so what are, what are your thoughts on how chess has helped you not just maybe on the field but in life and and do you apply kind of you try to be a few steps ahead when you're playing football is that a part of your part of the way you approach it uh, yeah, chess, obviously, you know, everybody's here because they love chess. Um, you know, it's the art of war. It's the art of match, competition. It just has every aspect of, like, you know, a complex game in one, you know. So 
Uh, for me, it started when I was in business class and some of my teammates uh, slash friends in the class who would just play chess on our laptops while the professor was, you know, doing his teaching. And that's kind of how I got started. And um, from there, when I started taking it serious, um, I realized I was able to prioritize things better. I was able to uh, recognize patterns better. You know, um, when I'm guarding a receiver, it may be a certain stem that he gives me or a certain concept that's happening in front of me. And I was able to prior, like, prioritize what my steps are supposed to be or where I'm supposed to be or my assignment and stuff like that. So um, I would definitely credit that to chess, you know, just the able the ability to pattern recognize and then also prioritize, you know, even in life, you know, um, there's a lot of things as a athlete slash entrepreneur slash whatever you want to call, you know, me, and I'm sure every other player that uh, plays this game. Um, there's a lot of things in our days that we have to get, get to do, right? And chess has allowed me to prioritize things in the right way. I'm not saying I'm like a grandmaster at chess or anything, but um, it's definitely helped in that uh, respect. So let's let's talk about your priorities a little bit. Could you tell us a little bit about the charity you're playing for? Oh yeah. So uh, right now I'm playing for the I Was Your Family Foundation charity. Um, it's a charity that I started. Well, basically it's my foundation that I started and we fund a bunch of different charities actually. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the goal uh, behind it is to fund, you know, the youth in San Jose, fund the youth in Africa, um, the youth that are in the diaspora from Africa and also in the respective city, uh, cities like Cincinnati and stuff. So um, we actually help a lot of different charities, um, you know, get going. So um, there's actually one, an event happening this weekend called the NBC convention and we're donating money to them this weekend too. So um, it's something that, you know, it's very near, dear to my heart to start. So um, that's kind of what I'm playing for. It's awesome, man. R reminder, reminder to chat, get your questions in. I'm watching it. We've got Jibo9596 says you're basically a GM. Cheeto, you're basically a GM after that performance, man. And you're definitely a GM on the field. Uh, we've got uh, GM at football from Sergeant Animal there. We've got, anyway, give us give us some good questions if you have it. Um, Cheeto, I got to go to the next question because uh, it was all, all the talk during the Super Bowl. You may or may not have followed that we accidentally kind of leaked Joe's username um, and he yeah. got flooded with, with requests. Um, but um, your teammate, Joe Burrow, plays chess regularly, obviously on chess.com. So how good is, let, let's set the record straight. How good is Joe at chess? How badly do you beat him? And do you want to do you want to give a call to action as to why didn't Joe accept our invite to play in this event? Was he scared of you? What happened there? Um, Joe's the type of guy. He's he's good at a lot of things, but he also plays what he's good at. You know, um, he likes the he likes the competition. He likes all that stuff. Um, I'm sure I'm sure that with the right push, he would have came. But you know, we were just in Vegas the week prior or the weekend prior to watch the UFC fight. So um, I'm thinking that he had to kind of reset and, you know, his time was probably just backed up, a lot of stuff backed up. But um, in terms of how good he is, he's actually pretty good. Um, yep. He has the earth to learn, which is beautiful. You know, there's not that many times, there's been a lot of times actually where, you know, I play someone who's young in chess or new, new to chess or they played when they were a kid in chess school and they want to start playing again. And then you just massacre them. And then you just let them know why you're massacring them and then they stop playing. You know, mm. Joe's not one of those people. He's one of those people that, you know, plays and he doesn't really like, like when you, when you beat him, he wants to learn, he wants to get that much better. And uh, he's actually beaten me before legitimately um, and all that stuff. So um, he's actually pretty good. And we played a few times now. We actually played in Vegas too. So um, hopefully next time we do this, we'll bring him on for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Is he the only Bengal that plays or are there other, other teammates you play with? And, and if so, who, who else plays on the team? There are other Bengals that play, but they, it's intimidating. You know, it's intimidating when you see people, you know, being very intense playing and then they may have an itch to play, but they also don't like to lose. No one, no one likes to lose pretty much, you know? Um, so it's kind of intimidating for them to walk up and play, but there's been people that like, um, like CJ Uzama last year, he, he played. I know um, Thaddeus Moss played, Trayvon Henderson played, um, but again, I have to kind of, when we play these people, we kind of have to be nice <laughs> so that they don't run away. I, no, no offense to these guys. You guys are actually good. But everybody else, I'll say, you know, you have to be nice to uh, keep them interested, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Go ahead, John, if you got... Well, you, got well, you were not very nice to cave on this past round, I must say. But uh, <laughs> what are you looking to do in this next round against Amari? You know, someone who you get to play in football twice a year. Yeah. What What are you looking for this next match? I don't know what to look for. So, funny story about Amari is... Right. First off, chess is what I, I would say was the most uniting thing of me and Amari's relationship. We played for a long time. We used to have a lot of good conversations and we still do. Um, but uh, when we first started, he used to smack me. He used to smack me bad. But I'm not one of those people who likes to twist it. And I started to get better, started to get better. And there was a time where I started streaming last year and I was just whooping this guy. I was whooping. The, and I hope he hears this because I want him to play his best. I was whooping this guy. And then um, he just stopped playing. Like he just stopped playing. Like literally stopped playing and I'm like, what's, what's up with this guy? Like, where is he at? I go look at, like, his profile. I'll be checking his profile, you know, seeing his ratings, seeing his wins and stuff. And then I see he has, like, 1,500 lessons done. I'm like, what the heck? And then I check, like, the next week, he has, like, 2,000 lessons done. I'm like, bro, oh ain't no gosh. way. And then I hit him up. I'm like, bro, what's going on? I'm like, you've been hiding me from me. Like, it's been months. And then he's like, oh, no, I haven't planned until I do all the lessons, like all the lessons on chess.com. And he ended up doing all of them. Respect, and, I, and I, that's heavy respect to that. But uh, a, after that, we played, and I was still beating the guy. So I don't know. We go, <laughs> <laughs> we go, we go, we go. I don't know. I think I think the chess.com lessons, they they help a little bit. I mean, I don't know if they're going to help him beat you, but, you know, but... they, they, they help you get better. But you're gonna play him. You're gonna play him twice now on the on the field, right? He's w w now that he's with the Browns. So, but you guys talk any trash before the game, and if so, does the does the chess trash talk make it into the football trash talk? Uh, never, not 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 really. You know, w w me and him are very competitive. Um, we've competed in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, whether that be video games, racing, basketball, chess, debates, just any anything is competition. So I think. When we go to the field, it's not going to be any different. It's just, you know, friendly competition. Obviously, with more stakes, but yep. um, that's what our that's what our relationship was founded on was competition. So um, I think. And how do you, how do you all know each other? When did you first meet, and what's your relationship sort of like been like over the years? Yes, yeah, so Mari, I met him when he came to the team in 2018. We both played on the Dallas Cowboys together. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, now last year I went to the Bengals, and this year he went to the Browns. So uh, naturally. You know, obviously we're gonna play each other two times a year now. So yeah. exciting. Well, we've got I called for chat earlier. By the way, we saw GM Hess in the chat who said he knew you were a beast, but he just didn't tell people why. So uh <laughs> we, we knew that he's got that. But um we've got we've got some chat questions here. And uh here we go. Oh, we've got have you ever picked here. off Joe Burrow in practice from chat? I mean how many practices do you have in a year? Like a thousand. So yeah. I the question should be how many times? Yeah. How many times have you picked off Joe Burrow practice? <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. Because honestly, now I'm thinking back during the season, uh, the starters didn't go against the other starters. So um, there was very limited reps that we actually had against each other outside of camp. So during camp, um, yeah, it happened. <laughs> Well, that's a good one. All right. Well, we've got we've got another question here from uh, let's see, Madrange Mid Monroe. He says, "Is Cheeto's strength in openings, middle game tactics, or end games? What would you say your best your best phase of chess is?" Um, I feel like openings are. So when I first started playing chess, I didn't even know that there were like openings and these parts of the game. And I ain't gonna lie, I credit Amari for uh, teaching me, you know, some of the stuff, the intricacies of chess. Um, but one thing I was always good at was end game. Always good at end game. Like once it got simple, that's when I thrived. But um, obviously I added new elements to my game now, so um, there I have other strengths. But I would definitely say the end game. Nice. Okay. Sweet. There you go. You got your answer, mid range Monroe. Sorry for mispronouncing your username there. One more from uh, let's see, Cheesehead one five one five. Ask him who his favorite teammate to play chess against is. So there you go. Who's your favorite teammate? Is it Joe or is it someone else? All time or like on the Bengals? On the, I guess on the Bengals. Yeah, Joe. Joe for sure. Yeah. What, what about all time? That boy, that's on the other, I can see him on the other screen right Yeah, there, the, the guy you're about to throw down against in Amari Cooper. Amari, yeah. 
All right, man. Well, we're going to let you go because you are about to throw down against Amari, and we want to give you some time to take a breath, get yourself in game. You see how focused he is, by the way? You saw him spinning in his chair. He is ready to go against you. You see that? He knows he, knows he can't hide, man. He has a lot okay. to lose. He got a lot to lose. And young Cheeto, not that many people know Cheeto, you know, that, you know, Cheeto plays chess, da 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 da, da. Everybody knows Amari plays chess. So, Amari, if you're hearing this, come prepared. Okay. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Cheeto. We wish you the best of luck, man. And uh, thank you so much for doing this. We'll probably see you tomorrow. All right. Peace out. All right. A quick reminder to everyone that the Chess.com Global Championship, I saw those tournaments running in the background right before this thing started today, uh, are going down every weekend. It's your chance to play alongside the world's best players for a million-dollar prize pool, baby. Be a part of history here on Chess.com. Go to go.chess.com slash CGC2022. Get verified and start competing, running out of time to qualify and join all the title players as they get set to jump in and try to be one of the 32 players to qualify to join 32 invited. I'm so pumped for this event. The uh, the hype and, and is real. It's going to be epic. Join on Saturdays and Sundays for your chance to qualify. You'll be next. Get those cash prizes. Speaking of a if guy cool who uh, is here for more than the yeah, cash cool. prizes, cool, cool. pride, bragging rights, We're going to bring him back in things. and get started here. Amari Cooper once, uh, of the Cleveland Browns over. is going to be thrown down against Chadovi Abouzier when we come back after this very short break. It's more Blitz Champs on Chess.com.
beat me more than Welcome back I beat Blitz, you. It was always champs, like even everyone. or I, I was. Shinobi Awuzie is going to be back here, and he's already talking, talking to his next opponent, Amari Cooper. John, this is going to be an exciting matchup with these two longtime friends and and chess rivals, as we've learned. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's like I said, I mean, Cheeto is definitely my favorite for this tournament, but Amari plays some really interesting and aggressive chess. I think we're going to get two really good matches out of this pair. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I have a feeling this one is going to be going to be close. That was fun. Cheeto, Cheeto uh, at the interview, the interview we just had before the break, everybody talking about how Amari did a bunch of lessons, didn't help him didn't help him against uh, <laughs> against Chino the next time we played. So I can't wait to see uh, what happens in this particular matchup and, and what kind of fun they have. So, all right. Well, as we said, uh, we, we've had a match in the books. We had an interview in the books. Let's let's do a quick reset. Remind everybody of where that keeps us here in Group A. Shadobia Wuzie is uh, leading the pack right now with a 2-0 victory over Cave on Thibodeau. The, uh, the rookie in the league now and going to have another match later on today against Amari Cooper, but it's Amari versus Cheeto Nose next. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what kind of prep and kind of plans uh, that he brought to the table against Amari. He said he, he said he did. He said he brought his plans to this match, John. Yeah. And they have, you know, they have quite a long history. So I bet they have some familiarity with how the other likes to play, what openings they like, what structures they like. One thing that I noticed that was quite interesting is, uh, Amari really does like some interesting like stone wall structures as black and some yeah. other types of positions. And uh, I bet Cheeto probably has a lot of experience there. So we'll see how that experience pays off. <laughs> uh, for sure. The other thing Cheeto said in the, um, in the interview when he talked about, because I never think about prep, I'm thinking about what he's, what he's bringing here against Amari. He talked about how mm -hmm. chess has helped him with pattern recognition that that particular phrase right you know is, is so important because that really is the thing that ultimately starts to separate people in their chess careers when they're not just thinking one move ahead uh when it doesn't seem random anymore it's like like reading a language when you can see the patterns come together so that type yeah, of mindset that type of approach got to be a big part thing. of why he's yeah. just uh you know, proven to be such a strong chess player. And like Robert said, I mean, this guy's a beast. I, he is way underrated at 1100. And I think we're going to see that um, as this day, as this day and this event goes on. Yeah, and it looks like their Amari's clock is, is running. Amari but is on the clock. And no uh, longer the at the there. board. And <laughs> yeah, uh, what got... I was going to say is, you know, these things you're talking about, about sort of pattern, pattern recognition for chess players. Yeah. This is also the thing that separates good from great cornerbacks. Because, yes, everyone can run a 4-3, a 4-4. You know, everyone has that sort of, like, natural ability at the NFL level. But that pattern recognition of watching film, being prepared, and being able to tell what route a receiver is about to run before yeah. they make, they finish that break, it's, you know, this is a crucial part of the game. And... uh Cheeto definitely made that connection. And we can see that the pattern recognition in football has definitely been paying off for him. And it's paying off in chess as well. Yeah, and, and probably you can say the same thing for, I guess, you know, Cheeto, obviously, you know, a defensive player as a cornerback, but I think offensively too, right? Reading, <laughs> reacting, and also recognizing the pattern that the defense is in and then adjusting. So there's so much to re the reasons that they, you know, that so many chess comparisons are made to the, whether it's the coaches, the scheming, the game planning, the way the quarterbacks approach it, smart defenders like cornerbacks like Cheeto. Um, now we see a move has been made. Amari with E4 and a Sicilian chosen by Cheeto here on the board. Amari back on the clock. Amari's thinking. He goes thinking and then three. plays Knight F3. We, we might see, uh, okay, we see A6. Wow. Cheeto, just it he's opening this is this is like way more than like 1100 level stuff and he's playing it instantly so this is not like something he's just making up okay knight c3 what are we gonna see e6 maybe or does he expand with b5 what's the idea yeah so knight c6 okay a a6 is and the fact that it was met by knight c3 from amari this is a a sicilian we actually saw played at the candidates and by the way speaking of the candidates we're gonna we're gonna out him right now jan napomnishi huge congrats to the back-to-back -back candidates winner who's been watching this show and uh for those who don't know nepo is a huge nfl fan um and uh he's uh, he's tuning in right now but we saw the a the a6 sicilian uh chosen at the candidates 
and wow these guys are just playing strong opening strong opening theory here these could be two of the best players in the event clearly just based on the opening we're getting on the board here a lot of experience yeah yeah it's an interesting game so far i mean they're just putting their pieces on good squares getting developed maybe we'll see bishop e7 here and ah Ooh. okay 97 interesting okay interesting move from Shido there. Yeah, Bishop E7, a much more standard developing move to try to get the King Castled. So we know we've talked a lot about Cheeto saying that he came prepared, talking some trash. We know that Amari is working super hard. Shout out to Shar, his coach. Um, and uh all the all the the time and work that Amari's been putting in. We'll see if that pays off here. He's he's got a small time advantage on the clock. Yeah, and we're we're in the second match, and still both players are playing quite quickly i think uh i think the players still need a little bit of time to adjust to the rapid time control well and but i was going to say uh, even though they're quicker it's it definitely feels like a a a game where they're thinking through it a little bit more quickly than what we saw in the first matchup between cheeto and and Kayvon. just like these guys are, are pacing themselves a little bit cheeto really measuring his response here does go with bishop e7 trying to get castled And it's an interesting question. Where is Amari going to put his king? He's He's got to be thinking about it right now. Yeah, he could go either way. Amari could yeah. castle long and, and be trying to attack. Um, it's a little risky to do that when, when you've already kind of opened up your king side. Black could strike with b5. Or he could castle short. I'm just impressed so far by how much care they're putting into this. Again, they are still playing fast, but this is a much more measured game than what we saw in the first matchup. I think these guys are both taking it pretty serious. Ooh, oh, King wow. Seven. Oh, and I, I think that was a mouse. I think slip. it was a mouse slip based That's on Cheeto's reaction. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, that, that was, that was definitely slip. a mouse slip. Wow. Not what you want. Axe, Axe can they take the move back? The no, 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 no. We're going to play. We're going to play. We're going to keep it interesting. It's good. We're going to keep it interesting. It's good. Come on. I, yeah. We have a delayed bomb cloud this dang from Cheeto. Right? <laughs> delayed bomb cloud. Hey, mouse is trash. What was funny is you know it's not an excuse from Cheeto because he was talking about how the mouse wow. was different for him before the match started. He was showing it, but clearly, clearly he uh, not doesn't have, doesn't have a lot of practice with that mouse. But he said he wants to play. Maybe maybe Amari offered a take back. He didn't want it. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. We've got confirmation from the team. Uh, Amari did offer a take back, and Cheeto said, no, we, you know, we're going to play. Okay. Okay, First so all, the question is, now that Black's king is stuck in the center, how do you break through his white? So Amari starts with c3, yep. probably preparing d4. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, D4 okay. immediately yeah, first you risks have to the E4 develop the knight. Yeah, exactly. First you have to... This is okay. this is also a good plan. C3 and Rook mm -hmm. B1 to play for B4 and take advantage of the queen. By the way, can we just give a shout-out to Amari Cooper with the, the sportsmanship there? Wanted, he gave his teammate, uh, former teammate, um, a uh, an offer to, to take it back, but uh, Cheeto didn't want it, so... This is this is looking good for Amari here, John. This idea yeah, he's of threatening forward. B4. Yeah, this is uh this is good chess. Uh Cheeto, of course, helped a little bit with the mouse slip, but uh but this game's not over. Cheeto still has chances. Moves his queen to get out of the uh the long diagonal. For sure. Yeah, this thing is far from over. And if he can even fix his king now that he put the rook in the center, the reason we like Amari's position, everyone, is because this dynamic of a king in the middle of board, it's it's only a matter of time before things blow open and get explosive. So usually not the way you want to play a chess game. And and that's that's the uh, the drama that we've had so far was a mouse slip by Cheeto. But still... I mean, they're playing they're playing good chess. Cheeto up on the clock, by the way, John. We'll see if that pays off. I, I just have a feeling this match, every one of these games is going to be close. 
Yeah, yeah. so far so interesting. So Amari's trying to open the position up and takes with the pawn in front of his king. It's just might get hairy. Takes with the pawn, and that's super risky. If white can, I mean, I know the d4 risks knight takes e4, but at this point, you might play it anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, just try to open up the, the king. Yeah, and if you're concerned, you can always start yeah, with e5 coming. first. Oh, he, he goes for it. They move he goes for d4 way. right away. Move the way, really smart team, smart team. See how I did that. Uh -huh, you did be sleep. He's trying to listen into Cheeto. I don't know what he's saying, but I... Miss it. I think he, he was saying Amari's trying to be sneaky. Cheeto knows better than to leave his king on the same file as White's queen. It runs his king out. Again, it's super heads up. If you remember how we got here, everybody, it was a mouse slip by Cheeto. And now he's fixed that problem. And uh, if if Amari doesn't deal with the fact that the e4 pawn is hanging, this could be could be a problem. And this game could quickly turn back in favor of Awuzier. Um, by the way, speaking of Amari's coach, shout out to Karate Baby. We see him playing Guess the Move on chess.com. Shar has uh, been coaching Amari for more than a year and uh, doing a pretty good job, I think, as a coach. So shout out to you, username Karate Baby. All right, so Amari gets gets his queen off of uh, off that file, and maybe planning some ideas like maybe no. Bishop B three and putting some pressure on the G six square. You I like that idea. It would be, yeah, it would be interesting to see. Okay, Bishop B seven makes a lot of sense, dude. Just good chess here by both of these guys. This is not a game of two eleven hundreds, and we said that coming in, everybody. We didn't know how good everybody would be, right? Because how often do they play rapid chess versus blitz versus daily? These two guys are very good players. Yeah, this is going to be a very level match. It's uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see. I like your idea, John, of bishop d3 and then e5, but uh, Amari goes for e5 right away, also pretty good. You're threatening to take the knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what do you do here? You you don't want to take on f3 because white has the swish and zug. Uh, e takes f6. So where are you thinking to put that knight, Danny? I think if you have to... Oh. Okay, wow, he and took he on f3. And he does take. So he messes this idea. And let's see if Amari finds it. Yeah, the inner mizzo here, everyone, just to show is that white doesn't have to take back on f3 right away. White can take the knight first, gaining a tempo on the bishop. And then you have to take back, and then you take, and you've actually won a piece if you're Amari, if 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 he can see that after Cheeto took on f3. Well, he's taking his time. He's thinking. I'm really glad to see Amari's making use of his clock. Some good time management, not playing too quickly, thinking about his moves, and he's calculating it, and he goes for it. He does. He takes, sees it through. If he takes back on f3, he's up a piece. I think he will. I think he's calculated everything. He's zoned in. Yeah. We were talking about it at the top of the show, for those who don't know. Uh, Amari was here like, I don't know, an hour out, maybe an hour and a half out. <laughs> Amari is, is focused and ready for this event, the Blitz Champs event. And he's uh, he is focused and zoned in. Chino, Chino leaning back there, a little frustrated. But this game is not over, John, just because White's up yeah, in yeah. peace. Yeah, so Cheeto has some ideas, putting pressure on the F3 pawn, also defending E6 with Queen C6. But, yeah, uh, yeah, attacking F3, defending E6. But what? Huh. And Queen, Queen E4, E4 by four. White, great centralization. Great move. That whenever and now there's a uh, bishop e6, right? Yep. I uh, I was just gonna say whenever you're up a piece, great idea to offer a queen trade anyway. But but that was an amazing move by Amari Cooper. And now if he takes e6, then okay, we just saw Cheeto take care of business against Kayvon. I mean, maybe we have a new favorite in the tournament. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, there's there's a lot of good moves here, a lot of options for White, and I'm curious to see how Amari converts this. Again, taking his time. Yep. That playing might, his that... options. I really love the time management that I'm seeing from Amari. Me too. But I was going to say that may end up being something that you know we start talking about here in a minute because he's he's taking his time and he's got a better position. But what happens if? Uh... If he if he gets down to a minute or two, we're going to see how he handles time pressure. Yeah, this yeah this is definitely true. If he finds bishop takes e6, then it's worth the effort. But if you know if he doesn't find a knockout right away, the time starts ticking down. This the four minute time advantage could play a factor. Knight f4. Okay, doesn't see bishop. Yeah, knight f knight f four also seems like a great move. Putting pressure on the g six square, putting pressure on the e six square. Yeah, this was now you can take f four. You can take f four with a tempo, and then even still consider ideas on e six, although they're not as good now. And d five is coming. Yeah, although taking on e6 looks like it's definitely an option. You're you're getting a lot of pawns out of that. We've got d5 coming. Yeah. And then bishop to okay. Queen a7 is a maybe a good move to avoid the queen getting taken, but it doesn't protect e6, and d5 could be very dangerous. Preparing with rook e1, this is a good quick move, so. Amari recognizes that he's a little behind on the clock, makes a good solid move. Rookie one met by CD four. Okay, I, I, these this is uh if if Amari doesn't convert this and 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 Cheeto gets white, that might be one that comes back to haunt him. So he's got to be feeling a little nervous now that he hasn't put this one away yet. Is he looking at Bishop takes e six? Because here comes Rook takes d four. Rook takes d4 could also be met by queen h7, queen to c6 mm -hmm. check. So there's plenty of options. You're just getting nervous about Amari's clock. Yeah, rook, rook d4 takes d4 looks scary, but yeah, white has options. Of course, you have to watch out because there will be a discovery on the a1 rook that you have to be prepared for. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah. And not only that, the rook also hits both bishops, right? So exactly. I don't know, so... this is... This is take some scary. real calculation. I think White has something like Queen C six and Bishop E five should just be fine, maybe for White. But uh, it's it's not so clear. It's not nearly as clear as it was a few moves ago, for sure. And and you also have Bishop D six. Okay, so this yeah, uh, yeah. some forcing moves here for Amari should be good. But man, this is some high quality chess, and the rivalry is real between these two guys. Cheeto never stops talking, by the way. <laughs> He's just like always talking his thought process out loud. I love it. Amari, the we, we, we forgot to ask what he was listening to. I, uh, oh, we forgot to, to ask him tomorrow. We'll get it next time. And he goes for your move, Bishop D6. And Cheeto, Cheeto's raising his hands like, oh, what are you trying to do? What's going on? Tito says, what am I missing? I'm just going to move my king. All right, and rook d1 now is a very strong move, removing the rook from a1, getting out from that long diagonal, and also adding some support to the bishop on d6. Yeah, good move. Yeah. All right, now that we've gotten to this position, the question is, as black, 
how are we creating counterplay? What's the idea here? So this rook has to move somewhere. It can take on d1 or it could go to h4, but after rook h4, okay, and takes on d1. Rook takes fairly quickly. And now what's the idea for black here, Danny? How do we create counterplay? Danny? Say that again? Yeah, so now that, uh, now that black has traded off a rook, they're down a piece, compensation is a little questionable here. How do you make it murky? How do you make it complicated? Well, I still feel like if anything, it's 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 getting easier for for Cheeto the longer this game goes because with this white king open and only two minutes on the clock approaching for Amari, I feel like if white doesn't find a knockout, and I, I actually really like that move B five, even if it gives up a pawn, the more the position opens up and and gets the queen open, uh oh, queen C seven. What does it allow? I think maybe black can actually. Black just like trade into the end game and then maybe take the pawn. I mean, that that's a hard position to win, John. I mean, like, re remove everything on the queen side. Mm -hmm. Even if you're up a piece with these doubled pawns against these four pawns, that's not an easy end game for white to win at all. That's true. And Cheeto did say that his best aspect was his end game technique. So, so this might be a good chance for Cheeto to try to draw this game. Now he's thinking about the queen trade. He's got to use his time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time is getting closer and closer. And he says no queen trade. Interesting decision. Queen a, White that's has a... to defend this pawn on f3. Yeah, I was going to say also a good move. Yeah, but after king g2, the question is, how do you put more pressure? Do you start thinking about ideas like rook c8 maybe? Ah, and he tries to defend actively with rook d3. Also a good move. Uh, if I'm Cheeto, I trade this pawn just to get rid of it, but then as soon as you can, mm -hmm. try to take advantage of the pin here, but this is this is actually really hard. I mean, shout out to Amari for finding lots of accurate moves, right? The pieces are all on healthy squares defending each other. That avoids blunders, typically. The more pieces are on, on defended squares. Um, Cheeto taking his time. This is going to come down to the wire. I, I think we're going to find out who is uh, who's the best under the uh, the clock, the two minute drill, if you will. Hashtag NFL reference. Who's going to be the best when they're under two minutes? Might end up winning this game, John. It's going to be time pressure. All right, and Bishop E five. Interesting. That's a move right there. Yeah. Taking advantage of the pin of the bishop. If the bishop moves, rook takes rook. But what is being threatened? Can White just play King G2 and just King say... G2, nice move. That would be the, the grandmaster prophylaxis move. Just defend everything. White could... Yeah, you're right that White isn't worried, right? If you take, it's just a big trade. So if Amari kind of has the presence of mind to see that, um, but this is kind of scary, right? When you face yeah, him with no time. Okay, and now, now there's counterplay. Right. Now the black queen is now open, so there's a check on a one. Yeah. Also, at some point they can trade on d six, and this f three pawn might be hanging. So there's definitely there's a lot of play for Cheeto here, and it really looks like it could be anybody's game. I feel like just going back to the Hikaru Nakamura Pog Champs blunder ability comparison. I feel like this is this is Black's game to win. Just looking at the clock, looking at how open White's king is regardless of white's extra piece this is just it's going to get harder and harder for amari to play with with no time on the clock yeah and don't forget here black has two pawns for the piece the b pawn is a pass pawn and white's pawn structure is compromised so there's definitely hey, lots of chances here dale baskets in chat says that amari cooper was on his fantasy football team you might want amari on your fantasy chess team depending on how well this uh this performance goes here he's playing well <laughs> Uh, but fact, I think this one is getting away from him. Yeah, black uh, black can get a lot of pawns, right? If you take twice on d6, take on yep. f3, yeah, maybe take on h3. This yeah, if he gives a check yeah, instead, that actually allows rook right. d1 for white. Get kind of gaining a tempo 
on the queen. Although, rook d1, bishop d6. Is bishop d6 a move? Oh, man. I think bishop takes d6 might be a move that is hard to deal with. A bishop takes d6, is there, let's see, what do you do? Is there, uh, is there queen takes d6 there? Is that best? Yeah, it has to be queen takes d6, but has that's to be such queen a takes. hard move to find. It's a hard oh move gosh. to find. It's so counterintuitive. I was wondering what it was and, and yeah, why I think, it was. I mean, that's the only thing I can see. Ah, and he oh, misses man. it. Queen to b6. He gave it right back to him. Actually, black can move the black can actually play bishop h two yeah, check yeah, exactly. and take. But this is maybe just as hard to see as queen takes d six. Well, bishop h two. This is uh, this is the sort of thing that uh, if Cheeto was doing his chess dot com lessons, he you know maybe he'll recognize. In fact, if he if he misses it, maybe we'll give him a bunch of crap about that exactly. <laughs> or his chess dot com puzzles right there. No, but yeah. bishop h two check. This is his chance to completely complete the comeback. A position that got awkward early on from a mouse slip might be falling back into Cheeto's favor here. Mm -hmm. He's using his time. He's using his time. He has two minutes left. He's thinking. But there's a lot of things to think about because his rook is undefended right now. Yep. And, and so... if you play the logical move, like bring the queen back to defend the rook, then white can take on d6. Mm hmm. Wait, did he play bishop c7 or did I mouse slip that? No, he did, did not play, play bishop. Did he play that? He did play bishop c7. Ah, okay. What a move. Yeah, wow. Wait. Yeah, you can't play rook takes d8 because it's pinned to the king. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I didn't even have bishop c7. I, on my it wasn't even mind. a candidate move. For I wasn't me. even I thought it was a it. mouse slip. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Man, Cheeto knows something. We're talking something. about bishop h2, and he's pulling out things like bishop c7 on us. <laughs> wow. This guy is uh, is on another level right now. What a comeback he could be completing. This, this game is not over, though. Let's watch out. If, if yeah, but it's, it's looking pretty good. Cheeto, like I said before, mentioned, best part of his game, the end game. We're about yep. to get a queen end game. White has a compromised pawn structure. Black has two extra pawns. The pass yep. B pawn is strong. And as long as Black, you know, avoids any sort of like checks, I think Black is in business. I like this move, queen D5, centralizing the queen, defending the B pawn, and also taking control of some key squares. Well, queen, oh, wow, look at this, dude. Queen behind the pawn, the technique. You still have to work now things like queen c4. Okay, this is this is risky. You don't want to open up yeah. your king and create chances for perpetual check, but I just love the mindset of get the queen behind the pawn so that you can push it. Just super solid oh, chess. I, now I like c4. this. I like what I see. Man. Cheeto recognizes that he has to attack the queen, defend the pawn, b4 and then the king as long as he doesn't blunder to a perpetual check here john this is going to be a win for cheeto okay queen a4 trying to you know just in case b3 was a pre-move super solid chest yeah super solid chest there queen c3 yeah here queen comes... c3 this is looking great i mean black has control of the long diagonal there's Really no good checks. At this point, white really needs to sort of go all in and maybe just try to open the position up. I don't know what you do. Maybe an F4 or a well-timed H4. Because right now, it's it's not looking so good. Wow. And he resigns. Amari resigns. That shows that the uh, the respect right yeah. there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah. Dang, bro, no intermission? Guys, yeah, do, you, do you need a minute? We can take a minute if you need to stretch your legs. <laughs> we can take a minute. We can take a minute. Yeah. Awesome. Jeez. It looks like the players are <laughs> players are asking for a we small intermission. Money. They've been working hard. But uh, we'll yeah. see if they're ready to run it back. But seriously, the respect there by, by Amari, I mean, we've seen so many Pog Champs events. We've seen celebrity chess tournaments. Usually, players are playing it out to stalemate. 
right? Um, and, and not even out of like any disrespect, just because it's a very, you know, common thing in chess, you know, especially at early levels to play it all the way out. The fact that he resigned there shows a ton of respect for his opponent in Cheeto and, um, and what an impressive game yet again by Cheeto knows. I think so far, this is, this has been the most impressive game sort of of the whole day so far. It might be yeah. the most impressive game we see all day. Great development in the opening. Strong play. Yep. Cheeto had a mouse slip, but didn't let it hold him back. He sort of eventually castled by hand. And even though Cheeto was a piece down, he kept creating threats. And this move, Bishop C7, was in such an amazing find. Yeah. GM Hess in chat saying he said it from the beginning. Cheeto is super good. Well, apparently you were right, GM Hess. Um, and uh, anybody who picked uh, Cheeto as, as maybe the guy, we talked about the rapid ratings coming into the event that uh, are clearly clearly going to be needing a reset at the end of this event, which is Cheeto's event right now to win. That guy has been super impressive. And again, it's not just that he's winning, John. It's how he's winning that shows a different level of strength at this time. Yeah, it's it's been impressive. I mean, the first the first match really showing some real dominance and the second match getting behind, having that unforced error of that mouse slip and not giving up, not stressing, not panicking, but continuing to make good and strong move, good strong moves, continuing to create threats, keeping it complicated. It was uh it was an impressive game to see. Yeah. Well, let's remind everybody of who they're playing for. If Cheeto goes on to win, then we'll be uh writing a big old check to the Awuzie Kickstep Foundation. Um, it's um, a foundation he talked about, doing all kinds of all kinds of awesome things. And he he uh, could be taking $25,000 to his foundation. And um, of course, everyone else also has, has their own charity they're playing for. We'll find out what Micah's is. Don't worry, everybody. Don't you worry. Um, all right. Wow. I'm just, uh, I'm impressed by Cheeto, although I don't think we should count Amari out. Um, we see him kind of gathering himself, gathering his thoughts right now. On yeah, you camera. need to, you need to take a deep breath. Yep. You need take to a deep breath. get ready because you just had the white pieces. Your opponent played a delayed bond cloud. You got a piece up and you didn't quite convert. Yep. And that, that has to sting. And you have to take a second, take a breath and reset. No, it's uh, it's hard. It's hard in online chess. We talk about this even at the highest levels because the point is, online chess is not over the board chess where you have a rest day. You know, you got several hours, maybe a nice meal in Madrid if you're at the candidates, right? There's, there's no yeah, time. Where, where was my invitation? I yeah, somehow Jim. that got lost in the mail. <laughs> um, yeah, that was on Robert. Robert didn't get that to you, man. Classic Robert. Um. But uh, all right, we've got we've got the next game underway here. Again, we saw a Sicilian in our first battle between these two guys when Amari was white. Here we have a double king pawn. I think we're looking at a couple of the favorites to win the whole thing. And and even if Amari loses this match to Chichito, if he if he was able to get by Kavon, then he would still have a chance at revenge in the championship bracket tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we see a Ponziani opening on the yeah. board. And Black has just taken a pawn on e4. He's taken a pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not a free pawn because White will be able to win the e5 pawn back. Sh shout out to uh, to John for even knowing the opening. But well, in my defense, I'm, I'm an e5 player is Black, so you know you you see this on occasion, and uh, this is classic Shidobi. You. You know, I looked right. at a, a couple of his games, and he yeah. loves this E4, C3 type stuff. He's a C3 Sicilian player. He seems to play this against E4, E5 pretty consistently, so I was expecting to see this on the board. Okay, wow. Love that. I didn't know that, but there you go. Checking into uh, to Cheeto's account, the Ponziani um, is the opening. As, uh, as John said, you can see it if you're watching the game on chess.com with the opening explorer right there. If knight to G4... This position can get very scary for Black very quickly. This is the kind of opening that you get Ws in, especially in fast time controls fast. No wonder he likes it, because Black is already under pressure. Yeah, there's a real question. Where do you move your knight? Knight g4 is very attractive, but uh, you, have to, you have to watch out. 
Yeah. If white, you know, white defends the Epon, or maybe white even thinks about castling, there could be a quick attack, and he goes for knight d5. Knight d5 is a good move, centralizing the knight. Usually white should actually just get castled and not try to go for any sort of tricks on the knight here. Um, any kind of development. You can even play queen e2, which is a very common idea when you have a pawn on e5, because a pawn on e5 means no knight on f6, which means checkmate attacks. All right, and now Cheeto's taking his time, weighing his options. What do you think is a good plan here for white? So you have this e5 pawn, you have control over the f6 square, well-developed yep. bishop, you have that lead in development. How do you realize that in a position like this? Bishop g5 is a good move to start. Now, if he plays h4, then Cheeto really knows something. This is like, that would be a very impressive move uh, here. It's you, you, you don't have to, you can also trade and then play queen e2, but h4 is a, a common and, and very aggressive attacking idea in a position like this, where again, pawn on e5 means there's no knight here, which means there's all kinds of attacking chances. Okay. Right, now we have some tactics going. C4. If you take what is E5, going on here? white mm -hmm. takes here, and white's in a really good spot. You can move the knight, which is probably black's best move, actually. It's just to move the knight to B4. Uh, and he does it right on Q. Oh. Shout out to Amari Cooper. Finds the best move right there. Yeah, and this might start going Amari's way because now if you're Cheeto, you're getting some pieces traded off. You're not going to be able to hold on to the bishop pair. And uh, Black's about to castle and sort of say, yeah, you had a lead development, but it's gone now. What, what's so great about your position? So it's, it's staying a balanced game so far. Yeah, knight, knight to b4 was huge. And again, it pins mm -hmm. down the queen to guard the bishop. So it might make you even regret a move like bishop g5, because now if you just start trading and, and this knight trades, all of white's pressure is going to disappear. The best thing you can hope for when you have an overextended pawn like this is that you is that you bring the development behind the pawn so that you can use that space to launch an attack. I think that this is, okay, could we have our first tiebreaker? What if Amari wins his black? We go to blitz tiebreaker. That's what I want. I want tiebreaks. I agree. I'm ready to see these guys play some blitz. This is... I'm ready for some action. This is a close matchup, I have to say. Okay, seven and a half minutes, Cheeto using his time. If you're just tuning in, obviously you can see Cheeto won the first game, uh, but it was close. And actually Amari was up a piece in that game. So uh, Cheeto with a very impressive performance to start um, against, against Kayvon Thibodeau. Has kind of been the favorite throughout here, but um, but if Amari can somehow make a comeback, then Group A is still up for grabs. And Cheeto, Cheeto's playing well. Just Castles recognizes that this uh, this pawn on e5 cannot be taken right away. Well, except now, what's going on? And Black Castles. Oh, he castles. Yeah. The once the king is out of the center, you can take this pawn. And look at that. Cheeto's like, I know. I got you. Defending that pawn. Yeah, I was curious if even, even last move you could have taken the pawn. But maybe there were some tactics. Yeah, probably probably just risky with the king in the center. But I'll look at it real quick. I think if you take, take, and take with the queen, probably That's white's just developing. Yeah, and with the threat of rookie one and knight d5, I think probably mm -hmm. black is yeah. just under some pressure. Okay, queen before nice e3. The biggest problem with with Amari's position, if we're taking a big step back, is that he dealt with the pressure of the opening, and he's even got more time on the clock, but he hasn't figured out how to get developed yet. And with every passing move, White's pieces are going to get more dangerous in this kind of center. You said Cheeto was a big center guy coming into the uh, whoa oh, knight to be one the move. as a mouse. I think it was a mouse Another slip. Another mouse slip. Cheeto leading back. One, oh, yeah. This one could be fake. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Amari, bro, really? I don't think Cheeto's even touching the... Are you really? Cheeto's not, not even touching his... Move, uh, 
His computer. He's putting his hands up. Pre- my John Queen pre-moved. D2 is a it's still pre-moved pre-moved that I think he didn't even what make. What is it doing now, bro? No, it's, it, my queen's going to go to C2 automatically. My John, my John is, it, it pre-moved like four or five moves. I couldn't cancel it. It'll go to C2 and, uh, automatically. I don't know if uh, the audience... <laughs> Try right and left click. Oh, Try right and left click. He doesn't know he needs to grow. Oh, he needs to grow. This guy, bro. This guy, bro. Do the pre move. <laughs> He he claims yeah, that his computer has already bro. made about four pre moves. <laughs> hey, this is so funny. Nah, bro, we gotta go back. We gotta no. go back. What do you mean, my John? Oh, my John man. Moves. And <laughs> I told you. And this is one of the things your about mouse, online chess. Your hand, there's, uh, there's an your aspect. No, of this no, you no, 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 no. You're playing in no, person. No, you have no, these no, we ain't doing that, bro. Bro, an accidental pre move of moves. One followed by queen d two. Are you serious? Queen c. You're gonna flag, bro. Amari, bro. How do sh- I know you didn't initially make one bad move and now you try to say, ah, oh, pre-move this, pre-move that. That's what chess is, bro. I literally <laughs> said I pre-moved on accident. Hold up. And then you started moving, bro. And then you took my hey, Like, bro, what, are you serious? What, what are we, hey, what do we say in football? Offense don't wait, wait on wait, defense. No, 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 no. Offense don't wait on defense. <laughs> Offense that. don't wait on defense. Can everybody hear me in the chat right now? Is that is it is that correct? You really want to? You really want to go? I can't see or hear you. <laughs> but you really want to be dishonorable. <sighs> wait, wait, what are we doing? We can't. We got to go back. It's hmm? not how chess works, bro. You won the first Gino's game. Gino's asking for a take back. I don't, I don't, I don't have take back. I don't have time or or um privilege. Are you serious, bro? To give you any more opportunity here. Bro, I literally just told you where my queen was gonna go because I it pre-moved everything pre-moved. I tried to cancel. Hey, I was bro, canceling the flag, bro. They made more pre-moves. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You about Are you to serious? Play. You better make a move. <laughs> you better make a move. Hey, can everybody? Man, let me log into this Twitch thing, bro. <laughs> it's crazy, dog. Hey. No, nah, hey, bro. bro. No, bro. No, 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 no. Where are the where are the uh the the, the referees? They where, hear where, you. Where? There's nothing they can do, bro. It's like <laughs> who's to say if next game I won't make a, Chito, a, a we can hear pre-move I, and I, say I oh, the, nah, I'm nah, just listening nah. right now. I'm enjoying it. I love I, it. I, I don't you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see hey, I mean, you you bro. play for the Bengals now. I I knew the 2018, 2019, <laughs> the 2020 <laughs> Man, well, you, you know they say he was at the they, last year. You came bro, to the Airbnb last year. You know they say Cheeto. you know you know they say people change every couple of years. I don't know. This might be a new Cheeto. <laughs> you, and then you know how I know this is a new Cheeto. You say you would never buy a chain. You got a whole fifty dollar, fifty thousand dollar chain on your neck. Bro, I bought I this know. in twenty eighteen. I don't know this Cheeto. I don't know this Cheeto. You did not buy that in twenty. You did not buy that chain in twenty eighteen. Twenty nineteen, same thing. I don't no, care. I, I remember when you bought that chain. You bought that in twenty twenty, boy. So you that's when you knew me, regardless. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know you. I was on I, I was on the back end of knowing you. Um Alex and uh other bro, what's going on here? Because obviously bro, you you controlling your own mouse, bro. You pre-moved four bro, moves. He told me to cancel when I canceled it made but I'm saying, move. but Ch- Cheeto, this is the thing you pre-moved those moves with your mouse. I- can we that's just listen to this all day? No, 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 look, chess I went ever. to my night, and then I clicked, and then I tried to cancel it, then it clicked me back, and then I hit my queen to do my real move, because I, I couldn't even tell where my night was, and then I moved my queen. It's like, what? Yeah, but but what, what I'm saying is, all by the way, all these things you explain it. I will, I will fault. say <laughs> you know that, that it's not like shout out to Apple for making it impossible to <laughs> right click <laughs> ever with a mouse. Hey, and that's what, what Cheeto's you know talking what? about. Oh, I agree I with him, actually. That's why I would never use an Apple mouse <laughs> playing I'm on saying, chess.com though, bro, when like, you brush click. So, I mean, obviously, like, it is part of the game, and clearly, Amari is not having it, John. He's not going to let the take back. You are sick because you're the thing he making it up. And that type of guy, right? We're about to hear about three minutes and 40 more seconds. what I'm saying. I will never cheat to win. Call the arbiter. Ever. This is awesome. and I didn't cheat. <laughs> I didn't cheat. You like you pre moved, bro. I... Like, what am I supposed to do? So you telling me, you telling me like this, right? Well, what's up, bro? You're a receiver, and, you, and, and, and I'm a receiver. And, I am a receiver. And you and, and a corner guarded you, right? Right. Let's say 
you pull him by the face mask, throw him down to the ground, <laughs> right. catch a touchdown, right. and score. Right. Now, yes, you did score, but are you right. going to say, oh, whoop that boy. Like, see, I, I, <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. That's different because I would be cheating. That would be me cheating. You can't grab no, but they didn't the call the flag. They didn't call the flag, though. They did not call the flag. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying a more, um, a better analogy would be you're guarding me as a DB. You slip and fall. I score. I'm supposed to go back mm-hmm. to the ref and say, no, ref, he slipped. Mouse slipped. No pun intended. No pun intended. No. Ref, he slipped. Let me take that touchdown back. Ref, I don't want that to count. Like, what? <laughs> that doesn't hey, make sense. There was a commercial like that. There was a commercial like that. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again when it came back to the Huddleston coach. I got to tell him. He said, what? The boy told him that he, uh, he like, did travel or something, and then they came. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome! I, I can't, I, I can't rock with that analogy. That's that. No, that's a perfect yeah. analogy. You slip on a Ladies field, I score. We're gonna have, we're gonna have time. That's what you did. You say, you say you couldn't take back your pre. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Last right. game, my mouth slipped. Last game, my mouth slipped. What'd you say? Oh, is there a way to take it back? Because you were playing with honor, but now since exactly. you're back against the wall, exactly. now you're back against the wall. You take any advantage. That's a dude that changes up when the results happen. No, no, no. There's a saying, right? Fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me twice, that's on me. <laughs> that's on me. I gave you an opportunity. Hey, who's to say if I if you would have took that move back last game, I probably would have won. You fooled me once. Hey, you fooled me once. I hope. But no, I no, no. Hope. Wait, who's really wait? Who's really changing up? Because last time you said, um, you I said, yo. You can take the move back. You said no. Oh, all of a sudden you want to take it back now. <laughs> no, I pre-moved five moves. I just, my queen just went to a random square. I told you it was going to go to, and you made your night take it. What the heck is going on here, bro? Okay, you knew what the queen was <laughs> going, true. obviously. That is true. You pressed me. <laughs> No, if it was a, if it was if it was like the computer or the uh, the AI doing did. something on its own, you wouldn't have known. Right. Where it, it shows these guys are strong players. That's a heads up play by Amari to be like, oh, his queen's going to C two, just instantly spots knight B four. I mean, I just literally sacrificed. You're up fifteen awesome. points right now because of pre moves, and the clock is running down. Hey man, what were you saying last game? Genius, genius. They gonna say I'm a genius. They gonna say I'm a genius. Show your genius, bro. Like, oh, ain't no genius here, bro. All right, come on, come on, bro. Show you That's a good question, by the way, from Shadow. Let's ask John. Who is the advantage oh, in the Blitz this is game? Terrible, dog. Like, this is, this is sick, I, I'm still going Cheeto. I mean, the question is, will he be able to work out his technical difficulties? Yeah. Oh, and the we have moved with the, we, we need to see this game is not over. Uh, yeah, and you can Cheeto see there the, uh, the time control only gets faster uh, from here in tiebreak. So if he's got technical difficulties with the mouse, I'm with John, that that might make Cheeto – Less of a favorite than he seemed to be, yeah. but Cheeto is still playing though. The game is the game is not over. It's not although Amari has some pretty serious material odds right now. You got overconfident. Yeah. This and is hey, this is over. I didn't want to move. I literally clicked the wrong button, so then I try to move out of him, and then yeah, we, bro, that's, what do you mean you clicked the, the wrong button? There's only than one the button to push. I'm, I mean, on maybe the this is a public <laughs> cry to Apple to stop doing unnecessary things. Oh, yeah, well. he you know? needs to switch to the trackpad. That's why I got this yeah, mouse. The trackpad mouse would be better. Yeah. Hey, man. Bro, That's pretty funny, though. Apple, bro. Um, Apple, bro. That... Y'all are trash. At least for chess. John, that might have been the best analogy of a mouse slip I've ever heard. Like, someone's running to the touchdown and they slip. Mm-hmm. And I'm supposed to say, hey, you know, no, like... Oh, no, yeah. I'm not going to take the touchdown. Oh, corner. Oh, you fell down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, you don't worry. Up. I'll just wait for you. Let me pick you up. No, like you're. And you're it, was such a, <laughs> it was such a perfect analogy because it was a wide receiver talking to a quarterback, right? Wide receiver saying, I scored a touchdown and you slipped. I'm not going to I'm not going to wait for you to get up. Oh, man. Yo, you I love it. Funny, bro. Best chess content of the year. This is hilarious. Um. That's a sick guy, bro. And yeah, I ain't gonna lie. What's going on? So uh, this is happening more than once. Game quickly. If, uh, <laughs> Why are you lying, bro? <laughs> three, uh, you don't take three. You have uh, you get in favor back rank made here. That were not well, earned, but you there's say, there's okay, rookie one there. Luck must have signed off today. Yeah, after Knight takes F three, there'd be back rank mate. So let's see what happens. Oh, and he recognizes. Cheeto sees that, takes us the pawn. This is over anyway. But at least Cheeto has decided to make some moves. We're not just gonna see a a timeout, but. It's funny because, like, I agree with Amari, obviously, and that was a great analogy about a corner slipping as a wide receiver tries to score. 
but it's also like we've all been there anyone who's played online chess knows the feeling of being frustrated by a mouse slip and yeah the question um, is do you know the feeling of <laughs> making three accidental pre-moves in a row I, is this that's why i would never i don't even know why i have this mouse in the office i want to like i want to like frame it now as like never use again um came with my laptop but i don't use my laptop for for playing chess it's over here on the side you know also, can we can we like really comment on Cheeto's analogy? It was this was pretty strong. <laughs> he compared this this mouse slip to Amari grabbing his face mask, pulling him <laughs> down, <laughs> and then catching the touchdown in the end zone. <laughs> oh man! And he's like, "Where's the flag on the play? Where's the referee?" First of all, I think the next time we do Bliss Champs, maybe we'll get an animation and a graphic for a flag when we see unnecessary mouse slip. That's hilarious. Um, I just want to take Cheeto. the night. Like, I, I don't know why. I just want to take the night. You're not taking the night. I won't let you get that satisfaction. I resign. Yeah, the arguing was incredible. <laughs> Agreed. Take the night. Best part of the day so far, regardless of what happens. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to ask Amari what he thinks about Skip Bayless. Queen, not a bad idea, chat, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Huh? Give, you a give you a queen? Yeah. I'll give you a queen. All right. Okay, we've got a pawn. <laughs> we, we have a pawn. Queen. That's true. I love that comment, by the way. Cheeto about to get sponsored by Logitech. Not a bad idea. They make a much better mouse than Apple. Queen. Logitech, if you're interested, free promo. <laughs> Wait, get, so you it, bro, get the queen. Hey, you said I one. want a queen. Get the queen. He's gonna say, he's gonna say, what? Oh, I, I said you could get a queen. I didn't say I was gonna take bro, it away. I'm a very like this is what you don't understand about me, Cheeto. I'm a very honorable guy. You said you want a queen. There's your queen. All right, let me get the queen. There it is. Like, go get it. Look at that. Right there. You can have it, bro. Wait, did, did Amari give the queen on purpose? Mari says he's gonna give him the queen. Yeah, I know. You happy now? Uh, Mari played uh, knight d4, and it knight, still does not matter. Sucker. Cheeto's <laughs> trying hey, to orchestrate his stalemate. Shows. By the way, if he did get a stalemate, hey. he would win without tiebreakers. <laughs> like so knight, if, if Cheeto was maybe yeah, slow playing, go. that he's got a sneaky <laughs> plan. Yeah, Mari's you know a playing a little loose, not playing the oh. best moves. You know, oh God, bro. the question possible is possible to get the knight. Okay. I'll take the more big signs. I don't care how much y'all counted me out. Yeah. You guys know we got tie break now. Yeah, Cheeto, that was the. All right, we're going to tie break. We got some blitz. <laughs> we do have blitz. Okay, now we've got a, a second to take a breath here. Uh, look at that third box right there. The match tiebreaker is three minutes with a five second increment throughout. So this will be fast. Uh, the player who had the most accurate accurate score of the two games on average will get white first. So the team will be uh, calculating that now. Um, I have no idea. I want to be make a prediction of what the accuracy score might have been, but uh, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess Amari, just because that last match was so close, and I don't know those those pre moves have to have to tank the caps. I don't know about seriously. you, but I'm thinking we're gonna see Amari as white, but we will I, hear. I'm I'm just hopeful that Cheeto fixes his uh, his his mouse problem. You know, um, and teaches everybody a lesson about using the uh the uh, non-right clickable apple mouse so a stalemate would have been epic i agree chess ninja it didn't happen but it would have been epic even these more two guys epic, have too though. much respect for each other we saw amari resign after a really great game from cheeto in game one and here amari cheeto despite the frustration is not going to go for stalemate even more epic than stalemate is a blitz tie break Let's see what Let's we got. Let's tie right. Here we go. Another Sicilian. Another Sicilian. Amari Cooper is white. So F4. he did have the more accurate game um, throughout. And so here we go. We've got Amari playing the white pieces and GM Hess in the chat. Shout out to you. Um, all right. They should have a talk show, Robert. I agree. Like a, ch a chess talk show would be right up. Okay, John, this is wild. We've got us. They're playing so quickly. <laughs> Soon they're going to each have more than four minutes. Yeah, they get five seconds with every move. Look at that. Cheeto puts the knight on F5, knows what he's doing in this Sicilian. Close Sicilian, a man after Robert Hess's heart, that being Amari Cooper. 
-hmm. By the way, great position for Amari. If he plays knight g5 and queen h4 in a blitz game, this is this is very dangerous for black. Mm -hmm. Okay, goes back to bishop b3. What's the idea here? Okay. He had to guard c2. Um, and Cheeto immediately plays bishop b6. The quality chess here is just crazy. These guys, I, I would put on average, like this is like, we take away the mouse lips, John, this has been 1700 level chess, I would say, um, for the most part, it, by Cheeto so far and by Amari in these games. Yeah, absolutely. The first game was really high level. That second game, the opening was quite high level. I don't know about that night be one move. Yeah. But uh, prior to that, <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, as, as we learned, it was probably the first of his mouse slips, turns out. Yes. yes. Um, before mouse slipping the entire game. Um, all right. Queen d5 by Cheeto attacks the b3 pawn and gives Amari some big things to think about. I actually feel like Amari made a mistake going defensive, John. He should have kept this idea of coming to this side of the board with the, the typical close Sicilian attack. Rook d1. This is this is a move I do not love so much. I suppose the idea is that uh, d3 is already defended after queen takes b3, but the problem is all of white's pieces are tied down. The bishop on c1 is locked in. The rook on a1 yep. isn't doing anything. The rook on d1 is on a closed file. This yep. is not looking good for white right now. Agreed. Agreed, agreed. And again, everything about this structure that's an advantage for white, everyone, is not being used here by Amari. The, the pawn, they they grip the king side and allow for very strong mating nets in a close Sicilian, but but Amari is completely distracted with what Cheeto's doing on the queen side. By the way, I think Cheeto's being very careful with the mouse right now. Like, not touching it when he's not moving. He's like, I'm not going near that thing. <laughs> Okay. Queen F2. I like that move, John. He's headed back for the kingside attack. Mm -hmm. All right. And now B5 opening the position up. Yeah, B5 was a good move. Well, yeah. And now Knight C2. Ah, oh, Knight C2. Uh, I didn't even realize that the queen yeah, stopped. Yeah, this the rook. rook is running out of squares. Dude, nice fun. I, I was wondering why the eval bar slid, and I saw knight c2, but I didn't even realize the rook is just trapped where it stands. What a move that would be if Cheeto finds it. Well, he's thinking about it. And he, oh, and he, he finds it. it. Dude. There you go. Take away the mouse slips, and I would argue Cheeto has played 2,000-plus levels yesterday, honestly. It moves like knight c2, that bishop c7 move from the first game, yep. I'm... I'm incredibly impressed. The great technique converting these games against Kayvon, these, these are some really strong, high-quality games from him. Yep. No, the dude is legit. Agree with Buffalo Soldiers. Dude is legit. He wouldn't be allowed to play Pog Champs, I think. I think Cheeto's too strong to play Pog Champs. He might be too strong for this event. <laughs> well, we're going to find out that. if anyone 1100 can stop rapid the guy. rating. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. I'm, this is looking suspicious. Yeah. I was I was teasing Joe or sorry, I was teasing Cheeto about Joe not uh not accepting our invite to the event and he did, you know. He is busy. But I think he's right that like I think I think if Joe knows that Cheeto's playing, Cheeto must be a very very strong player compared to anyone he throws down against. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dude. All right. Amari's taking position. a lot of time here. Amari, at some point, you need to recognize that you are going to lose this rook and try to do this under the most favorable circumstances possible. I, I like it. You, you, good call by you. And I think this is exactly how you do that. Queen comes to mm -hmm. h4. You go back to your plan. Unfortunately, it's not really a forced mate, but at least you're putting pressure on someone in a blitz game with some threats against the king. This is the plan that, unfortunately for Amari, he probably should have been going for several moves ago. All right, and Cheeto's taking his time, calculating, also trash talking from what from what I can see. Chat says to pop the chain. 
<laughs> I love that Amari was like, you know, they say people change every two years. You said you never buy a chain. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, man. These guys are great. Remembering some of the best interviews we've ever had in these in our in our celebrity events, John. I think of uh, mm -hmm. think of some Pog Champs interviews with Cutie Cinderella. Most of the time, those things okay. get real real fast. <laughs> but that was that was a pretty awesome banter by our, by the two players. Yeah, but uh, but Cheeto is spending some time. Maybe it'd be good to you know, quiet down a little bit and let's let's finish this game. Okay, and he plays Night Night Takes. Takes Okay. Now what do you do? It's not over yet. Amari still has chances, and Cheeto's down on the clock. Yeah, how do you finish this out quickly and without counterplay? That's the question. The question is, does Cheeto realize that Knight G5 isn't really a threat because of H6? Maybe he doesn't. In fact, that move rookie 8 to me tells me he doesn't, and he's already run, preparing to run the king. No, I think oh, H6. Everybody. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Everything Never is mind. handled. Everything is handled. Here he goes. Queen B3. Hey, Queen B3. Some Very serious nice. threats. Let's see if Amari recognizes that his rook on D1 is undefended. I love that move. Queen B3. You asked, John, how do you convert this with limiting chances? It's a really strong move hitting the rook in the pawn because if you win this guy on d3 here comes the c pawn that might be the fastest path to victory look at that dude yeah the technique when he's not mouse slipping he's just winning that that's, yeah, no, that's it's what Keto does see. yeah c4 c3 is coming this is this is smooth chess as they say yeah Amari focus. He's got a minute up on the clock. I think both of them really started to realize, John, that they're getting that five seconds and they just started mm -hmm. to take their time. Just smart, mature chess there, using your time if you're Cheeto. Mm -hmm. And if you're white, what do you do? What are the tricks? What are the ideas? Okay. Cheeto did a great job of stopping this knight g5 idea because mm -hmm. without this, it's hard to see how you pose problems. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Hmm. Again, back to the uh, Hikaru. How blunderable is the position in a, in a, in a champ style event? It's it's it, there's plenty of pieces on the board for blunders, but it's hard to see, right? And this position is just getting easier for Cheeto to do simple things like advance your pawns. Yeah. Also, Cheeto's taking his time, going over to the queen side to capture that pawn. Clearly, yeah. not in a rush to find some knockout. Just playing good moves. This is just. Straightforward chess. 48 seconds for Amari. I, I'm not sure how to come up with something here. Yeah, Bishop C1. I mean, at this point, Amari is just playing for desperation and hoping for an eventual mouse slip. What else? Keto has do? a very accurate style. Again, I know we just saw mm -hmm. this epic mouse slip affair, but like just the way he plays, John, it's like he's he's just like strangling his opponent's chances. I love it. Defensive minded, like a good cornerback. But on bump. Yeah. Seriously, h6 to stop knight g5, bishop f8 to, to, to protect against knight d6. Okay, I like g4. All in is what you got to be if you're Amari Cooper. Okay, g5 and how? Yeah, unfortunately, I think he's running out of chances. Oh. And h5, I, I love this move. Okay, nice fork. Nice fork. Okay, there's a fork, but somehow this pawn mass, I think it's still going to decide the game. This is too much. Three pawns connected. How do you know? How do you know? They're playing I don't know. I'll say, did you? And I love that Cheeto, again, like, just so accurate on the king side. Meets, meets, you know, as we said, meets earlier with h6, meets g5 with h5, just keeping the position closed, not letting Amari have any real chances against his king. 
Okay, what would it take for this to go wrong here? Though. I mean, I shout out to Amari count. for I'll keeping it, it keeping it a nice move, dude. Queen C4, mm -hmm. that's a nice move. Safe in the safe round right now. Okay, there we go. Rook A6. Okay, if he sees Rook takes G6, all bets are off. Oh, oh my God! Right. But no, but still, I mean, King H7. Oh my gosh! Wait, but now. Let's see. Dude, that, that just completely turned around there. Now, what do you need to do here? Dude, oh, wow. Oh, my oh, gosh. He's, wow. He's fumbling the bag. <laughs> there should be seven. And he, and he realizes it. Look at his face. He sees oh it. Oh, my gosh. He sees it. The question Dude, is. Dude, shout out to Amari Cooper for finding Rook A1, Rook A6, Rook takes G6. What the bleep? All right, and he takes with the queen. Oh my, what in the world? What a comeback. And that's game. Oh. Rook H6 that's is mate. That's game. That's mate. I've seen it right away. I don't want to say anything. I had so much hope for you, Cheeto. And he finds it. <laughs> I had a lot of hope for you, bro. No, I literally just blundered. No, you played well. You played well. Blundered. Like, I mean, I was up. I just blundered. I that am that move, bro, shocked my, right um... now. And shut up. It wasn't anything you had to do, bro. I blundered. Hey, would you guys be willing to both jump in for the interview? Oh, my gosh. What a crazy turn of events. We were talking about blunderability. Like, Amari made some really strong moves through the stretch to give Cheeto a chance to go wrong. Yeah, the, the move... <laughs> Rook A1, Rook A6, mm -hmm. and Rook takes G6. Oh, yeah. It was also, this queen move, freezing point. Black's pawns, where, yeah, these were these were some good moves. No, I mean, seriously, like, that's like, that was the one shot that White had to turn that game around. We were doing nothing but applauding Cheeto's performance, as we should have been. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like, like, over. But before you know it, Amari Cooper turns it around and... We do have we do have a shakeup in Group A. These results yeah, are yeah, not absolutely. what we thought they were going to be a moment ago. With Cheeto running away with it, instead we have Amari Cooper uh, saying that he still has a chance, depending on what happens with his match versus Kayvon Thibodeau. Yeah, although the one thing to keep in mind is that uh, Cheeto is actually the only person who has solidified their spot in tomorrow's match, right? Uh, that's fair, actually. Even you know, no matter what happens, right? If Amari wins, it's Cheeto and Amari, right? Mm -hmm. And if Kayvon makes a comeback, then we'll see what could happen between Kayvon and Amari. But Cheeto's performance, because he lost in tiebreakers, mm -hmm. uh, everyone, means he got at least a point. So he has clinched that he will be playing in the championship bracket on Sunday. That's a really good point, John. Yeah, Danny, um, you see that that math degree? It comes I'd, I'd love to I'd love to bring back the chess position and show that thing by Amari Cooper. The that that idea of rook a6, rook g6. That was that was literally I don't even know what level to call that tactic, John. Um I don't know what level to call that tactic cuz it it actually all started with with that whole queen to c4 idea that we had i i don't want to i don't want to talk too much about it but i i got to go back to it at some point because that was like that was high level chess starting uh starting to show amari cooper's strength and that this isn't going to be a one horse race if uh if amari cooper has anything to say about it so um let's see yeah we, we got the board now i can i can show it here for you everybody amari cooper putting on a comeback performance here and what was a horrible position finds queen c4, which pins the pawn on f7. That's the beginning of this tactic. That pawn can't move because it's check. Then finds rook a6, with almost no time on the clock, by the way. Attacks the queen, but even more importantly, it actually threatens to take on g6. The queen moves to any square now, and then rook takes g6, John. This is like... This is just wild, right? I mean, what's yeah, funny is if Black tough. had found Bishop G7, Black is actually still winning. Yeah. Which I didn't realize. Yeah, I was... Uh, so this, I actually did happen to realize. And uh, yeah, King H7, you know, you get checked, you, your instinct is to just move out of the way. Yep. But already after King H7, it's it's not so easy. 
Yeah, the rook comes back to f6, and even if you don't blunder what Cheeto did, from a practical perspective, this is already very, very hard, right? So this rook takes g6 was a very, very amazing tactic from Amari. And then after yeah, king h7, rook f6. It's not easy to, de to defend because if something like rook d7, maybe you have g6. Yeah. 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 King g7 is maybe the best. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of stuff going on here. This is going to be so hard for, for black to defend. And as we saw after bishop to e7, mm -hmm. there you see the comeback completed. The eval bar slides all the way up the board. And we have checkmate. I, I'm like Yo. just so impressed by Amari Cooper here and that plan to make that comeback there. What? Uh, can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. yeah. hey, no, no, no. We don't hear you, bro. We don't hear you, bro. <laughs> Wait, maybe I got to do something. No, um, we, we, we can hear you. We can hear you guys. <laughs> we can hear you, Amari. Don't let Cheeto. Don't listen to Cheeto. Cheeto be Ouzie. That's how you pronounce his name. Oh my gosh, bro. Oh my gosh. What a game. What a game this was. What a comeback. Uh, that was absolutely a good, crazy. Now that I look back on that move, Cheeto, that was a pretty no, impressive it's move by me. With you. It's nothing to do with you. I blundered, period. It's literally nothing. <laughs> but to you do know, you. pressure. To do with you. <laughs> but the pressure made you blunder, though. The pressure was not applied by you. The pressure was applied by the clock. Let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. I don't know. I mean, we were talking about it. These moves like queen c4, rook a6, these were laying some pretty some pretty deadly threats. Yeah, Amari, I got to ask, when did you see, at what point did you see that idea? Because that position is falling apart for you. Obviously, yeah. it, it's very difficult to find an idea. But you spotted this rook a6 and then played rook takes g6. And when did that idea pop in your head? So I, I remember exactly when it popped into my head. So at first, I saw that I had the rook a6 when I had the queen on uh, f1, but I didn't yeah. do it. I moved the queen to uh, c4. And then when I moved the queen to c4, uh, that's when I saw it. That's when I saw it. I saw that I can move it, move the, um, the rook to a6 and attack the queen. Yeah. And I knew once he moved the queen, I had that. Um, I could take that pawn because that the the pawn on uh the other pawn was pinned to the uh, king. Damn, wow, you know what that is? That's chess.com lessons in action. <laughs> yeah, <it was> good. <laughs> those are those chess.com lessons paying yeah, off. Yeah, chess.com. Good, good promo. Good <laughs> promo. How how many how many puzzles and lessons are you doing these days? Because Cheeto in the interview earlier was saying that he saw you you completed like 2,000 of our lessons. So no, how that often was a do you point... spend studying chess, Amari, versus playing chess? Yeah, so there was a point. Uh, Cheeto wasn't lying. I, actually, he was telling the truth. Um, there was a point where I first started playing. So let me go back a little bit. I was playing at the Raiders, and then I got to a point where I was just destroying all my teammates at the Raiders. And then when I got to the Cowboys, m me and Cheeto's locker was right next to each other, and he saw me playing chess on my phone one day. He was like, you play too? I was like, yeah, I play a little bit. And then... Um, we just started playing from there and Cheeto was a like he was like a beginner 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 like a sub a thousand you know like 700 or something like that and at that point I was like I was probably like a thousand eleven hundred so I was smacking him smacking him but I wasn't just trying to like smack him I was just I was also trying to kind of like teach him some stuff too and then he got to a point because Cheeto like he a very fast learner like He's a very fast learner, so um, he got to a point where um, it was more competitive, but I was still winning. And then it got to a point to where it was like more back and forth, and I ain't like that. Like <laughs> I did not like that. So um, I was like, man, nah. And then I was tired of I was tired of like being at the level I was at, so I just started doing hecka chess dot com lessons. And Cheeto like he kept wanting to play because I, admittedly we was getting to a point. So on chess dot com they tell you your win loss record against a, a certain person. And my win-loss record against Cheeto was, like, phenomenal. <laughs> and then I had changed chess.com accounts. And my my, my win-loss record on the new account was still better. But he was catching up. <laughs> I didn't like that. He was catching up. So when he got, like, two games behind, I'm like, nah, I ain't about to let him just take off for me. <laughs> so I started doing lessons and stuff like that. At that point, I did, like, I did a lot of lessons. I'm not even going to lie. But... Yeah, like Cheeto said, it, it really, like, it helped me, but it didn't help, like, 
I don't think the um the opening lessons, like the lessons on openings, um, it was too advanced for me. So like I didn't really it none of it really st stuck. So he would still kind of like we would still kind of be back and forth because he would get a good um, advantage out of the opening. But um, like yeah. I should have had with Ponziani, but then you freaking took. I but you didn't. You didn't in that Ponziani, bro. I knew you would play the Ponziani. You did not have an advantage that game. I did, bro. No, I I'm saying before when I didn't know what to do against the Ponziani, like you was you used to kill me with it. I'm not even gonna lie, but. No, you didn't have it. That wasn't so. Into, you fell into something that game, bro. And I'm Think sure so? the experts out there probably seen a million ideas, but you were definitely on the defensive. But that doesn't mean <laughs> you were going to execute them. <laughs> that doesn't mean you were going to execute uh, those ideas. <laughs> Your job saved you. So, okay, what happened last game when I made those brilliant moves? What happened? You did them brilliant moves. I blundered. <laughs> bro like my chest streams, but here's know. the thing here's the thing you blundered you blundered because you was playing me you didn't blunder against Kayvon no no, no. Look, <laughs> check this why didn't you everybody, blunder against Kayvon <laughs> you if anybody knows I watched my streams in the past or if you could look at my popular clips my chest streams are literally called blunder tour because I blunder <laughs> I so, blunder. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let me get this straight. Is that man? I'm putting in feature. Is that um, an excuse or like what? What are we doing here? All I'm saying it has nothing to do with you. It has more to do with me. You won, but you aren't. So, better than so like when I used to catch passes on when I used to catch passes on you in practice. When I used to catch passes on you in practice, that had that it was because you you blundered, you made mistakes, or was, did, do I get some credit here? That's all I'm trying to figure out. If you if you beat me on the field, you beat me on the field. We're talking about chess, bro. It's the same thing: winning versus losing. No, because if we do a one on one, and there's been times where you know we got you, I guard you or whatever, and you may get a little push. Do I say anything? No, it's just football, bro. You feel me? That's just football. In chess, it's very obvious when something like that happens, and my fellow chess fans understand that. But but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Um, even in the candidates, bro, like. All right, even. Bro, Tito, Tito, Yeah, Tito, keep going. I might so be. It, it sounds like you guys have enough of a rivalry. Maybe we should just set up another match, right? Like a one-on-one -on -one match. Forget forget Blitz Champs, just like. Uh, <laughs> we did that. If we did that, I know Amari would be scared. He would be scared. Because <laughs> now he pissed me off. And like I said, Cheeto plays chess for fun. <laughs> Against Amari, it's deeper than that. Because it is. <laughs> okay. it's, it, people have told me numerous times they hate to see me win. That's fine. Because I talk and I have fun after I win. This guy right here, the lengths that he'll go to win is disgusting to me. <laughs> it's really disgusting. So wait, um, you don't like... So you don't like winning as much as me. That's basically what I'm what I'm getting. I'm not willing to sacrifice who I am to win. But this is the thing. I forget the saying that they say in chess. You have to be just like um, just like how you forgot your your honor. Same thing. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot my honor. Wow. Why do you think these guys at chess.com wasn't saying anything when you was like? Mouse slip. Uh, I pre-moved four times. Why do you think they were silent? You think they didn't hear you? No, time out. Time out. <laughs> no, you think they didn't hear you, or you think like they've heard it a million times? Oh, this, that, the third. It's nothing that they can do. It's nothing that you can do. Your mouse, your hand. You touch it, you move it, bro. Like I don't get it. Bro, I understand that. Bro, you know what I might do. I might just lose to Kayvon so you can just go and win the, the tournament. I might be that gracious well, to you. I will say this. Regardless of what happens with the Kayvon match, Cheeto, I know this was a tough match, but you are moving on to the championship bracket. You will be in the championship on Sunday, just so you know. Okay, so you're good. You're good. You have nothing to worry about. Yeah, we might be seeing a rematch. We'll see. We can play him possibly again. It could happen. I'm I'm counting on it. But we this don't know. We don't know. Match. We don't know what um what Micah because Micah has gotten better. We don't know. I don't know. I've never even seen Larry Fitzgerald play. You know, he's very 
that's a guy who don't even drop passes, so I know he doesn't blunder much. No, <laughs> no, he, he, he's probably he's busy. He's a busy man. I, I doubt he plays. Like if he, if, if he, but we're if, all busy, bro. What you mean? I mean, I'm saying he's done with football now, so he's probably doing media or whatever he's doing. He probably has a lot. Okay, of, he has even more time now. You don't have a family. Micah doesn't have a family. Kevin doesn't have a family. Well. Larry does play a lot on chess.com. I can say that he doesn't play rapid that often. So we'll see right with the time control. But speaking of rapid Amari, you came in as the highest rated rapid player. You got by you got by Cheeto here in tiebreakers. But now that you played the play time rapid. control, now that you played the time control, how are you still feeling about about your chances in this in this format? Yeah, I don't even I, I, I don't even play rapid. Anytime I've played rapid is probably like been by mistake or something. Um, I only really play blitz, but the time control is is cool for me because I I only play blitz, so it seems like I have a lot of time. The thing yeah. I want to be cognizant of is just not moving too fast, um, while my opponent takes his time. That's the only thing, just because I'm used to moving at a faster pace. That's interesting because uh, the first game, I it, your clock was kind of getting low there. What was that about? Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was taking my time. I thought I thought it was like, oh, you too conscious of moving too fast and your clock almost ran out and, and you got, and you resigned. So what was that about? Bro, I had to resign. You was, you was going to win. <laughs> I, I'm not big on wasting time. <laughs> I'm well, not big on wasting time, bro. Like you guys, let me talk about that real quick. Cause we've done a lot of events with a, a lot of celebrities, you know, uh, different, different genres. First time we've done all NFL, but a lot of people play it out to stalemate. But you guys weren't doing that, right? Amari, when you were losing, you had respect for Cheeto. You resigned. And then in game two, Cheeto, when that one got away from you, you resigned there. Do you guys do you guys resign when you know it's at over? Or do you no, ever play it all the way out to stalemate no, or checkmate? I mean, it, it, it depends on the position. In that position, I knew Cheeto would queen. Like, I I played him so many times, I knew he would know exactly how to get another queen. I knew it was over with. Like, it, But if it was a different situation, definitely would have went for stalemate, especially with, like the time you know what i mean like it was it's a rapid game so i mean he would have probably been moving fast if it had been a um, different position but that position no it definitely he would have queened and i would it was a slow death i didn't want a slow death and on, yeah. my part, on my part uh i used to be the stalemate champ like 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 Amari <laughs> stalemate, he used to whip me pretty good so i would just be looking for stalemates and i would get them too <laughs> I no, just... so there was a um. So we used to do like so. You got the stalemate. That's a st like stalemate, and then you have the um, 50 50 move. move. And so it was a it was a time. There was a time I didn't know how to checkmate with a rook and a king. I just didn't know how to. I didn't know how to do it. And he would get me. He would he would get that stalemate every time. I was like, no, I, I have to learn this. So I, I I I learned it, and like it never happened again. But. Because that's one of the that's one of the checkmates that you actually have to learn. Like it's like yeah. it's not obvious. You have to close that box. And so um yeah, he got that. You probably got that that um draw like at least five, nah, probably more, like at least five times. But yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, it seems like you've come a long way in your chess journey. I'm curious, Amari. Since being in Cleveland, who are you playing chess with these days? Are you playing with anyone in the locker room who who likes to play chess? Uh yeah, um so Josh Dobbs, he um he plays a little bit. I'm like three and zero against him though, <laughs> but um no he plays. Uh Deshaun Watson plays, but he he's more interested in just learning more. <laughs> There's a quarterback coach, um that these guys go to and train with, and his whole thing is I don't really know him, but from what I've heard, his whole thing is like um meshing football with chess, um as far as like a mindset thing. And so um, when those guys get to him and train a little bit, he teaches them like chess. Um, I don't know how, how far they get into it, but they at least learn how the pieces move. So a lot of quarterbacks, um, well, not a lot, but some quarterbacks in the league, they've learned chess through him. So. Oh, wow. Who, who's the coach? What's his name? I don't remember. I don't remember his name. Well, Amari, you're about to play Kayvon. Uh, right. He's waiting for what? Do, what do you know about Kayvon as a chess player? What do, What do you got with plans and prep for uh, for this next matchup? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. I don't have any plans or prep for Kayvon. I played him once because we have the same agent. So um, I played him one time. Uh, I won. Um, so that's that's all okay. I know. <laughs> well, 
uh, Amari, uh, but thank you both, by the way. This was awesome. It's awesome we have both players. And before we let you go, Amari, real quick, because this is a, an event for charity, just tell us real quick about the Barnyard, the charity you're playing for, before we let you go and throw down uh, in this matchup versus Kayvon. Uh, yeah, so the Barnyard is my after-school program. It's the program that I I, um, I grew up going to, summer camp, after school. It's a nonprofit. Um, it's a huge reason why I'm here today. You know, um, the thing was you finish your homework as fast as you can and you go outside and you play football. <laughs> that was the thing. But we did a lot of um, other activities. We went on very unique field trips um, and it, it just molds everybody. Um, and this is a big part of my childhood. And I just was there. Uh, I was just there last week. Um, it's awesome. And it was very um, nostalgic to be there. But no, it's um, just after school program that I really like. Um, and it keeps, it keeps kids out of the streets and stuff like that after school. So, uh, that's who I wanted to donate it to. It's awesome, man. Well, again, you guys both awesome Cheeto again, because you lost in a tiebreaker, like we said, you've already punched your ticket for the championship round. So I'm sure you're going to be watching to see who joins you, whether it's Amari or Kayvon and, uh, best of luck to both you guys, Amari in your next match and, and, uh, Cheeto will see you tomorrow. All right, sounds good. y'all. All right. Bye guys. Cool. cool. That's the that's the standings, like we said, John uh, Amari about to throw down versus Kayvon, and that matchup will decide who joins Cheeto uh, in the uh, in the championship bracket. Before we jump into that, as the players get set, one more quick reminder again that the Chess.com Global Chess Championship is happening every weekend. We're getting ready for the play-in phase. The play-in phase is where the title players will be joining. All kinds of knockout qualifiers on the weekends will decide who joins the top 64. We invited 32 players. Uh, John, did you know that Kramnik accepted his invite? Oh, I'm excited. I, yeah, I love and, seeing Kramnik play in the RCC. It was, uh, yeah, it was a well, lot of that, fun. That didn't go so well in the end with the time, but we, we, you know, we'll, we'll let that go. <laughs> but, um, but no, Kromnik, Laco, uh Michael at like we invited a bunch of a bunch of legends of the previous generation. We thought that would be a, a lot of fun. And of course, we're going to see who qualifies to join them. So pretty pumped about that. Um, Vichy also playing. Anyway, the uh, the play in phase will begin here soon. You don't have many more chances to qualify on the weekend, so you should do it. Go to go.chess.com slash CGC 2022 uh, to. Uh, to have your chance to qualify and play for the chess.com global chess championship all right when we come back we will have the next matchup here in blitz champs it is amari cooper versus Kayvon thibodeau the last matchup of group a when we return don't go anywhere we will be right back Amari, you still a suck
We're back here with Blitz Champs. Our third match of the day is about to get underway. Kayvon Thibodeau and Amari Cooper chatting it up a little bit, getting to know each other before they uh, get to know each other real well on the chessboard. John, would you say you get to know someone better after you've played chess with them? Yeah, yeah, you get a sense of uh, of their style, their techniques, their tendencies. I think Amari said they've already played once before. I know they said Amari said they have the same agent, but uh, yeah, they're about to get very familiar with each other over the next 30, 40 minutes or so. <laughs> it's it's true, I think. I, I've had many coaches say that, you know, chess is psychology. You know, chess chess can reveal a lot about someone's characteristics and uh, their personality in terms of how they handle the conflict, how they handle different opportunities to play defense or offense on the board. So uh, anyway, we're here with John Urschel. Reset for those of you who maybe just got here. This is chess.com's first ever Blitz Champs, $100,000 for charity for these NFL stars. And it's been it's been wild, John, so far. I mean, biggest surprise so far. Your, your biggest surprise. A lot of surprises. There's no one biggest surprise. First of all, I was shocked to see how good Cheeto was at chess. Yeah. Like playing at an He's incredibly already got high level. points, as we can see. Yeah. And then in the second match, Amari was playing incredibly well also. And Cheeto did make a number of uh, unforced errors through mouse slips, uh, faulty pre moves. But Amari really made the most of his chances, and especially in that blitz tiebreak game. Yeah. These moves like queen c4, rook a6, recognizing the pin pawn. Amari really took advantage of his chances. That that really, I think, was a big surprise. And I'm excited to see what he does against Kavion. Yeah, it was super impressive. He uh, found this idea and found it fast. It was amazing to see Amari keep his head about him, despite being in a much worse spot against Cheeto, who, you know, Pound for pound, it felt like Cheeto was the stronger player, just to be totally mm -hmm. honest, right? I mean, Cheeto won the first game pretty cleanly and then was uh, was off to a decent start in the Ponzihani before uh, before mouse slipping his way to some plunders, sadly. Um, but um, but then even in the Blitz tiebreaker, he was on a roll, right? He was there and he was um, on his way to maybe winning before Amari Cooper pull the comeback. So if you missed that, you're going to want to back up. There's probably some clips by our team on social media. If you're just getting here, thanks for spending your Saturday afternoon, evening, whatever that is with us here. And it uh, looks like the game is, is already rolling here. Okay. We, we have, we have several moves on the board here, John. I'm going right. to quickly show everybody how we got so... here. It was a French by cave on kind of a hybrid looking weird French with the uh, fee and keto. And here and... we are. It looks like Amari races. has some devious intentions with the queen on d2, bishop on e3, maybe trying to put some pressure, a3, telling that knight to go back. And so far, I really like Amari's position. I think he he's for choice here. I don't know what you think, but there's definitely some options. You can castle either way. Yep. Ideas of maybe bishop h6 at the right time. White I think has, Amari's uh, position is much better. And, and the reason, yeah. everyone, is that when you've got this type of structure that's closed, you have to be able to put pressure on it when you have less space. This knight is very out of place in front of black C pawn. And uh, that means that Kayvon's position, there's a, that's why that eval bar really kind of favors white is because it's hard for black to find moves when you don't have space. Um, that said, there's time, right? I like that move B5. If he can continue to make moves to get space on the queen side, I'm liking his chances mm -hmm. more than before. Yeah, B5. How do you how do you meet this move? So black hasn't committed their king yet. So what would you, if you're white, what do you try to do here? What's your idea? I mean, if if I'm white, I go for the everything on the king side, as you said. I mean, the reason mm -hmm. white was spoiled for choice with the king, you could go either way. But it doesn't change the plan here, which is to go get rid of this dark square bishop. And wow, Amari, there you go. I mean, this is high level chess here. Bishop h6. If that bishop is traded, all of a sudden the, the floodgates open over here on the king side. A bunch of dark squares become available, and black could get in trouble very quickly. So Kayvon should, okay, knight f5 is good. I was going to say, or you should castle to defend the bishop.
Yeah, but it's, uh, it's interesting because after uh, takes, takes, queen, h6, white's queen is getting closer. I guess you can always just go back knight f5, though. But uh, there's yeah, definitely takes, a lot takes. of options for white. Probably the uh, after taking g7, you even have options like g4. I don't know that Amari would find a move like that to, to kind of limit the knight. Of course, black can play h5, but then you have h3. Uh oh. Wow. Uh oh. Wow. And this could be over. Uh -oh. and, it's, and it's over. Uh oh. And just like that, it's over. Uh oh. He saw this coming as soon as he castled. It was like, uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. He, for the record, Black could have played Knight F5 here instead and kicked the mm -hmm. Queen out. And this is still a very, very. You know, yeah, anybody. It game. looks tough. It would have looked tough for Black, but still, it's a you know, it's a game. Whereas now there's nothing to do but uh, but press yeah. that resign button. Yeah, man, so tough there for Kayvon. His blitz champs is not going the way the way he wanted, and he he well, uh, he's he did decided he's going to play on. I mean, he can play and and run his king, but I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Yeah, well, especially because of how well we've seen Amari Cooper play already. Yeah, today, I mean, I he's mean, about to be a piece down, and you know the bishop's still on c8. This king is eventually going to be on d8, and I don't like his chances. Well, if White finds queen h8 check and then takes the knight, which Amari looks like he's done, he's yeah. uh, he's going to be well on his way to. If he wins this match uh, without a tiebreaker, then he will leapfrog uh, Chidobi Awuzie to get first place in Group A. He would have five points in that case because you get three points for uh, uh, winning a match outright. So Amari Cooper on the way to uh, joining Chidobi for Sunday's play and winning the group along the way of doing it. Yeah, so Kavion plays Rook F8 to defend, but here maybe Knight H7 might be a really strong idea. Yeah, Knight H7 would be super F6. strong. Attack. Oh, and he finds Amari it. just yeah. finds everything right now. Dude is, dude is on a roll. What a tough position to play if you're cave on. Oh. But this is a good example of, you know, to make it educational here for a second. Mm -hmm. When you have less space in a structure like this, if you don't have counterplay uh, in a French, that's why you play these things. Things can get out of control in a hurry when your opponent has this type of open line access to that side of the board. Of course, it was a you know the castle's move that they got him there, but it's just a good lesson of how dangerous a position with no space can be. And Amari decides to keep the queens on the board. Probably, I mean, I think either decision is going to be winning here, but keeping pressure against the king, black, the bishop is still undeveloped. The rook on a is yet to move. Yep. Uh, as soon as the uh, d4 pawn gets defended. The knight on c6 doesn't really have great prospects. This is looking tough. Spoiled for choice. Oh, it's wow. A Cooper. Going on the offensive. That's a, this looks like a great move. Knight takes d4 is a nice move. Okay. Getting some life. Well, exactly. uh, if you just take on uh, b5, what's the idea? Well, I mean, at this point, Black is completely lost. I mean, there, <laughs> right, there is no okay, idea yeah. necessarily, but well, at okay, least he so. won the pawn, and and he, you know, trying to get some get some space, get some pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, if he plays b4, even now, White can take d5, and at this point, I wouldn't yeah, well, put him past Well, you can take Amari. on uh, e6 too, right? Yeah, I think that's what Amari's threat. I mean, I think that's well, or maybe Knight takes d5 is Amari's idea. I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. But a pawn, I mean. At this point, if you're cave on, yeah, and he goes for a bishop takes e six. Wow, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, Amar yeah. Amari Cooper. I mean, Amari and Shadobi. I mean, that's probably a preview of the championship right there, because that's just a next level tactic. The point, everybody, is the pawn was pinned right here to the queen, so you find this and and you take something like that. I mean, that's just. To see that kind of tactic super fast, these guys are um, mm -hmm. better than your average chess streamer, I'll tell you that.
We need to get Amari streaming some chess. Yeah, seriously. This is this is impressive. Super impressive. Yeah, he is uh in Rook C1. I I love this conversion right now. This is just nice, simple, and strong, and just no counterplay for black. Well, experience pays off, right? We know that Kayvon Thibodeau has uh a bright career ahead of him in the NFL and also maybe a bright career in chess. He loves the game, but play, going up against Amari here and Cheeto, these guys have been playing chess for such a long time. Amari's story kind of began at the Raiders. We heard it, but then he started beating everybody. I love how, I love how he said he would take it easy a little bit at first on Cheeto. And then eventually Cheeto got better than him. So yeah. That well, it's a, that competitive instinct, you know, you, yeah. you play a game, you want to win. You want to be the best. And when someone's beating you, what do you do? Well, you you train, you work hard, and you get better. And, and they're I think the Amari's hard work has two. been paying off. Kayvon played this E3 move against Cheeto, too. So he's got an opening system, right? He's committed to something that's good. Yeah, he's, it seems he's committed to this E3, E6 system. This is, we've seen this from every single game. And all right, let's see. Yeah, the players the players rematched each other automatically, by the way. It shows you they're pros, actually. <laughs> they didn't even wait for the uh for the site or the staff to do it. They just rematched. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting structure. I mean, White has these strong pawns on D4, D5, and C4, but Black has some control with this pawn on E4. Yeah. yeah. I guess. As white, how would you set up your pieces? Ah, knight d2. This is an interesting idea. Maybe planning some like queen c2 and put pressure on the pawn. Yeah. He's he's got this system and he's played it pretty fast. Unfortunately, it's it's a system that does give black the center, as we see. And and you know this type of development just more active than anything white has going and i like the move c6 by amari because he's just not he's not going to sit on the position you know and let white have space just uh i mean high quality chess here from mr cooper all around i like knight to b3 though okay now get developed get the pieces out right all right and uh, well, now it's uh tactic tactic alert right wasn't uh, C5 an idea? Or I guess there's... Well, let's see. Yeah, C... Oh, look at that. D6. Is he? Does he see C5? Okay. C5 actually doesn't win a piece. Right, unlucky because of Bishop A5. But, uh, but still, how do you get your pieces out after like a C5 and D6? No, it's super it tough for Black. Tough. But yeah. what I was pointing out is like, I don't know if Amari would have found this, but C5 unluckily didn't even work because of this nice little capture and then Queen A5 mm -hmm. check. But okay, it, it didn't happen on the board. And uh, now we'll see. Does okay, moment of truth. Does Kayvon, does, does Amari see Bishop c5 and Queen a5? No, he doesn't. Okay, that would have been really, really impressive. Mm -hmm. Now I'm now I'm with you, John. Now I really like Kayvon's potential. It's the best position he's had out of any opening today. He's also got some time, so. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, white has the space, but it's being challenged to some extent, and uh, white is yet to develop their king side at all. So it's. Uh, yeah, that's the only real problem with Kayvon's position is neglecting the king side. But still, if he takes back on c five, this pawn is a is a real thorn. Mm -hmm. And he's just a couple developing moves away, I think, from being in a good spot. It would be super great for Kayvon to get get a good position in the middle game here, a chance to get on the board here in Blitz Champs. Knight takes even this is tough for Amari. This is this is perhaps looking tough for uh, Kayvon. How do you what's the idea after like I don't know, queen a5? Yeah, you can play queen a5. I guess 
my point if if white even just trades queens mm -hmm. the knight the knight and bishop work together to stop the bishop right 98 you can put the rook on d1 right you know there's probably some really accurate way for black to figure this out but mm -hmm. from a practical perspective like it's really hard to to find a way to break down this this thorn here right. as a long as Kayvon doesn't like block the bishop idea. yeah a5 trying to uh develop a piece to a6 yeah that's a lot of sense nice move actually yeah, yeah. maybe cave on plays knight h3 anything to get developed quickly i th i like his chances in a middle game yeah. i'm kind of rooting for cave on here if you can't tell want this guy to get his w if possible yeah no i, I see that knight h3 okay it's a nice move there you go yeah. getting a good middle game Azizi says, is this theory? Uh, this is not theory. <laughs> this is not theory. Not opening theory here. Uh, now Amari gets loose, gets queen a5 check. Starting to pull back for black. The reason the computer likes black, everybody, is because after the pieces come off the board, now that, now that black can develop with knight a6, it's kind of only a matter of time before this pawn on d6 is sort of corralled um but again that's why the computer says it likes black it's finding a plan to kind of corral that pawn is easier said than done so i still think that Kayvon has decent chances here yeah <laughs> someone just said Kayvon is texting hikaru <laughs> hmm. i know hikaru was watching earlier not sure he's still around Yonda Pomnichi also watching, big NFL guy. Okay, mm -hmm. well, Kayvon C Knight takes A4. This is the key. Mm -hmm. Moment of truth, John. Will he see Knight takes A4 or not? I think so. Oh. And he doesn't. He doesn't, but he still has a second chance. That's true. That's true. Let's see. Still has a second chance. If he spots Knight A4, I think that <clears throat> I think we got a game here. Mm -hmm. Grab that pawn. Misses his chance there. <laughs> Mr. Urschel, this is uh, this is going to be hard to be cave on. I think if it's if it's getting away from you, right? How do you stop? Yeah, the this is yeah, this is getting a little difficult. You got to take those chances. Like knight takes a four. Maybe he was concerned about like knight takes a four and like bishop f one. But still, this looked this looked good for white. Yeah. Now he goes knight f four. And what do you do? How do you get your king somewhere? Maybe you want to try ideas like king d2? Yeah. Because you I really like got to get that rook on h1 into the game. And that's kind of key, because if if Amari gets the b-file, yeah. then you're in trouble. So yeah, this but is rook a d8 really good gives, chance. Yeah, rook d8 gives white some chances, because maybe if you played rook b8, you know, king d2, rook b2, yeah. and white's not really in time to yep. sort of... No, you're to totally right. Rook to b8 was definitely a, a stronger idea for black, and, and that's why the engine kind of slid up for those wondering, if black puts the rook over here, this is really, really hard to get developed because the bishop stops castling, by the way. Legal rules of chess. You cannot castle through check. So he missed that, and Kayvon plays a good move, rook b1. As long as he, as long as he sees king d2 and connects his rooks, this is, this is a really difficult position for black. And okay, Bishop B five defending the pawn. I I know it says it's equal, John, but again, like I feel like this is a lot easier for players of this level to play for white. As long as you seed to get developed, this knight can't move without the pawn hanging. You're worried mm -hmm. about D seven. He finds Rook B four. What a nice move! This is actually the best move probably. Mm -hmm. Threatens both knight takes E four and the move pawn to C four kicking the bishop so yeah you're right danny it's tough to see what to do as black whereas as white you know there's like easy plans maybe you bring this knight from f4 to d4 think about different ideas i guess as black maybe what do you do do you try like 98 to put pressure on the d6 pawn and okay rook b8 played rook to b8 so now my worry is that Kayvon is going to go for the pawn 
before then, developing. Yeah. That's the worry. If Kayvon, if Kayvon develops and gets the other rook over, this is White's game to win. Mm -hmm. But if he, if he gets greedy and goes for the pawn before he's completed development, then he's going to run into big trouble with the king. Uh-oh. That's what I was worried about. Oh, man. You think Amari sees bishop takes c4? I think so. I think he's going to find it. Oh, man. He's found moves like it so far. The, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a tough position. The good news is Kayvon, okay, and he found it. And he found wow. it. He found it. Now, Again, here Kayvon fun. needs to recognize the danger that he's in. Yeah. We're getting a front row view to uh, to Kayvon's phone there. The camera. <laughs> <laughs> he's, play, he's playing on his phone. And yeah, it's a, it's a nice really iPhone, sharp. clearly. Yeah. So he's got the... He's got the three cameras. Got the three cameras. So what is that? An how, how many Pro? cameras do you have on your iPhone, Danny? I, I only have two. Oh, I've got three too. Didn't you even got know. three too? I'm 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 just behind. I don't know You're what behind, I'm doing. Behind, man. <laughs> I gotta catch up. Okay, he takes on a four with the knight. Okay. S sadly, I think the idea is that Black can take and then play rook a eight, and that skewers the knight and the square. And I this think this is actually Amari a really instructive lesson it. for for viewers that you just you can't neglect. It's not so much even the king's safety with the queens off the board. It's the fact that the rook is not in the game. So this bishop proved to be a real thorn. Yeah. Any yeah. any other move to get the king developed would have left white in a really great spot, actually. Yeah, and Amari finds it rook a8. I mean, you can play knight b2, but even after rook a1, knight d1, you have things like bishop b3, right? And this should yeah. do the trick. Although, that, Although would be, that would be the best defensive find. Yeah. Although you move the king, it's yeah. Okay, that's and he, and he plays knight d knight b two. Okay. This game isn't over. I mean, there's there's even even the outside chance that if he doesn't see knight d one and plays king d two, loses the rook for the bishop, that he could do something with his knights. Like this is mm -hmm. you know it's leaning Amari's way, but Kavon, I would say regardless of the result, this was his best game so far. Yeah, and. Agreed. He really had he had a good position out of the opening and had decent chances here. Finds a good try here. <laughs> I love how chat has broken into uh, Android versus iPhone users. I like that. Oh, and castles. I didn't even think about that. In castles. Why castles. Unfortunately, loses the piece, but it does get the king out of, out of the center. Finally, Eureka, at last. At last, the king is safe. Do people scream Eureka anymore? Eureka. Like, Did people ever scream Eureka? Wasn't that like I a thing? Like this. you found gold? Eureka. I don't Eureka. know. Was that a... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know is why. Is this like what, what, you, what you say when you find like a good uh, a good tactic? You say like Eureka at the board? <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, first of all, I don't find good tactics that often, so I appreciate the assumption, but um, it's more like what explicitive do I whisper when I blunder? I see. Um, but okay, this is it got away from Amari, but this was a very uh, sorry, not from Amari, from Kayvon. This has gone pretty well for him. Best game so far, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if it doesn't work out. He's played 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 a good a decent game here. Um, Amari's just strong, man. He's going to go yeah. on to win Group A. For those of you just tuning in, he beat Shadobi Awuzie in a tiebreaker, um, and uh, and in epic fashion too, with a combination that was just amazing um, that he found so quickly. But um, but yeah. And uh, looks like both Shadobi, Shadobi Awuzie and Amari Cooper will be representing Group A in the championship bracket. Kayvon will still play tomorrow in the morning, everybody, just as a reminder for the format. Um, his, uh, his Blitz Champs is not over. That was a nice move, John. 92. Yeah, yeah. Posing some threats. You can't, yeah. just, play B, you can't just play C3, but Amari knows better. Moves the bishop out of harm's way, 
And uh, it's as Yasser says, you know, you just push him, baby. Push him, baby. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Amari's chess is reflective of the Browns. Uh, someone's saying, go Browns. You're a Browns fan. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether the Browns are favored in the, in, you know, or what they're what they're predicted to do coming up this year. Any comments on that? Any comments from me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you you know I played for the Ravens, so there's, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> there's no love there. No love lost for the Browns. No love lost, indeed. Um, Bishop Bishop's at D five. Amari's playing well, though. Seriously, yeah, um, no. Amari's taking care of business. This seems like it's just a matter of time. There's really no counterplay here. Yeah, and I think Amari has shown us that. Uh, when Amari has the advantage, especially in a position like this, and Bishop takes F3, I really like boxing the king out, bringing the knight in. Yeah, this is just great I, technique. I mean, Amari gets a ton of credit. He's just playing high-quality chess. The chat's breaking into, like, Lions predictions. Yeah, go Lions. This is the year. Look at this idea of knight d4, knight b3. It, it guards the d2 square. So that now you can push C2 without the king getting closer. I mean, this is like, this is absolutely fantastic chess. Super mm -hmm. mature approach there from Amari, not to make the mistake. And look at this. He doesn't even, doesn't go for winning the knight. He gets rid of the knight so that he can get the queen for free. Mm -hmm. I'm just massively impressed with how Amari is playing chess here. Can take d3 and then get a queen for free. And uh, Mr. Cooper going to win Group A with a score of five points after beating Shadobi Awuzie in a tiebreaker just before this matchup. So I, I don't know what else to say besides, uh, you know, reacting to Amari Cooper's Blitz Champs so far. He was he was the original guy who we had committed to this event, the most excited to kind of help us make it happen too. So right now he's showing why he showed up an hour before his games even started today, John. He is he is dialed in, this guy. Yeah, incredibly strong play. It's uh, it's really impressive to see. This last match was a must win for him to make it to the championship bracket tomorrow. And he took care of business very smooth. Yep. And uh, yeah, I think, I think he could go a long way. Yeah, I mean... I can't wait to see what a Shadobi uh, and Amari rematch would look like if it happens. Of course, we have Group B ahead. But before we talk about anything else today, let's remind everybody of what that match uh, result did to the Group A standings. Amari Cooper sits atop everyone else with a score of five points. Uh, that's because, again, he won that match clear for three points, one over Shadobi and a tiebreaker. So he leapfrogs Awuzie by a single point. I can't wait to see what Group B brings us, John, but I've been really impressed with both those guys, and Amari Cooper takes the cake for Group A in the initial stage. Uh, yeah. Um, what, what else? I mean, what else should we unpack there? I mean, again, I, I think that Amari's technique, we always talk about the sign of, of these players being good, John. We know that sometimes you get mismatches. Sometimes with, you know, celebrities playing chess, we don't know how that's going to break down. But regardless of whether someone wins, how quickly they win, that night before, night d4, night b3 idea, right? That type of technique just shows like a different level of chess. Yeah, yeah. It was an incredibly strong idea, taking care of business, taking control of the key squares and keeping the king out. It was really impressive to see. Yep. Well, we 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 have the uh, we showed you the the standings and results. Um, talking about the quality of play, John. I mean, early prediction. You think Group B is gonna is gonna have a favorite to maybe better than Amari or or Chidobi, or do you think we've seen the best chess so far with those two guys? I'm hard pressed to think that we're gonna see a stronger player from the Group B field than what we just saw. That was incredibly impressive. Now, of course. You know, I'm pulling for Micah, and I hope we see, you know, we see some strong Penn State play. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Group A is going to be hard to top. I'm going to make a prediction, though. Eric Armstead came in uh, today playing 30 rapid games, just like, you know, just like light work, right? <laughs> Shows up this morning, <laughs> plays a ton of chess to get ready. Uh, mm -hmm. That guy, I mean, I can't wait to see what he's going to do. Obviously, we know that, uh, you know, 
Larry Fitzgerald's my boy. I want him to do the best he can. I have no idea what he's capable of in rapid. We we only play uh, daily chess when we play, and that's mostly what he does. So kind of a real wild card to see him as the lowest rated player when, you know, I have no idea. But uh, but thinking of thinking of Eric Armstead's uh, work that he put in in rapid, it's going to be hard for me to say that he might not be capable of surprising us. So right now we, we don't have a surprise. We've got a, a planned on guest. We've got uh, the one and only Kayvon Thibodeau, chess.com ambassador, number five draft pick by the New York Giants. Uh, Kayvon, how, how are you feeling? I know, I know maybe the games didn't go your way today, but this event is awesome. You're, you know, it's amazing to have you. And how are you feeling so far about your blitz champs? Yeah, it was it was a tough day, man. I, I underestimated these guys. I should have really been practicing. Uh, they got to me, and uh, you know we'll be back. We'll be back next year. We'll be back. Well, okay, on that's you know that's how you get better. You know you you get knocked down. You learn from your experiences, and you come back stronger. I've got exactly. I've got faith in you, and I'm yeah. curious. You've said that chess is life, and life yeah. is football. Can you explain what you mean by that, and and how so you me, use chess to approach playing football? Yeah, so for me, you know, chess is all about setting up the next moves, and it's all about it's kind of like it's kind of like a battlefield, you know. And I feel like football is similar in a sense where you know one piece can't do everything, you know. Even though queen obviously has you know the most power in, in, in its moves, but every piece has to work kind of cohesively to you know win a game. So you know, on the football field, everybody has a job, right? So me, I, I rush the pass or I set edges, and that's my job. So I'll never be able to be a quarterback, you know. And I have to. I have to really buy into that, right? And it's up to the teammate, the, the team and the, the coaches to, you know, really put that together and, and, and do it well. Mm-hmm. Um, I also say it's about life because, um, you know, as i seen in, in uh, Coop's last game with Cheeto that you cannot, you know, no matter what moves you make, that's going to be, you know, the telltale of your life. So just making sure you always make the right decisions and, and realizing, you know, the longevity part of it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And was that was that exciting? I know you were getting ready to play Amari, but was that exciting to see the comeback there from Amari in that game? It was more intimidating, you know. When I watched oh. <laughs> it, I, I, you know, I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "That was that was nice. That was nice." So I, I knew that, you know, there was gonna be it was gonna be a challenge for me to try to get in there and get a win. Well, you you you, uh, you just talked about. I love that what you said about Chess's life. You've got you've got this or chess is football. And, uh, and, and I, I want to talk to you about your love affair with chess because it goes, it goes pretty deep, right? You've been playing for a long time. Tell everybody, all your fans out there, we've got a fan club on chess.com, by the way, everyone go join it for, uh, for a chance to maybe be a part of things in the future with Kayvon. Tell us about how you got started in chess and how much you, you love the game. So chess started for me when I was in high school. I think I was, uh, I think I was about a sophomore. It was at like a Thanksgiving. My uncles were just playing and, you know, seeing them play. I thought because I learned the pieces, I'd be able to hop in the game. And as you can see, I'm not that good yet. I'm still working on it. But back then I was even worse. You know, I didn't have a strategy. So hopping in there and they kind of, they kind of sunned me. They, you know, they let me know that I didn't know how to play. And for me, I kind of took that to heart and I jumped on chess.com, which is actually funny. So once I jumped on it, I started learning and just doing everything, the lessons and stuff like that, and just start getting better. And once you really start, you know, unlocking the different knowledge within the game, you can literally start to see parallels within life and within, you know, with the, whatever you're doing. I love that, man. By the way, you, I'm so, curious. I, I have a question for you. Go ahead. What, what have your strategies been like moving forward to improve at chess? Like, what do you do? How do you prepare to try to get now, better? Now that I'm in like the diamond league, I guess, or like the, you know, I've been doing the lessons and different things like that, but I, I've had to, I've had to kind of scale back on my chess uh, uh, games. I used to play literally games every day. But now I've got a lot busy, you know, with the season coming up. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna gonna jump back in. Today was a real humbling. I was gonna say, it's not like you're busy or anything, right? You're not, you know, starting a career as a as a New York Giant. But speaking of that, on draft night, when you first started that career as a New York Giant, you wore a Chess.com pin, and uh, we got a, we got a little, little picture of you here, kind of flashing it, pulling the jacket back. That was sexy. Love that. Yeah. Um, how uh, <laughs> did you get any comments on draft night about that? Anyone be like, hey, chess.com, a chess company? Like, how was that? Well, people were, you know, um, people always referenced me in chess. So it was just a quick little moment where I got to show them that, you know, this is something that I really do and I really take pride in. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you've, uh, you've got a big season ahead. You've got a big season ahead with the Giants. Tell us a little bit for the fans. We've got a lot of people out here who are tuning in because they're fans of you and football. How's the season going? How, how are you preparing? And what's it like making this jump from Oregon to the NFL right now for you? 
I'm so excited. I mean, just, you know, uh, training camp's about to come up. We went through OTAs, went through all of the, the prelims, as you say, and now just finally getting on that stage and preseason coming up. And, you know, in college, fall camp was, you know, a month long. Now training camp is two weeks and we go right into uh, scrimmages. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for my family to be able to come out and watch. We got a lot of big games this year. I'm excited about the team. And now I'm just seeing, you know, I'm ready to see what the NFL has to offer. Yeah. What's what's life been like being, you know, the top draft pick for such a high profile organization like the New York Giants to be in that big market? What has that felt like to this point? Um, so far, it's been pretty fun. Um, I've got a lot of opportunities and a lot of people who are kind of buying into, you know, everything we got going on. So for me, it's just about playing well and doing my job. And once I, you know, really get my feet down in New York, I'll be able to really, you know, reach out to the different communities and, and become a pillar, you know, within those communities. Gotcha. And in the locker room, I'm curious, have you found anyone to play chess with yet? Not yet. You know, I haven't, we, we really been, you know, it's all been work, work, work. And, you know, we had a couple of days with the vets back, but because, you know, OTAs is voluntary, I haven't really got to meet and talk to everyone, but uh, coming up, I know in training camp, I'll be able to really see, you know, who, who's who. Any, any, so you haven't had a chance to play chess with them yet. Any, any teammates made comments that you do play chess? Have they noted that's yeah, people point. people talk about it. I've heard a couple of people say it, and you know we've had conversations about it. And there's a lot of people who want to learn, and I always tell them chess.com. Love that. <laughs> well, man, you're you're here with the Dream Foundation. Tell everybody a little bit about that, the charity you're playing for, um, and and what it means to you. So the Dream the Dream Foundation Dream is an acronym. It's J R E A M, and it stands for Journey to Readiness and Enrichment through Academic Mentorship. And basically, it's forging underprivileged children with the same opportunities that I had, you know, me being able to go to a private school and get a premier education in a, a safe and, uh, environment and a, a real learning environment that really helped, you know, change the trajectory of my life. And, you know, being able to have uh, older mentors and different people buy into my story and buy into me and believe in me, that's, you know, it's been a tremendous amount of help, you know, in my career. So now it's only right for me to kind of forge those same opportunities to, you know, the, uh, a generation that's coming up. It's awesome, man. It's good stuff there. Good stuff there. Well, speaking of generations coming up, last question. I know you just talked about charity, but you're also getting involved in promoting chess there in New York with kids. Are there any particular efforts you want to mention about that? Yeah, so I partner with a program called Chess in Schools, and they use chess as an avenue to help you know underprivileged children really uh, excel in the classroom because uh, chess is such a stimulating game and it helps you kind of dissect um, – different, you know, sacrifices and, and uh, being strategic and just, it gets your brain going. So being able to uh, get kids and get more uh, young adults to play chess and, and really, you know, going around the Central Park and getting those games going, that's going to be exciting. And, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what, what the kids have to offer. Cause I know they, there are already a lot of kids who know how to play and I, you know, I got to learn even more myself. It was awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you being with us. Appreciate you playing. This is awesome. And, uh, you know, can't wait to see a lot more of you just involved in the chess community. Again, shout out to everyone watching. If you haven't already, use the command and uh, check out Kayvon's club. It's go.chess.com slash Kayvon-club. And uh, who knows what we're going to do in the future, right? Maybe some more chess events. You'll be busy. You'll be busy for a few months with your other career. Once I got to get my skills right. Once I get my skills right and I'm really, you know, a competitive force, then we're going we're gonna to get these games back going. Because I'm telling you, I hate losing. Yeah. So I've been sitting here dreading these two, these four losses I took. I feel that, man. Well, anyway, the losses, but the games, the games were good. It was awesome to have you. Great to see you. And uh best of luck both with the Giants and and our in our in our future chess tournaments too. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, man. See ya. And that was Kayvon Thibodeau John. That was awesome. Great interview. I love I love the stuff he's doing there with chess in the schools. They've been around for a long time, but it's awesome to see him working with them. For yeah, sure. absolutely. I mean, he's uh, he's really a great role model for young players. I mean, it's always great to see a guy who's so talented, works so hard, such a great football player, but clearly takes school seriously, clearly takes academics seriously, plays chess, is trying to set a good example for, you know, young people of the future, sort of athletes and, uh, well, actually, like academics of the world. And I think he's doing a great job. And He's only going to get better at chess. Yeah. And I love the foundation too, the dream that was a journey for readiness and 
enrichment through academic mentorship. Oh my God, I remember it. How, how did I do that? Okay, that was that was wild. That was impressive. Um, anyway, no, but dream that was that was awesome. And um, and everything everything is doing. I I agree. Great role model. It's been great to get to know him. He's very a very conscious guy. He didn't have a lot of sponsors for the for uh, the draft night. He's very aware of you know his position and, and what that means and represents. And it's just awesome to see him. And like you said, humbled and ready to get better. So pretty exciting to, uh, to see his attitude, even though it was a tough day. So, um, all right, we are getting set for our next matchup. Um, I believe we're going to take a quick break before group B begins. Um, we're going to do that on the other side of things. We have more for chess.com's blitz champs tournament. Uh, I've, I've lost track of where we're going with this. So um, we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, Group B is going to be getting underway. So don't go anywhere. It's more Blitz Champs when we return. A fork. Are we going to see a fork? I don't think so. I think the chances of a fork here are below 0.01%. But the fact... Welcome back to Blitz Champs, everybody. The show goes on. We roll on to another huge matchup. It's the Hall of Famer, Larry Fitzgerald, going up against San Francisco 49er Eric Armstead, reigning San Francisco 49ers chess champion with the internal uh, chess tournament club they, they put together. We'll talk more about that later on, John. But I can't wait for this matchup between these two guys. And, uh, and we continue to roll through here. John, you excited for the second half of the day here? We've got a whole other group ahead. Yeah, Group A was absolutely amazing. We had some really interesting matchups. I got to say, I'm really curious to see what this Eric Larry sort of matchup looks like. Eric's been playing a lot of rapid games today. Yeah. So he has a good feel for the time control. Larry, not so many, not so many games. 
we have no idea right let's let's show everybody what we have up coming up here in group b uh the uh the players that we just saw on camera are throwing down first up next is eric armstead versus larry fitzgerald followed by micah parsons versus eric armstead so eric has got the back to backer uh in this particular group we saw chidobi had that earlier in group a and then Larry rejoins us again for the match versus Micah Parsons. So going to be awesome. We've got the next few hours jam-packed. Of course, we'll have interviews with the players, talk to them about their love of chess, how they uh, how they apply lessons of chess to not just football, but life and all the things that we're doing here in this awesome event with $100,000 going to different charities chosen by our NFL stars. So uh, this, is, this is what's in store. If you're just getting here, thanks for being with us. Where have you been? First of all, where have you been? But uh, we, we've had an amazing Group A. John, let's talk about Group B, this matchup. Eric Armstead played 30 rapid games this morning. Larry is a total wild card. What the bleep is going to happen here in this matchup? I have absolutely no clue. I'm incredibly excited for this first game. I'm really interested to see what Larry's sort of like time management skills look like. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have no clue what we're about to see especially because you know larry we just have no data points like no yep. real blitz rating no you know no real rapid games to look at i uh i just don't even know what we're going to see and it looks like they're about to get started yeah any any moment they will i i uh, reset the board that that was the end of the uh the last game we just saw between cave on and amari cooper for those wondering but yeah so eric armstead will be I believe playing the white pieces first against Larry Fitzgerald and uh, games will be beginning shortly. But the only way it backfires if you're Eric Armstead is you played 30 games this morning in rapid. <laughs> and uh, are you tired, right? How early were you up? And of course, we're going to talk to him about that. I know Larry's not a Cardinal anymore, but I am going to ask him for sure if there's any sort of rivalry, um, you know, that he's going up against a, a 49er here. What do you think? You think Larry cares about that? what do you think? I think he just wants to win the chess game. Yeah. I think anybody, anytime, I think he's, uh, he's just ready to compete. Well, the, uh, the game has started. Sometimes the players don't always know when it starts. That happens. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, there we go. Eric is aware and he has it underway plays D four. Man, mm -hmm. this guy's a chess player after your own heart, John Urschel. Oh, and Knight F3, we might see, is he preparing a London? What I'm curious to see what Eric does here. I'm curious to see what Larry does. By the way, looking good in the golf hat, I'm pretty sure Larry was probably playing golf. That's what he's normally doing every day of his life. Um, and there we okay. go. Knight C6, and then Bishop F4 very quickly. Larry doesn't play a lot of rapid chess, no matter what um, we say about whether he's you know, playing rapid or blitz offline, mostly on chess.com. He loves himself playing daily chess. He's often got dozens of games going. So I think the time management is going to be a big question for Larry. Um, as far yeah, as the Larry's, chess level goes, we don't know. Yeah, he's already going in for a little bit of a think on move four. Let's see what he comes up with. A6. I like that move from Larry. Stops Bishop B5. Trying to prevent Bishop B5. Good, solid defensive mindedness there from mm -hmm. Mr. Fitzgerald. Bishop D3 challenging the bishop on F5 makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Will Larry trade or move the bishop to a different square? Big question. Mm -hmm. He's taking his time to think about it. E6. Okay. This could be risky if 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 Eric takes the double pawns, but it's, it's actually not a bad idea. It's just kind of an advanced idea. You don't see it all the time. Um, and Eric doesn't take any. Is he, who, has he been working with uh, Levy Rosman or Eric Rosen? Shout out to all the dubious London players out there. Yeah, and he's still, he's still allowing Bishop takes F5. Can you talk a little bit about this? Because I've seen games with this. Wait. Where? What? He just, oh, he oh. played knight to two and just blundered the bishop. Oh. Larry just takes it. Oh my gosh, he played 92, forgot his London theory. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was, oh I was about to ask you to talk about the pawn structure after Bishop takes F5, but uh, I, I was, I was, we are I was not going to get that pawn structure. I was about to do we... what you wanted to do and talk about the pawn structure. But uh, again, 92 is a good move, everybody, but you can't forget about the Bishop. And Eric plays 92 just 
neglecting the queen's defense of the minor piece. And I'm impressed by how quickly Larry found it. It shows that he's uh he's dialed in, and that's this is a probably the biggest blunder we've seen in the opening of any of the games so far. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man. So that eval bar gave me a bit of a you know me, John. I get hot flashes when that eval bar gets going. Yeah, get, no, this is this is looking tough. Not only did you blunder a piece, but now it's it's hard to get your king to safety as well. Yeah, and, and Larry keeps the bishop on that diagonal. Remember, everybody, you can't castle through check. It is against the rules of the game. Um, so one of the I, I, jokes aside about the London, it's a very solid system. But one of the things about a system like that, John, is the risk for players is that you can go into a bit of an autopilot. Because what happens is you just visualize in your head, and this so this is a good lesson for all those watching. You visualize in your head this setup. Like you know that nine times out of ten, this setup is what you get in a London. And often you get it safely. Sometimes this bishop is here, sometimes it's on a different square. But the risk of a system player is it can make you again a, a little bit lazy on the details and and not to say that what that's what's happening to eric here it's just that it's easy to forget in a system player that you have to pay attention to tactics and specific move orders and that's what happened here so so now eric has got a, a, a got a hole he has to dig himself out of down a piece yeah 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 no it's not easy it's also it's not easy to uh to castle and get developed without uh Without further exchanges, I guess Queen C two is the idea that White wants to castle long here. Yeah, Queen C two lets him castle long. Uh, okay, and Bishop D six. Nice move by Larry to trade pieces when you're winning. Mm -hmm. Gbo nine five nine six says Larry is locked in. I don't think Larry has blinked. I agree. <laughs> Let's look at Larry. He is locked in right now. He hasn't blinked at all. Look at this man. I guess yeah. we're getting answers about how fast he can play. He's playing fast enough for now. Is Larry Fitzgerald frozen? I don't think he's frozen. I think he's just locked in. Yeah, just fully locked in. What do you do here? I guess maybe you can take on B3. Oh, and Castle short, okay. Yeah, that's a little, a little risky. Playing. Yeah, playing with a little bit of fire. I was looking at something like maybe like bishop takes b3, but okay. We saw Larry blink there and move, by the way. He's not there frozen. <laughs> there, hey, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We've uh, we've got a, a, an exciting battle here. With kings on opposite sides of the board, that means it's going to be dangerous for both players, really, regardless of the material. So they got to be super careful about tactics. Yeah. 95, this makes some sense, trying to maybe play F3, dislodge this knight on E4, and put pressure on H7. Yep. I like that move a lot by Eric, by the way. Yeah, 95, freeze up F3. If that knight moves, you've got this attack on H7. So... A heads up play just because larry's up a piece here doesn't mean this is this is over everybody don't that eval bar don't let it fool you because lots of chances for tactics to go wrong for both players and larry eric also pretty locked in by the way these guys are focused bringing it b5 there from Larry looking to attack on the queen side. But now it's getting F3, complicated. John. F3, yeah. Scary stuff. Yeah, I guess you just have to have a cool head, keep calm, put the knight on g5, and recognize if they ever play f4, the knight just goes right back. Yeah. It's a but hard, still, it's a hard I mean, thing to see, though. Yeah, and also there's serious pressure on the h file. You have to start being concerned about sacrifices. This, yep. is, this is a game. All of a sudden, this is a... Uh, this no, could be anyone's scary. game, actually. This, is, this looks really scary. Well, I can take on B3 first if you want to try to get the queen yeah. to move away. But mm -hmm. but if, if Eric takes back on B3 with the pawn, you're back to the same issue where 
you have to have the heads up play that h7 is under fire not an easy tactic to deal with at all and uh we see larry taking a thing to make sure he works through this I, I I wonder. I mean, you you uh, you hope he's not thinking about taking on g three, right? But that's an easy mistake to make. Oh, he finds it. Finds knight g five. Kind of the only way, really, regardless of how you dealt with taking or not, to defend it. So heads up, nice play again, dude. Impressive chess. I think we're seeing Larry is underrated at a thousand. Yeah, definitely. Robax thirty one says, "I believe in Larry." Larry, future chess Hall of Famer, Fitzgerald. He'd like to. He'd like to think that. <laughs> All right. So, as White, how do you how do you put further pressure here? Ooh, I like that move. E four. E four. Okay. So apparently, the London system was taught to Eric by Bach on on thursday in their lesson by the way they went over oh, the wow. london extensively so again and we know box a good coach and the london is solid but i think that's the risk of those types of systems is you kind of teach to people to make them feel warm and cozy but the risk is you got to be careful about tactics mm -hmm. okay so what does black want to do here it might be a good idea to get the queen off of uh this file, I was thinking queen e7, but c6 seems reasonable. Yeah, defend yeah. the center. I like mm -hmm. it. Is this, is this like a solid grandmaster game? It's just like lulling us here to like, you know, no more blunders after that knight bd2. Just high quality yeah. chess. Agreed. All right, this. rook h2, try nice and double. Move. Gonna double on the h file. Bring the heat. Eric Armstead. <laughs> He's not the San Francisco 49ers chess. I'm gonna look up the what, exact way. What, what, what are you saying? <laughs> they had a they had a tournament. They had a tournament, and I'm and I'm and I'm trying to remember exactly what they called it. But Eric Armstead won the uh, the what, San Francisco what tournament 49ers did he win? inaugural chess tournament. He did. He won it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Larry Fitzgerald never won the inaugural chess tournament, but he uh, he does have quite an impressive career for those who. Maybe don't follow it as closely as they should. He's unofficially retired. I'm going to ask him about that. Through 17 seasons in the NFL, and obviously a future first ballot Hall of Famer. Some would say maybe the greatest wide receiver of all time. Some of those people might be biased, but that's what they would say. That's what I would say. Some of these people might have grown up in Arizona. But... Some of them might have. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but he's also a thousand a thousand and rapid um and uh but clearly underrated just by seeing how he's playing today so um i mean if larry if larry had a hall of fame quarterback like jerry rice did multiple times larry fitzgerald goes down as the greatest right receiver of all time i don't care if i'm biased i'm, I'm just i'm preaching it preaching it yeah, i mean Arizona i'm giving Cardinals you a hard time but uh but i uh i support this i mean Larry's always been sort of a favorite player of mine just because, you know, he's a smart guy, a smart player, you know, real humble guy. I've always been a big fan of Larry's. Yeah. And he, and it's, he it's hard hands. not to be. Okay. Now, now he's got to deal with the night being threatened and Eric Armstead bringing the heat on the H file. But if he knows what John Urschel said, which is the moment the pawn goes to F4, the night can go right back. And there he goes mm -hmm. playing solid chess, keeping the peace advantage. Yeah, but it's uh, it's not so so easy. Maybe maybe White tries something like maybe Knight D two. Try to dislodge this knight. I mean, I think this is this kind of is what you have to play for. I guess you could also try something like G four, but uh, it's not clear. Danny, what do you think's the best try for White here? I I think the G four G five idea is really nice, and it's. Again, objectively, best play, black is up a piece. There's a reason the eval bar says black is winning. But, you know, you put the rooks on the H file for a reason. You got to be all in on this idea to try to pry open the H pawn. Um, you know, black has other things coming, though. Black has A4. 
even on knight d2 black has ideas like you could take d2 and take a2 and you're up you're still up a piece but but this g4 g5 thing if eric armstead were to figure this out this this game could get very spicy very fast <laughs> black should probably not take on d2 here right black should like take g3 or even play knight f2 but it's hard not to trade when you're up a piece so i wouldn't be surprised if larry does it but if he if he takes on g3 or plays knight f2 that would be the way that, that really shakes up you know white's white's really only chance in the position is some sort of attack on the king side yeah. mm -hmm. what you think yeah yeah like no it? i agree i mean knight g3 could be good because knight g3 if they take on h6 takes takes and then you can put the knight back on f5 maybe but knight g3 actually maybe this could be a little scary he finds knight f2 which is also good because it hits the rook mm. and threatens to go to d3 check that's the kind of thing yeah. that well that that was probably the best move in the position super impressed to find it we talked about larry's career we're also obviously impressed with a uh a contract that the san francisco 49ers gave uh gave eric armstead by the way in the off season he got paid as they say um <laughs> for those who who don't, who don't follow that but uh, he's a defensive end for the niners he led them in sacks in 2019 and he's currently the reigning 49ers chess champion that's the best way to say it i was trying to think of a complicated <laughs> way to say it he won their first chess room but he's their reigning chess champion that's what he is um and he's playing for the armstead academic project which is his own charity um and uh, he's pretty excited about it so Eric Armstead, he also is the guy who probably put more prep in than anybody else coming in with a lesson with Bach, tons of rapid chess, although he's running up against a Hall of Famer here in Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah it's an interesting position. And knight f2 looks really, really accurate. Having this d3 square for the bishop looks like it could be really important in some lines. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a tricky move by Eric, because if Larry doesn't take the rook, mm -hmm. right back at you, right? Yeah. yeah. So obviously Larry has to take the rook. And even then, you know, Eric could, could keep the knight, and this is not so simple. But ultimately, that was a very risky play by Eric Armstead, and Larry followed through by taking the rook. Well, it looks like Larry, Larry might convert this. I mean, the knight is hanging. If the knight moves... Black's knight takes on g3. It's going to find a safe square on e4. Yep. This, uh... Yeah, that was a obviously heads up, but it was an easy mistake you could make. Sometimes someone takes a yeah. piece and you just, you know, take and you just take back, right? Instant, yeah, yeah, of course. Instant reaction is you take back, and that would be exactly how you lose your advantage. So mm -hmm. always good to pause. Don't just play recaptures as a knee jerk reaction. Take a note from, from Larry's chest there. It's still not over, though, I would say. Anytime you have kings on opposite sides of the board, I think it can still be dangerous. And that knight is trapped there on h1 unless he sees knight takes g3. So, oh, right as I say that, he's already played it. There you go. Yeah, also their, their clocks are starting to get a little bit lower. Once we, yeah. If there's still enough pieces on the board, I mean, you could see a little time scramble, and then it's anybody's game. Yeah. Moisty Mango doesn't agree with me. He said Fitzgerald had Kurt Warner for a few years. He had Carson Palmer. Um, but you know, not that long, most of his career, you know, nothing against Jake Plummer, you know, and all the other <laughs> quarterbacks that Larry had, but, uh, anyway, that's an Arizona sports fan story, Larry Fitzgerald. Did you ever think about, uh, naming either of your kids larry i'm curious <laughs> no actually no uh for those who don't know my oldest son's name is nash let's just say the night we found out my wife was pregnant steve nash had a triple double through three quarters against the rockets we owned the yao ming rockets by the way the son the running gun sons did and i was like i was like honey if it's a boy we should name the baby nash that's a cute name and we just started calling the baby baby nash and then it just stuck there you go that's it there you go there you go. Um, all right, knight f5 is played. Larry's playing super well here. I mean, I, I think he got a bit of a gift. Um, he got a bit of a gift with Eric's blunder. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, uh, even if he got a gift, he is a chess shark. I agree with chat there. Fitz looking yeah, but, intense. You know, he is looking intense. Eric at least, you know, had some good ideas to keep the game competitive, opposite side castling, putting pressure on the H file. I think, you know, we could see see a competitive game in this next match. If this I, one I agree. Ends. Even this one isn't over, because you never yeah, know if it's true. over. Yeah. Um but yeah, um Fitz was immaculate in his day. Best receiver in the league, undeniably for 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 at least a few years there in a row, even if he, you know, even if some people disagree with my assessment that he would be the greatest ever. But he's playing great chess today. I but I want to go back to what you said, John, because I agree with you that I think that Eric, if you take back that blunder, right, of the bishop, he's played a great mm -hmm. game. So game two, you know, who knows what could happen here? This could be a match that gives us our second tie breaks of the day. If you missed it earlier, Amari Cooper beat Chidobi Awuzie in an epic tiebreaker. It was awesome. So Blitz Champs delivering, baby. All right, Larry I like this is move good. By Larry opening up Eric's king side. Yeah, this B4. Opening up Eric's strong. king, rather. This is uh this seems this seems right. I mean, this is one thing about chess that sometimes you have extra material, you have an extra piece. Yep. You think, oh, let me trade everything, let me get rid of everything. But also, sometimes when you have an extra piece, that's an extra material you can use to attack. Love that. Yeah. Man, you should you should do chess coaching for that. Was what else you got? That's that's my one piece. Of <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. I, actually, I really that was a really instructive point. I think that people are winning. You hear trade when you're ahead. And chess kids out there, chess chess adult improvers, shout out hashtag chess punks. You do want to trade when you're ahead, but you also need to use your extra pieces at times. And if you get the rooks going, that's exactly what Larry would be doing. Last comment here. We got BJ, our, our mod, shout out to BJH and everyone working hard. Still going to cheer for Eric. Have to back my team. And the 49ers are it. Well, now, now I officially like you even less, BJH. Just kidding, buddy. Love you. <laughs> Go Cardinals. Uh, we got more there. We got, uh, I'd love if they did a 32 bracket with one player from every team. That's a genius idea. Blitz champs too. We get somebody to represent every NFL team. I like that. I like that, chat. Keep it coming. Um, John, back to the chess instructor point of what you said. When I was mm -hmm. teaching regularly before I became a idiot on chess, chess TV. superstar before, well, you became, before I became an idiot who says nonsense on chess TV. Um, I, I always, so the phrase I would use, cause semantics are really important when you're trying to keep students in the right frame of mind. So I would, I actually change from saying simplify when you're ahead, cause it implies trading to actually say, keep it simple. And what that would often mean to me is sometimes the most simple thing to do is to trade. Don't make the game unnecessarily complicated, but sometimes it implies keeping the position as it is because your extra pieces are the fastest road to victory, right? And so I, I would always say like, hey, keep it simple, which means your opponent's threats come first, stop them first, and then use what the easiest path to victory is. That's not wimpy chess, that's smart chess. And so I love what you said, because I would, I would actually double down on that point a lot with students with that phrase, keep it simple rather than simplify um, for that reason. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just wanted to say that. Yeah, but, but, uh, but here Eric was forced to offer a queen trade because of pressure. Yeah. And now Larry is playing good, simple chess, as you said, rook c5, defending the pawn on d5, while also starting to increase the pressure on the c3 pawn. Yeah, rook c5 is a great move. Larry's got a minute and 45, but they do get five seconds for every move. So unless they unless they go and do a think tank, usually they should have enough time. Okay, okay. so. That was he, a nice idea because of the pin, but he should have put the rook on C8 first. And he already sees it. He's shaking his head. Yeah. He recognizes his mistake. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's still in a winning position, but yeah, that was a little bit a little bit too yeah. fast. Obviously, he can still double rooks, but if he had done it before, that was a really nice tactical idea, just a little too hasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But still, he's for choice. He can double rook, start to bring his king in. He can really take his time here. Yeah. yeah. Double rooks, bring the king in. That's how you convert. Mm -hmm. At some Fix point. the weakness on A2. I mean, he, yeah. he's definitely got a straightforward path to victory here. Usually the easiest path, if, you, if you've if you got your opponent focused on a weakness like the pawn, and, and Eric does play the best move to defend it, 
It's creative, something like create, yes. create a second advantage, something like g6, h5. You can also get the king in the game and try to play f6. But the moment you create a second problem for your opponent is the moment the defense crumbles. Mm -hmm. And so something like creating an extra pass pawn with h5, something like getting the king in the game, these are the, these are the ways you convert on these things. Chad wants me to ask Larry if he's officially retired or unofficially retired. We'll see if we can get him to talk about his plans there. Yeah, that's a that's a you question. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna leave him be. I mean, you you play chess with him. You hang out with him. You can uh, you can yeah. put him on the spot. I know he's busier in retirement than he was playing, and it's what he said. Um, but by the way, Rook C4 was a great move there from Larry. Um, mm. <laughs> people keep asking if Larry's if Larry's cam is frozen it's not he's just dialed in he's focused rookie four also a good move trying to get the rook active yeah no I like this move a lot uh you can bring the other rook to c4 if you want and really put pressure along the fourth rank Got maybe check. that's Larry's idea trade rooks and advanced pawns agreed chess wind Dude, look at that. Rookie three. Just yeah. great technique right now from Larry. Seriously. Now the C3 pawn is harder to defend. In fact. Undefendable. Undefendable. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, but he's under a minute. So th this is this is not a foregone conclusion, I think. You know, players who are not professionals deal with time pressure differently sometimes the nerves get to you mm -hmm. larry was definitely playing golf earlier today that is his golf outfit for sure <laughs> have you, have you very played good golf golfer, with by the larry way. you, you play golf with him so you're, yeah. you're familiar with his outfit yes and he he's what? like a he's like a three four handicap he's a very oh, good wow. golfer okay yeah Also a very good pickleball player. In fact, we should just if we, if we talk about pickleball, you know pickleball? Yeah. No, I don't know pickleball. What's pickleball? pickleball is the also here, game. Rook C2 would be a great way to just finish. Yeah, the Rook game. C2 would have been the fastest way to victory to yeah. trade Rooks, but he's still in good shape there. What's pickleball? What is this? Pickleball is like ping pong and tennis had a baby. And it's ping an adorable baby. And tennis have a baby. They have a baby. So it's like, it's like some game where like, it's not the size of a ping pong table, but it's not the size of a tennis court. Is this the idea? You just you solved it. That's it. And mm -hmm. and it's awesome. It's so much fun. Almost as much fun as Larry's having Goblin the Pawns. If the Rooks get traded, I'll say it's over. But with this much time, it's still not over unless, unless the Rooks get traded or he gets a pawn going because 30 seconds, not too much, even with the increment. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm you think close. You got it? I'm close to calling this over. Okay, well, Eric is playing Larry, fast. Yeah, Larry really has not shown us anything to make us doubt him at this point. And he's about to gobble another pawn. Yeah, look at this. Smooth, I'm gonna take another pawn and then you'll probably see them start pushing. Yeah. Yes, or Sarah one style. Push him, baby. Mm -hmm. If you're Cardinals fans out there, you're rejoicing, not just because it's Larry Fitzgerald, but because he's beating a 49er. <laughs> you just got to say it. You mentioned earlier about, you know, no love lost with the Browns, but once you're retired and out of the league, do you still care about the rivalries? Is it, is it, does the emotion run that deep or you don't care anymore about the rivalries? I feel like once I was out of the league, I really reverted to like my my childhood. Okay. As, so I grew up in Buffalo. So as a Bills fan, got it. This, uh, yeah, the playoff loss this past year, it uh, that stung a little bit. Heard yeah, people somehow... people saying about the clock, but Larry's been so smooth, it's been hard to get worried about the clock. Although now he's down to twenty seconds, so okay, all right, drama getting real. Is he going to convert this or? Okay, probably fastest road is to advance a pawn to protect the rook, and then and then you can do things simply. But I don't think Larry sees that plan yet. He's giving checks. Careful, you give too many checks, you can get a draw. Okay, this is good. Yeah, F5, F5 is nice, supporting the rook. 
Next, you could even check on the third rank and force the king back. Start advancing the pawn. Rook a3 check would force the king back, and then you can advance the h-pawn. <gasps> uh, that was not a good move. That hung the rook. Oh, he sees it. Oh, what? Eric didn't see it. What? He missed it. The, the pawn cut off the rook's protection. Oh, my lord. Oh, man. The crazy thing is, I, I mean... Black has so many pawns, they would still be winning. Black was still winning, that but to me, that's where the mess. eval bar is deceptive. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. made it seem like it's not that big of a deal. If he took no, that I mean, rook a, with only 20 deal. seconds, dude, that was not oh, going to yeah. be an easy win. Yeah, of course. Oh, and Larry realizes yeah, he it now. It. He's like yeah. shaking his head. He got away with one. Yeah. Oh, man. But Eric also down on time. That's the thing. Larry is thanking his lucky stars that Eric missed that chance. What's he going to do? Okay, five. Dude, 0.7 second. He just made that move. Oh, my God. <laughs> five seconds. King of two. All right. Okay, now Larry but, has but now Larry has that a really chance be over, to but... Yeah. All right, and that's going to be game. He spots it. Yeah. Man, we should not underestimate how close that moment was. I really think after F4, if Eric takes that brook, we might have a different result. Just backing up to that. If, if Eric finds I mean... this move... I don't know that Larry goes on to win this game with, with only 29 seconds on the clock. So, for the record, Larry breathed in a sigh of relief as he should. That was a very close game. This is an epic match. Yeah, I mean, really, that was that was close. If not for this initial blunder, this sort of like uh, sort of playing on autopilot in the London. Yep. I think Eric put on a lot of pressure, had a lot of good moments this uh this isn't going to be a walk in the park yeah. for Larry. Well, look at that. They're already off to the races here. Game two. Here we go. These guys are ready to play. I love it. Let's go. Um, yeah, man. Oh, my God. That was that was seriously a close yeah. game. If not for that blunder by Eric, would, have that have been a, would that have been a different result? He did fight super hard for the rest of the game. Danny, we said over and under before. Do you think we'll have over half of Berlin? We have our gonna... chance. This is it. We'll find this out. This is our chance. Uh, no, oh, no. Larry, oh, no. Larry goes for the Italian. Yeah. The uh, we we were betting. Obviously, we see the Berlin so often at the highest levels of chess. For those of you who don't follow the most exciting draw in the world, um, but Larry wants none of it. And F six. F6 usually not a good idea this early on, especially against an Italian. You've just opened up. Yeah the floodgates against your king. Where is Ben Feingold when you need him? Where is Ben Feingold? He's rolling over in his own grave, F6. Exactly. <laughs> and, and he shakes his fists. And the problem with oh. this, everyone, is, is the pawn can't go back, right? So when you make a move like that, you literally have permanent problems for the rest of the game, and your king, your king lacks safety. So... Larry doesn't even have to find anything spectacular. That's why the eval bar loves white, because if white just plays normal chess, this is a very tough position for black. Oh, man. Okay. But let's, but can we talk about this? Because I think this is a useful sort of like, this is a yeah. useful thing to learn for sort of like improving players. Your opponent just played F6. Yep. There's no knockout. There's no like sacrifice on E5. There's no like big move that ends the game. Right. How do you take advantage of that slowly and methodically? How do you punish your opponent for a move like that? That's a really good question. And and I think, you know, to dive into what you said, obviously when there's no knockout, that's when players can get frustrated, right? You know someone did something bad, but you don't see a knockout. So what do you focus on? Typically, when it comes to a move like that, in, in the I would say the answer to every kind of mistake is different when your opponent makes a mistake that there isn't a knockout. But when it comes to an opening mistake like that, typically your idea should be to open the center because the reason it was bad is because the king can't get castled anymore. So immediately when you know your opponent is going to be stuck with a king in the center, you start to think about how can I open up, open up the game and get lines to it. You know, there are what you're asking, John, was also like a broader sort of chess question, too. Like, you can be in a middle game and your opponent, you know, makes a mistake, but there's no knockout. What's the right psychology there? I think very often it's, it's 
focusing on the positional things you can control, the things that are permanent that your opponent can't take back, and, and trusting that those weaknesses will come back to haunt them. Larry probably played this a little slower than you would have wanted because now Eric, to his credit, what's he doing? He's preparing to get castled long where F6 isn't going to be nearly as big of a problem once that king gets out of the center. Oh, wow. Are we going to see opposite side castling again? I mean, yeah, and there it is. Yeah. And now all of a sudden F6 doesn't look so silly. Not at all. In fact, yeah. well, it was bad, but the thing is it actually prepares G5, mm -hmm. which in turn supports H5 and H4. So this F6 move could end up being the catalyst, sort of the uh, the trampoline to jumping off for a kingside attack. Um, objectively, white is still better if you start doing things like using your D5 square. You could even look to use the F5 square with knight H4, knight F5. And if you go for an attack, you can still be good. Larry Larry does find this move knight D5, but but it is you know we still have a long game ahead for sure. Yeah, Max, Max in chat says Larry, uh, not Larry, he says Eric calculated further than the commentators. Maybe he did. Maybe oh. he knew all along that F6 was not a problem. Touche, Eric Armstead. Touche. <laughs> okay. Okay, B4. Okay, this is the right approach from White, right? Anytime you have kings on opposite sides of the board, everybody... You go for the attack, and advancing the pawns is exactly what Eric is uh, also going to be doing on the king side, but it's what he has to deal with when it comes to Larry's attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Although the problem with that Eric has is he needs to push his pawns. He needs to attack, but he's not developed at all. This knight yeah. on G8 really needs to move out of the way and get into the game so that he can start pushing his pawns, start making threats. Yeah, chat's saying this was all Eric's prep. I, I don't think so, but again, he is playing well. He needs to do what John said, get developed and launch the attack. Um, if you're Fitzgerald, even A4, A5, D4 is also okay. I know the yeah. eval bar didn't like it, but you're, you know, you're playing in the center, which... Could I guess you could out. have taken on E5. Oh, was that the move? Yeah, yeah you oh, could have, right? Knight takes of... E5? Yeah. Nice move, John. Yeah. Pawn was pinned to the queen. That was nice. Yeah, well, I don't know. The queen there, you know, this is what, uh, I don't know, you try to do when you try to improve at chess. You see some idea, the queen and the rook are on the same yep. file, and you just keep it in mind every move until it, something can work, you know? No, it's really true, and, and that's what pattern recognition becomes. It gives you the, what do they call the spidey sense? You know, Spider-Man's popular with the kids these days, so when I say that, mm -hmm. they get it, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Gives you the spidey sense. When you've got the rook and queen on the same file, always look for tactics. Um, and we'll see if he sees it the second time. Knight takes e5. Also a good move, by the way. This just solidifies the the center so you can get back to work on the queen side with a4 and a5 and start attacking. I, I almost like e4 better than knight takes e5, John. Just to like the discipline of the position to hold the center together is really, really difficult for black. Read. Okay. Moment of truth. Both knight takes g5 and knight takes e5 are very strong for white. Knight takes g5 could be really good. Coming in on the e6 square. Goes for b5, so continue uh, his plan. E5. It allows queen c5 check, winning the bishop. Wow. Do you think Eric's going to see it? I'm... He might, you know I, why? I hate to doubt him. I'm not oh, so he sure. doesn't see it. I didn't think he was. I, right. I was going to say because it's a check, and a lot of times players are 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 looking for checks, but that There's was the Larry... game right there. Okay, so now, okay, now things are. Oh my gosh! So now Larry sees this tactic, but the knight's already developed. So now, but oh, oh. Didn't see that it was pinned. Oh, wow! Knight takes g5. You couldn't take it because the queen. Oh, but Eric is Eric isn't phased. He seems like he planned this. I mean, this is a huge turn of events. Eric really had a chance there. And now every time there's a blunder, like... I'm like looking at the players, like oh, did they see it? What's their reaction? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on like a swivel here. I'm like, um 
Well, when we, when we talk to Larry, uh, among many things, we will talk to him about those two big moments, uh, whether he saw Queen C5 check and whether he saw his rook hanging in game one. Of course, this game is not over. Not saying that, you know, he's going to win the match just yet, but he's obviously in a commanding spot with the queen. Okay. Takes a pawn in front of his king. No, no fear. Knight g6 defense, but you know, the thing about this is even if objectively black has some material for the queen, it's so much easier to play with the queen, right? It, the, the less experience you have too, the easier it is to play with the queen. So, and rook f1 is a really strong idea. Larry, very consistent when he gets an advantage, just knows how to trade pieces and, and convert things. Knight f4, but maybe you can just take on e5. I don't see any real threats there. uh yeah yeah i don't see any real threats there's almost a back rank checkmate trick right but yeah, bishop almost. backwards yeah yeah although if that bishop was a pawn it would be a different story if, if i was eric i would play this anyway just to see if i could get a blunder with king h1 <laughs> yeah that's true yeah <laughs> because sometimes bishops moving backwards is not what people think of well sometimes you get it like i don't know if this happens to you you get a check that you weren't expecting yeah and your instinct is to just move as quickly as possible yeah, like, you oh can't. you checked me i wasn't expecting it oh let me just move out of the way yeah 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 so uh, obviously this is you know losing for black and white yeah. should take but just to show everybody if this check was played and the king did move to h1 whoop that would be checkmate on f1 so white would have to see bishop takes e2 um and uh anyway fun tactics i've fallen for a back rank checkmate or two because that's what Brian Boitano would do. And uh, I like to avoid them, though. Do you know that reference? I have no clue what this What is this reference? <laughs> it's Teach a South me. Park reference, sorry. <laughs> a South Park reference? Yeah. Mm. South Park. I have no clue what the reference is, though. I, I feel like I watched South Park. Uh, it's the movie. Like, you know, what would Brian Boitano do? The movie? Oh, I was so, like, when the movie came out, I was like, you're I wasn't like allowed five. to watch South Park. I was like, <laughs> I'm so old. Um, although I'm not that much older, I think my parents just had worse boundaries. Um, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we don't care. Whatever you do, watch South Park, buddy. Um, all right, Queen D4, safe from Larry there. The knight comes back to F4. Maybe he wants a back rank checkmate or two, as we said. <laughs> Actually, this is a good move from, from Eric, because look at this, John. Like, let's just say a random move happens, and then the rook comes well, to g8. Well, and if my another question random is, move happens, My now, question is, can't you take on f4? Oh, actually, rook takes f4 would be game over. Yeah, it's just an easy way to sort of end the game. Yeah, rook takes f4 would be a very nice move. Uh, again, the rook is overloaded. That's the tactic that John spot. You definitely had your uh, Wheaties before the show today. Hey, I'm just glad to, I'm glad to be hanging out with you, man. I'm glad to be talking some <laughs> chess. I, I haven't been doing enough chess. I haven't really, you know, I've been so busy with math. This is, uh, you know, it's fun to look at some games. Larry goes back to E5, which is repeating okay. the position if Eric plays Knight G6. Something about Harry says it changed. It explains a lot about me that my parents would let me see South Park at the age of 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway i always um, forget how how much of an age difference do we have how old are you i'm 36 okay so we've got like a five-year gap so not so yeah. like it's it's reasonable Great. like you were 11 when you saw it i would have been like six yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't even know if i was 11 i just made that up i i may have been yeah. older or i have no idea but um the point is i probably should, saw it you know mm too young um anyway queen to e5 attacks the knight again eric should probably just repeat by the way because if larry somehow makes the mistake of repeating moves and you get a draw actually he still loses the match who am i kidding actually that's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh so that's that's an accidental yeah an accidental thing even if it's a draw larry would win um yep. but you know you got on the board at least yeah Um, okay, queen goes to g3. Larry takes a different route, a nice defensive move. 
He can take with the bishop, but does he see the bishop retreating or does he take with the king? He does. Takes with the bishop. Well, you called you called Chidobi Awuzier as maybe, you know, the ringer way underrated. I think you were right. I feel like you had an inside tip from Robert Hess on that in hindsight. Um, no, so there was no communication. It was solely from uh, from looking at some games. Okay. I, I, I did a little bit of scouting before, okay, okay. before the event, so... But I, I said for sure I thought I thought Larry was underrated there as the lowest mm-hmm. as the lowest seed at thousand three. I didn't know how underrated, but I but I was you know he's only played like five rapid games total in his life on chess.com. So you know not to say Eric hasn't played well too, but this is clearly someone who's better than a thousand, you know, in Larry Fitzgerald, um, and he's already upped his rating to eleven forty four with one win. So. Um, no. At this yeah, point, this is. G6 is, is a very nice move. Black. Yeah, C6 is good. Yeah. If black, black has if black a tough position. It... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, if black takes it, the queen takes. Doesn't win the rook because the knight defends it, but just opening up the king is usually a, uh, you know, tasty dish for the queen. She starts to get yeah. checks and more bad things happen. Definitely. I was just going to say, yes, white has a material advantage, but also... Black's bishop has just been dead this entire game. And it's still not clear. Yeah. How this is going. Uh, by the way, so the chat did research. I was 13 mm-hmm. when South Park hit theaters and I did see it in theaters. So I was 13 when I saw it, which means you okay. were 7. I was 8, I guess. 8. Okay. Eight. So, yeah. So this a mystery solved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are the questions we need answers These to. These are the questions that matter. Thank you, chat. It really yes. matters a lot. Larry greater than Magnus. Look at this move, Queen G7. Mm-hmm. Maybe Magnus Carlsen has a different person he might compete for in the world championship. You know, since we know he doesn't want to play Nepo, apparently. We'll get we'll get a little battle with Larry Fitzgerald. Obviously, we're kidding. Um Swim19 says, I thought Danny was 40 10 years ago. You know what? <laughs> uh, I thought you were 40 10 years ago, Swim 19. Ooh. Yeah, 96 um, a good defensive try, so at least yeah. you can't take on C7 with the queen. So that's nice. Yeah, a very good move, actually, as long as you yeah. don't take with the knight and give the rook here. Knight to C6 was a great move by Eric. Mm-hmm. Okay. If the king moves, how do you convert on this to make that educational with the queen? What would you do to convert in this endgame here, John? Yeah, so I think the first thing I would do is think about centralizing my queen to square like e5 looks really nice, especially once the king goes to b7. Mm -hmm. The bishop has a hard time getting out. Their pieces don't really seem coordinated. And one thing I would aim to do is try to reroute my bishop to a square like f3, maybe. Like that. Queen e5, solidify your bishop to a good square. Good plan. Mm-hmm. A centralized queen is very, very strong. Yeah. I know that sounded a little Captain Obvious, but it's important, right? That you, you know, you have an extra queen, mm-hmm. you put the queen in the most dominant possible position for tactics. And I think John's main point that it that it cripples the bishop is mm-hmm. really key. Um I would say that the second thing, even though this is literally the opposite of that idea, you could also take this pawn first and then try to do ideas like this. Because the sooner you get rid of this pawn and have a passer, that's also probably a way for Black's defenses to just crumble. Yeah, um, and Larry, and Larry actually does go for that. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Principle of two weaknesses. The moment you get something going... Mm-hmm. They're trying to make it up to me now, John. They're saying that they said I was in my 40s because they're like, yeah, we're just impressed that you had so much success at your young age because you're so old now. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever. Okay. Um, queen takes h7. Good right. how, do we, how do we play for tricks here? What's the trick? Okay, bishop b7. Trick? Okay. It's back to the Hikaru Pog champs. How blunderable is this position for White? I mean, like not very. It's not. Yeah, the last chance you would have is is an awkward back rank, right? But it's it's hard to even see how that would happen. 
And the moment Larry pushes, you know, pushes an H pawn, all of that goes out the window. So, okay, that's a good move. You're trying to corral the C pawn. Good move from Eric for sure. Mm -hmm. But note the difference on the clock in this game. Larry was way down in game one, despite the advantage. Here, he's up two minutes almost. Yeah, he's in a great situation. Only needs a draw. This is uh, this is looking so far so good. And I like queen d7. Yeah, forces you to take with the knight. Because if you take with the rook, the knight hangs. Yeah, and once you take with the knight, now all of a sudden, all the pieces are tied down. Yeah. Uh, well, this is... Uh, and I kept mentioning the H pawn, John, but I think Larry has another pawn in mind. Yeah, exactly. In fact, he could actually play e6 here and still be winning. Oh, that would be spicy. That would be fun. E6, be if you take the queen, you're still winning with yeah. a couple of passed pawns. That would be a fun idea. I, I don't think it's necessary, and Larry Larry agrees. Says, not mm -hmm. necessary, Dan. Right? Mm -hmm. And now E6 is just coming. E6, E7, Red Rover, Red Rover. Yeah. They want to know why you don't have your own chess show, John. My own chess show. I'm I'm busy with math. I'm I keep yeah. trying to people keep asking me like, oh John, like how's chess going? How much you know chess are you doing? I'm like you're like I'm trying to make a math career. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, you know, make a name for myself. Some crazy math stuff, guys. Yeah. Um knight f6. Shout out to Eric. Obviously, he's defending well. I mean, Larry just seems to be, at least as far as these two games went, we don't know. Larry seemed to be the stronger player, more experienced. But, um, but okay, that first game just kind of got away from him with the London. He almost came back. Mm -hmm. um, this game, the Italian with f6 didn't go well for Eric. But, you know, you never know until we see the other players jump in, you know, who's really going to separate themselves. But right now, Larry looks like the stronger, strongest player in Group B. Yeah, absolutely. And here you can probably just play something like queen d8 and then just bring the bishop around. We'll see if Larry sees queen d8. That would be... I think I think it's definitely something he could find. That would be wild. Queen d8 is a very nice move. You can also play queen d7 and it's kind of almost the same thing. Um, right. And one of the main points, everybody, is that on either queen d8 or queen d7, if black takes with the knight, you're taking it. And then you're getting a queen on the next move after the rook takes. Mm -hmm. But um, it's kind of a tricky tactic to see, though. I mean, I, you know, I don't know that it's mm -hmm. a foregone conclusion that Larry finds that. Yeah, that's true. Well, also, he doesn't need to find it. His position is still quite good. Although he, he is starting to spend some time. Oh, and he, he does find queen d7. So he sees your idea. Yeah, he's, he's, he plays queen d7 at least. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I'm just realizing just this moment. Like, black is very low on moves. Like, there's just like... There's just nothing to do. Eric's just sitting. Yeah. What's yeah. funny is just if if this bishop had a diagonal, queen mm -hmm. takes c8 here, and then any check <laughs> on this diagonal would just be an epic way to end the game. Um, Who knows? He might he might go g3. Oh, okay. G3, g3 or, in, or any bishop move out threatens this crazy queen c8 idea, mm -hmm. which would be a lot of fun. I don't think it's necessary or going to happen, but... Okay, if he plays g3 here, right? But it, it's getting hard because because Larry's got all these pawns, but he's he's running out of ways to defend them. And if he gets too obsessed with that idea, okay. It should be two, but now this allows knight takes. Right? Yeah, now the knight can take and you don't have queen c8 anymore. Yeah, there's no tactics here. Yeah. Um, but he did get the bishop in the game, which also kind of helps punch things through because now it's threatening to go to h5 where it guards the E8 square. So. Yeah. Time continues to tick, though. So, yep. you know, every... Not over yet. Not over yeah. yet. 
I don't think anything wins just yet, Chad. Yeah, but it's it's getting dangerously close. As soon as this bishop comes to f3, as yeah. soon as you trade that bishop off, ideas of like queen d8 just become. And even bishop h5. I think that yeah, if, if Larry true. sees, if that was his idea, why did he choose bishop e2 versus g3 or bishop d3? It might have been because of bishop h5. So, mm -hmm. or, or, or your idea of bishop f3. I think both. No, we both are good. Yeah. No. And a third one we didn't even talk about. That's true. Yeah, I guess that's just a really good move also. Yeah, bishop can come from here to d7. Yeah, now you can... Although, rook takes g2, right? You yeah, got to watch out a little bit. Here? Larry being yeah, careful. Yeah, but uh, don't you have uh, queen d8 here? Oh, queen d8 is, yeah. Queen d8 is lights out, actually. Right? Yeah, because then queen you just D8, take the rook. Rook takes, takes, and it's mate. Yeah, and if bishop c8, you just take the rook. and Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. But he hasn't put the queen on d8 yet, so I was wondering if he saw that idea. But queen to d8 would be the fastest everyone takes, takes, shake and bake, mom helped. Yeah, exactly. There you go. He's Wasn't that the phrase shake it, and bake, mom helped? Or was it I helped? Shake and bake, I helped? Wow, you, all these references are just going over my head. I feel like I'm... You don't know the shake and bake commercials? Shake and bake. And I helped. I have no I have no clue what you're talking about. Oh, man. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I'm like... I know you and Hess have a very good rapport with like, these <laughs> references, and I'm like... I feel like I'm 0 for 2 right now. Uh, you know, you're you're still bad at a higher percentage than Danya, which is hard to believe, even if you're 0 for 2. <laughs> <laughs> Danya somehow gets negative pop culture points on every response. All right, H3 by Larry. Just Yeah, very nice. Yeah, nice, solid move. No solid need defense. Fireworks, yeah. Okay, Eric is doing his best to bring life into the position. Yeah. You could play A4 if you're really trying to strangle. Of course, queen takes B6 is mm -hmm. also very good. Yeah, but, also... Um, Queen d8 is still there if he wants to try it on this move. Queen d8 again. Yep, you're right. Yeah. He's got a second chance. Here come the boomer references. You know, I'm such a boomer. When they first started calling me a boomer, I thought it was a compliment. <laughs> so what, what, like... The shake and bake commercial. Like, what What years are we talking about? I don't know. About? We'll have to look it up. But shake like and what, bake. What type of TV? Like, was this... Like, it's a thing. Yeah. It was way black before light. my time, but it was a thing. Anyway. Gotcha. Um like okay, black Larry and white takes TVs another pawn. Or like what are we talking? We we keep thinking this is over. Okay, now we're down to 30 seconds for Larry and Eric Armstead is holding on. Anytime there's a night, there's a chance, as they say. Where there's a night, there's a way. That's that's a thing. Okay. Okay. Because um, knights are tricky. Mm -hmm. tricky little ponies but still queen d8 it's it's there he i i think this could be the move because he's being pressed to move his queen okay he plays queen d6 now has another chance at queen d8 but also has, has to move b6, b6 as well yeah okay but he, okay he and, finds okay, b6 he finds i b6. think that that's gonna be it yeah. now we saw eric resign in the first game We'll see whether he does the same here. I don't know that he's someone who's going to play it out to checkmate or stalemate. Really tough spot. 20 seconds. Really comfy couch, though, behind Eric. It just looks like a comfy couch. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It looks way more comfortable than the couch behind you. Bro, I'm gonna let you know this is a grown-up couch behind me. This is like <laughs> this is like a fancy couch. So fancy couch? You, yeah, before I'm telling you, before I met Louise, before I met Louisa, like I you know, I just I was not meant to have nice things. Like, you were I didn't not appreciate a grown up. nice things. I was not a grown-up. <laughs> and you know, Louisa moves in and she takes one look at my furniture and she goes straight to like the like article store. Yeah. And, okay, uh, wow. Larry's got two queens, by the way. I think this is about to be over. I want to hear well, the end of this yeah, story. Yeah. Right. But okay, if you take the bishop, it's stalemate. There's, there's stalemate. 
There is stalemate potential. King A7. On the board King here. A7. King A7. Don't stalemate. Come on. He's only got four. I don't know why. I, I just want the chaos. I want the chaos. I want, I want the, the chaos. Queen C8. <laughs> Queen C8. Oh, no. He finds a different move. Wow. Heads up play by Larry. Almost stalemates. Bishop A6. Bishop A6. Bishop A6 and then Queen A5 is stalemate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Genius. Bishop A6. Bishop Genius. A6. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. He gives him a check. Yeah. Gives him a check, and now Larry's going to convert it. Yeah. Oh, three seconds. Two seconds. Wait, what? Move. What? That was, oh, my God. Just play Bishop seconds A6. Moved. <laughs> yeah. Make Four a second. Make a queen. No, He's got to move. Stalemate. He's got to move. He's got to run out of time. Oh, my God. Ended a draw. He lost but out he of time. he still gets through. Oh, but he still God. gets through. <laughs> he ran out of time, but he, I don't know if he knows he still wins the match. Yeah, he, he still, yeah. I guess he still wins the match, yeah. Oh, man. Well, that shows you the rapid chess, right? Different than daily chess there. Yeah, yeah. And Larry's kicking himself right now. You can. Larry's kicking can himself, but okay. Yeah. Oh, and look as at as Eric's face. Look at that smile. As exciting as that was, though, of an ending, Larry does still go on, and he obviously was dominating this game. Um, but it is un an unfortunate maybe sign of, of things to come for Larry because it does show that if he gets under time pressure because he hasn't played Wait, a lot can of I ask rapid. A question? What? Go back. Can you go back? Can I ask a question? About the position? Yeah. yeah. Why why is it isn't that uh isn't that a win for Eric? Aren't they one one? Aren't they going to tie break? Wait, that was that's not a draw. No, it's a draw because King and Bishop aren't mating material. Oh, even if you can like make a mate, because white has yeah, no, we it's oh, okay. the, the chess.com rules are are the are the fide rules where it doesn't it doesn't go with the the potential of like a self mate basically. Um, oh, okay. Which I guess if what you're saying, like this you position a does mate. have yeah, a potential of self mate with a white pawn on a seven and a white king on a eight. It is possible, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. But that's not that's not the uh, and any of the several several rules there. But um, oh, okay, okay. But I hear you. No, that would have been. That would have been the uh, the drug. Does guess. Eric know that? Does Eric uh, know that? I don't know if either player Does knows. Does Larry that. know that? I didn't know that actually. Yeah, I don't think Larry knows that. I don't know if they saw the result as a, as a draw when the when the post game. Yeah, I saw the draw up. pop up, and I yeah, wasn't yeah. really thinking. And then afterwards, I took a second and said, "Wait, what?" Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Regardless of the mm -hmm. of the drama there in the end, it will be Larry winning the match with one and a half out of two um the uh we've got we've got a lot coming up here we should talk about where that puts things in terms of the standings for group b there you see larry fitzgerald with three points because he won the matchup without tiebreakers mm -hmm. and so he takes a three-point victory an early lead in group b uh, obviously eric will have a chance to redeem himself in the next match coming up uh, but Larry out to an early lead and, uh, well, showing why he's the hall of famer, right? Larry yeah. Fitzgerald. Hey, that was, so regardless of the drama there in the end, the two Queens almost stalemate end on time, John, this, this guy, this guy might be adding some credentials like blitz champs champion to his uh, hall of fame bullet point list there. We'll see about that. So, uh, I don't know if, uh, if you want to announce this yet, but I just, I just read a note and I'm getting excited. You're getting excited. I'm getting excited because I have a new favorite pick for winner of Blitz Champs. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be so subtle with my favoritism because. Well, he's, no, but seriously, he's he's a Hall of Famer. We're, we're going to be talking to him uh, soon here, but um, the excitement about Larry playing in this event, I mean, okay, like, obviously everyone's super excited. If you're an NFL fan, the guy is a, the guy is a legend, right? He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And uh, and he's been playing chess for a long time, playing on chess.com for a long time. But that was impressive. Again, the rapid experience maybe caught up to him there with the time. But I think I think, you know, the chess strength was very clear, John. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It uh, we had a lot of questions about his time management. And yes, that last one got away from him. But I think he's largely answered that question in the affirmative. He can you know, he can play under a time pressure recognize tactics under time pressure, make good moves under time pressure. And I think he looks like a strong contender. Yeah. 
reminder reminder to chat that um you know if you have some great questions we'll try to keep track of it and uh we may indeed be able to get to your questions um for um said hall of famer future hall of famer larry fitzgerald again that was impressive and uh as uh, chat was joking, maybe he'll be adding Chess Hall of Famer to his career one day. Larry, how are you, man? Thanks for joining us. Uh, what's going on, Danny? How are you, man? John, uh, good to see you as well. Good to see you as well, Larry. Congrats on the uh, on the win. That was a John, that was a great. John, match. that wasn't that that was uh, my in my end game. Definitely needs a lot of a lot of work. I mean, I do tons of tons of puzzles every day, but I don't work um, as hard as I need to on my end game, and that that causes you in these these rapid and blitz formats, you know, you have to be concise and quick with your thoughts and, you know, um, be decisive. And I just, I was indecisive down the stretch and that hurt me. Well, you, you still win the match, obviously, because it was a draw. That game was a draw because he didn't have mating material. I don't know if you knew that, just letting you know. No, I, I understand that, but it's the, yeah. you know, you want to, you want to close, you want to close yeah, it out. Yeah, you want to close it out with a win. I was, in, I was in position to close it out and I didn't, I didn't do it. So that's frustrating. Yeah. Well, let's talk, let's talk about it. You play a lot of daily games on chess.com. That's your main thing, right? And what, what is it about daily that you prefer? Is it just because it's easy for you? You, you know, you don't have to deal with, you know, time pressure in that sense, or is it just the convenience part of daily chess? And, and second part of that was, does that make you nervous playing in this event, knowing that you're going to have some time pressure situations? Yeah. You know, I, I play blitz, you know, occasionally, but not, not often. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable in the, in the daily games. You know, I, I just don't have the time to sit in front of my computer or my, on my phone for, you know, 10, 10 minutes. You yeah. know, I, I'm always moving, chasing kids and things. So the daily format works a little bit better for my schedule. It, it gives yeah. me a chance to play, you know, three or four or five different games at the same time and, you know, kind of get to them when I get to them. And that's, that's primarily the reason I, I don't play more blitz games. Yeah, makes well, sense. Also, the the daily chess time control is just great for taking your time and thinking deeply about a game. Oftentimes, yeah. when you're playing Blitz, you know you play a game, you win it, you lose it, whatever you do, you click that sort of new game button, and you don't analyze, you don't think deeply. Yeah, and that deep thought is often what leads to improvement in chess. And I'm curious for you, what do you do to try to reach that next level of your chess progression? Um, I mean, I, I play Danny every day. You know, he uh, I've never beat him before, but you not know, yet. He, he makes me he makes me work really hard on um, on the strategy. He plays me in the games where you know he is a bunch of knights and, and they give me they give me fits. Um, you know, it's uh, but I'm I'm getting better. I'm making improvements, um, and I just think playing. I used to play like the same people over and over and over again, and I I I, did, I wasn't really getting better, so I just started playing you know, 14, 1500, 1600 players and I lose most times, but there's moves that I see that I didn't recognize prior to because the people I wasn't, I was playing just weren't sophisticated enough, good enough players to be able to see those things and, um, you know, take advantage of them when, when I made mistakes in the first game, you know, you know, I, I blocked, um, I blocked my rook. I don't know if you guys saw it with my pawn trying to advance it. And, you know, by the grace of God, Eric didn't see it and, and move back. And, you know, if, if I make that mistake, you know, I, I, I might, I probably lose that game, you know, so yep. just, you know, being able to make good sound, smart, strategic moves in those, in those clutch situations are, uh, are, are essential. We, we saw that reaction there. We knew you saw it after you did it, but it ended up yeah. working out there and it was, but anyway, man, t taking a big step back, just since we've been, all into the game. Huge thank you to playing this event. Fans are, are super pumped. This is awesome. And I just wanted to help everyone get to know you a little bit, talk a little bit about chess while we while we have you. So if you would, just tell everybody, how long have you been playing chess? Give us your quick Larry Fitzgerald chess story and, and talk about how much, how much the game means to you. So I started playing when I was about seven years old. You know, I was, you know, rambunctious little kid, you know, into everything and anything. And, you know, my, my, my teachers are tell, telling my parents, you know, I don't know if he's ADHD or, you know, he might need some medication to kind of slow him down. And my after school program, Horizon Youth Program in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, one of, the one of the counselors suggested I play chess. He said it would slow his thoughts down, help him strategize. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be able to, you know, really get his mind wrapped into something, you know, for 30 minutes to an hour, um, you know, and it's great to be able to make, build relationships and, you know, help him with his schoolwork. And so my parents put me in chess and you know, I instantly fell in love with it. Not only did I, 
do better, you know, my focus in school, but, you know, my academics improve, you know, just the strategy and overall thought process that goes into being a good chess player. I think it, it, uh, it translates into anything that you do. Um, you know, I, I love just meeting somebody randomly, you know, they'll see me on my phone. They're like, bro, you play chess? Like, yeah, I play chess. They'd be like, yeah, I've been playing chess too. What do you play yourself? I play on chess.com. And then we, you know, we change information, you know, now you can do it, you know, with, the with the barcode and, and in five minutes, I'm playing that person and making new friends is really is really cool. It's awesome, uh, Larry. You you played in the league for almost two decades. Who was the best chess player you've played in the NFL? I'm curious. Um, you know, I played Kyler. He's on my team. He's played a long time. He whooped my ass when we played. Um, <laughs> but he plays a very aggressive style of of, of, of chess. Like he's constantly attacking. And he kind of knocked me back off my heels a little bit when we when we played. I wasn't. Um, he, he caught me in a in a, a a rook king fork that really hurt me um, when he was being really aggressive. Um, you know, Corey Peters, my former teammate, played with him for five seasons. Um, he's a really good chess player as well. We had some great battles. Um, and you know, Trent Sherfield, I play a lot with him. He's played receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Um, Dwight Freeney is a really, really good player. He's probably a 1600 real strong player. Um, we play. I can vouch for that. Yeah. Yeah. We play, we play periodically. Um, so, I mean, I, I mean, there's not a lot of guys that play chess, but um, the guys who are chess players, we like to, we like to battle. Like I yeah. said, I play, I play, I play. I'm, I mean, right now I'm playing. I'm playing four games right now, you know, um, so like I, I play, I play quite a bit. Gotcha. Well, Larry, if you ever want to get a daily game going, just let me know. <laughs> John, what's your, what's your, what's your rating looking like? Oh, uh, like 1700, 1800. Yeah. I, I usually, I usually stay away from the Ivy league guys. You know, those, those, those kind of guys, you know, the high SAT scores, you know, present a lot of challenges. So, um, Oh, I'm a, I'm a Penn State listen. guy. There's there's no Ivy League. There's no Ivy League guys oh, around. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you went to Penn. I'm sorry. I'm no, no. I'm, <laughs> oh, okay. Sometimes people make that mistake. They see the glasses. They think, oh, you went to Penn. No, I went to. <laughs> okay, you I went, went to, to MIT school. after Penn. I think it's. No, fair. I went you to went the to... state school. So. <laughs> but you went no, to I'm MIT sure. afterward, right? So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, well, would you say that chess is the most popular game in in lock, NFL locker rooms, Larry? Like John said, you were there for almost 20 years. No, no, not even, not even close. No, okay, I mean, I'm not trying to, close. I'm trying to say, like, Bo you know, Bo Bo what's Ray, the most popular? Bo Ray, Bo Ray is hands down the most popular game in the, in the locker room. Which game? Wait, what is? Bo Ray, Bo Ray. Wow, I've never heard of the game. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dice game. Bo I've, I've never heard of this either. Yeah, Bo yeah. Ray. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I had no idea. There you go. Breaking news right there. Well, Larry. I, uh, while, while we have you, I got to get into this because I learned, I didn't know this. I mean, I've, I've known you're retired, but apparently you're unofficially retired. You've been out of the league since 2020. Do you miss it? And is, what, are, what are the chances that that becomes officially retired or not officially retired? What is the deal with that? I'm just not big on all the, on the, on all the you know, you know, that announcements and stuff. I just walked away. It's, it was time, you know, time for you to get involved in the next adventures of your life. I'm not with all the the, the big tours, you know, I told my kids, you know, on the way to the game, my last game, this is it. And, um, you know, I just packed my stuff up the next day and was out. You know, I had a great run. It was, it was a wonderful time, but it's, it's just one chapter in my life. And, um, you know, 10 years from now, if I'm still talking about what I did in the football field, I, I failed myself. So, mm. you know, you just have to immerse yourself in what's next and, um, and uh, you know, just put it in the same work ethic and tenacity that you did in your, in your former profession. And, um, you know, educate yourself as best you can. I mean, you guys both are, are examples of that, um, you know, founders and professional athletes in the transition and you found success in what you're doing now. And that's what it's all about. It's about growth. And what are you spending most of your time on these days? If you don't mind me you know, asking. I, I really, I really like, you know, um, like the financials, you know, I, I do, I've done in, internships at um, private equity, hedge funds, venture funds, um, banks, you know, when I, throughout the course of my career, I really found that to be fascinating. So I do a lot of work in that area. Um, I'm, I'm very active with the Phoenix Suns, which I'm a minority owner. Um, and, you know, we have a few restaurants, you know, I will have 11 restaurants by the end of uh, Q, Q3, 24. So, 
You know, there's no dull moments. You know, there's a lot, a lot going on, and chasing three boys around too is, um, you know, keeps you on your toes. You did, you did mention pickleball. Yeah, I love my pickleball too. I, 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 uh, I enjoy. It. Like you know, it's funny. It's, you work out for 30 years to get yourself into peak physical condition playing ball, and and you think that you just love working out, right? And you realize that no, you working out was always a byproduct of what it was required to be great at your profession, right? It's not something that you really actually enjoy doing so i play pickleball now three four days a week and like it's a great it's a great way for me to 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 work out um get a great cardiovascular workout especially when you're playing singles um and also um like i need to be i need to compete that's why i love chess i love i love competition i love playing golf because i get to beat somebody there's a there's a win and there's a loss and pickleball is very similar to that there's a winner and there's a loser it's clearly clearly uh clear to identify what a winner and a loser is and you know and it's always great getting a good workout in while I'm doing it so those are, that's that's where I kind of gravitated to support I love that it's a subtle because like I'm you know I can't wait to play pickleball with you. I'm not I'm not going to be on your level I know you're very good at it too you, you, you know then probably Danny, I will I will I will do you how you do me on the chessboard I okay <laughs> that's what I want I want you to <laughs> do me as bad as, as the chess mismatch yeah, you're, I'll, you're, I'll, I'll I'll bet you I could beat you and both your sons at the same time. You got okay, to, that's what I want. All right, we're going to do it then. Right. Next, yeah. next time I'm in town, that's our all next right. game. Um, well, uh, all right, man. A lot of people ask. I want I want to let you talk about your foundation. Before we do, I want to say a lot of people in chat are asking about whether you – do you play chess still with Kyler regularly? Do you guys play? You mentioned that he took it to you the first game, but have you have you righted the ship on that? No, no. I, you know, he's, he's playing. He's chasing his dream, going his fourth year. You yeah. know, he's, he's I, I don't I don't really bother with him. You know, I let him let him go. You know, it's funny, once you're out the league, like you're you're out the league. Like you're either in or you're yeah. out. And you know, right now he's doing his thing. And so I I stay out the way. I do my thing. If he wants the competition, you know, he's very easy just to push the button on the phone and um we we can get another game in whenever. Yeah. Well, man, um, last thing before we let you go, you got another match to play in just a little bit. Talk to us about the charity you're, you're playing for. I know it's, it's the Larry Fitzgerald Foundation. You guys you guys do so much good stuff and just give you a chance to kind of talk about what you're playing for. Well, yeah, we started the Larry Fitzgerald Foundation um, in 2005. It was something that I was always interested in doing once I had the platform in the Capitol and the, and the position to be able to do it. Uh, my mom started a few not-for-profits in my hometown of Minneapolis when I was younger. It was a, an intricate part of who we were and, our, and a part of our fabric as children, you know, just kind of giving back. And I wanted to make sure I did that and uh, continue my mother's legacy. You know, she passed away in 2003 from, from uh, breast cancer. So a lot of our time and attention goes to eradicating that disease. You know, I see so many women when I'm out, you know, just, you know, walking around the city at games and they come up to me and they say, hey, Larry, you know, you know, we really love, you know, what your foundation is doing. You know, my mother beat breast cancer or my sister had a, had a double mastectomy or, um, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it, it just makes it really worth your while. It makes you feel good. And like you're on the right track. Um, cancer is one of those diseases that there's nobody you meet in life now who, you know, is not directly affected, you know, at yeah. some point by, by the disease. And, um, you know, those success stories are really cool. And, um, early education, early childhood education, we do computer labs in schools and want to give, underprivileged schools and, um, you know, in, in particular, pre predominantly brown and, uh, and black communities, you know, just the technological advantages that the other students have um, so they can work hard in math and reading and, and arithmetic and history and science or whatever they desire, um, you know, to give them the available tools to make it, to, to make it happen. It's awesome, man. Good stuff. Well, we, we hope it's the full 25K you're taking home first prize, but even if it's not, um, good stuff and uh thanks for joining us congrats i know i know uh it wasn't perfect but congrats on the on the first match win and and we'll we'll, we'll probably see you uh, if if not later today at least tomorrow yeah i look forward to it i look forward to it you guys have a good one and I, i'll talk to you later all right man see you okay all right bye and that was larry larry the legend joining us as he got his first match victory you can see it right there three points you know, I know he was bummed with the draw, John, but it was pretty dominant, right? He wanted to win cleanly, perfectly. He was up two queens in that last position before oh, he ran out of time. he was completely so really, really crushing, impressive. really dominant performance. And the thing I loved about the way he played that last match was always keeping things under control. 
Yes, yeah. his clock ran out, but the moves he was making, he he never really lost the thread. And that's sort of that's sort of a good sign moving forward. Looking forward towards tomorrow. Yeah. I think he's, you know, he's a strong candidate for making the championship bracket tomorrow and maybe going all the way. Yeah. Well, he's got another matchup today at some point, of course, we'll see. But before we even talk about what's ahead, I want to react a little bit more again to his interview when he 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 said, you know, that um he's got he's got a lot ahead for him right uh, mm -hmm. i like that he what he talked about like all about growth he's out of the league but he's got so much ahead of him and the lessons he gave to his kids that if he's like if i'm still talking about football in 10 years then i did it wrong right mm -hmm. i just love that as someone who has you know an incredibly successful career after the after the league and in your case you were kind of always building toward that career for those who know you i mean math was like really many ways your first love right even more than football mm -hmm. talk about how meaningful you think that is to like for someone not to pigeonhole themselves and to think bigger about what they're doing and not just maybe their first purpose being their sort of last purpose on the planet if you will no i think it's i think it's really important especially you know as football players so many of us get so focused in football being what our identity is defining right. ourselves based off what we do and you know I've experienced this. I'm sure, I'm sure Larry also knows that you know, I have so many friends who, you know, at some point, whether you decide it's time to walk away or whether someone decides for you, football ends at some point and you need to be able to pivot and to figure out what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Because, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot of life left to live after your football career ends. And, you know, you, you don't just stop living once you stop playing football. You need to find yeah. that next thing, what you're going to do, how you're going to define yourself moving forward. And it's not always easy. No, I, I thought it was really inspired. I mean, I thought talking about his foundation is is great. And I know uh, Larry does great work with that and all the other all the other thoughts he was given about about how he how he loves chess and where that came from. But that was like the big takeaway for me in the interview. His response to that as far as where he's going with his next stage of life, I was like, okay, that kind of to me, that kind of answers it. I mean, and that's kind of what I knew. I was surprised. I, you know, you knew that off, off the, off camera that I was surprised that he was unofficially retired because I know how he feels about that. And I know he's already moving on and planning for that next stage of life. And it was really cool to hear his thoughts on, on all that stuff. So um, speaking of what's next after blitz champs, I want to remind everybody that we've got a huge event coming up. Uh, we take a we take a turn away from uh, NFL players playing chess to talk about the best players in the world playing chess yet again. Uh, we just came from Madrid and the candidates. The 44th Chess Olympiad starts July 29th. It goes through August 9th. So many, so many great players, great games. We will have live camera fees. Robert Hess will be on site, so he won't be doing commentary, but we're super pumped about uh, what's going to happen. Team USA, they might be the favorite to win the gold this year, John. That's, uh, it's going to yeah, be well, interesting. Especially now that they have the support of uh, one Robert Hess. Right? That's right. Now that they've got, they got, got themselves a good coach, you know, now, <laughs> now that they've got a good coach, Team USA has a chance. No, um, but seriously, more than 100 countries gather around the world in Chennai, India for the 44th Chess Olympiad. Mark your calendars. If you haven't somehow already, I assume most of you have, hit the follow button, of course, while you're here, because the chess channel will be where the action is at. So, all right, uh, we are going to take a quick break. Um, Eric Armstead gets another shot. At a win here, he ran up against the Hall of Famer Larry Fitzgerald. Didn't go his way, but he gets a second chance uh, at things as we come back. It's more from Chess.com's Blitz Champs Tournament. When we return, don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
Welcome back to Blitz Champs here on Chess.com. We're heading into our fifth hour of gameplay. Here we've got Eric Armstead looking to rebound after that match versus Larry Fitzgerald. And Will Davis, retired NFL player, ready to rock and continue forward here in Group B. They'll be playing shortly, but before we get into that, let's remind everybody, my co-host, my man here, John Urschel. Mathematician, mathematician, Harvard Junior Fellow, All-American, and also played for the Ravens for three years, which, John, as we get into that, I want to update everybody mm -hmm. on why we have Will Davis instead. Uh, instead of your Penn State alumni, Micah Parsons, who had a conflict, Will, who's awesome, uh, has stepped in to fill the role of Micah Parsons in this matchup versus Eric Armstead and for the rest of the event here in Blitzchamp. So you, play, you played with Will in Baltimore, right? Yeah, Will, Will's my boy. Yeah, Will's awesome. Did you, Great guy. Did you play chess with him? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we played a ton of chess. I'm telling you. So, you know, Larry made that comment about chess not being the number one game like in Arizona. I'm telling you, in Baltimore, there's a lot of chess. Will, uh, like Will and I, we played a bunch of like, uh, you know, like chess with friends games. Okay. Will, avid chess player, has hit me up multiple times asking for like chess book recommendations. Like okay. just loves the game, loves to improve loves to get better and just overall a great guy. Awesome. Like one of my favorite teammates on the Ravens. Well, the, uh, the matchup is, is, is set to go here. And we're, again, we're super excited to have will super appreciative of him, uh, of him stepping in and we'll see how he fares here against, against Eric Armstead. And uh, mm -hmm. what chess books have you recommended by the way, as their game is about to get underway? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think, you know, typical like Bobby Fisher's, best games uh art of checkmate i think was a book i recommended to him so that's a book i really liked uh okay. yeah like so just one. yeah i recommended you know some books that i thought teach you something but are really interesting and fun for that sort of like 1100 1200 range i was just gonna ask so you played with will he's studying books what is his general strength right he's stepping in here last minute he plays on chess.com a lot, but is his rating accurate reflected? You'd say he's about 1200 strength. What's his, what's his rating? What's his blitz rating? I, I think his, I think his rapid rating was actually around 900, but again, I don't think he's played that many rapid games. Gotcha. So what would be your prediction on that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm curious to see how he matches up with Eric. Yeah. He, I don't think he's, he's playing as many games as Eric, certainly not today. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Well, but uh, For those who don't know, uh, that reference by John, Eric Armstead played 30 rapid games before the event even started. Um, he just played two more against Larry that didn't go his way. But uh, I don't understand. I, I still don't understand how you play 30. Like, how many hours is that? That's got to be like. I don't know. What, like I mean, too many hours, hours is the answer, hours, by the way. Right? By the way, uh, Will's, Will's rapid rating is 1,047. So okay. there you go. Um Shout out to the team pulling that info for us quickly. So 1,047, mm -hmm. right? It's, you know, it's within range of the, of the, of the whole kind of group here. But again, we know that different ones of different players will be coming in underrated um, different players. Larry, we saw delivered on the board, but then struggled. There was some time pressure. So how much do you talk to Will about, you know, those sort of practical things, studying the books, but also playing, playing fast chess to keep those muscles sharp. Well, uh, we don't talk about it much because, well, we weren't really preparing for uh, the blitz chance. You know, Will just loves chess. He's trying to get better, trying to improve as a player. And uh, I have to admit, I've never actually seen Will play under sort of under time constraints. Got it. So I'm curious to see how he does in that respect. So you guys, how is that in the NFL locker room? So you got, you know... You say, you, you know, you're playing chess with friends on the app, you're playing correspondence chess, maybe you start playing, you know, on different sites, but is there, is there not like the, you bring the board in with a clock and just throw down, you know, with, with blitz, is that less likely to happen? Not really in Baltimore. I don't like in Baltimore. I don't ever remember playing on a physical board. Like we, we would always be like chess with friends or like, I think, you know, people like early on, if someone is sort of you know, not hasn't been doing chess for so long, chess with friends. If they're serious, then like you play a, a correspondence game on chess.com. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the transition. It's like chess with friends, gateway drug, 
chess.com exactly. jump level here we've got d4 again by eric armstead will is uh he's smiling there big smiles i think he might be like all right i don't face d4 every day he took a moment to think there before playing d6 john i see what do you right, think and going for the london again but now he's gonna have to face sort of a king's indian type setup yeah and so if you sort of do the same c3 e3 you know you just don't get the same results i think yeah, and what's funny is so is with the chess on the board here, everybody, is this system, the Fian Keto system is actually kind of irritating to play against when you play a London because a lot of times your attacking ideas are on this diagonal with the bishop. And so you're sort of staring into a brick wall there. Of course, you know, doesn't, you know, notwithstanding blunders or other things that could happen, we saw that Eric kind of messed up his line against Larry. I'm saying kind of in a polite way. He blundered a piece. Um, no, but I mean, he, you know, he he had an idea of the type of position he wanted and he just wasn't yeah. thinking move by move. I mean, I think it's a, a yeah, fair assessment. Yeah. For sure. And, and so to that point, this is the kind of position that he wanted, uh, to John's point, and, it, and this type of attack is what you're hoping for in the London often. But the King's Indian setup is kind of irritating. And I love Will's move there. Rookie eight preparing E5. Uh, Hikaru and I talked a lot about this because in the PogChamps events, uh, John, so many people were being prepared to London. It was like everybody was preparing the streamers to play the London. And those who prepare against it would teach them the rookie eight E5 idea because what happens after E5? Well, next move, we have a fork on E4, right? Mm -hmm. And so we would often see players, uh, you know, not necessarily lose, but you know, the London would backfire when, when they ran into this type of tactic. So we'll see if Will can see this and spots the E5, E4 fork. Knight C3. Wow, this knight C3 idea is pretty common against this type of setup, right? Putting the knight on C3 instead of like going C3. Uh, yes, I think, and it could just be he's forgetting his line in like a Verisoft or like Jababa London. You see this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, in this type of move order, it is it is a little bit different, but ultimately, yeah. I think it's going to be okay because. Um, Will well, does love the E5 idea, but he does it after right. a trade, which means there's no longer there's no longer a fork on E4. So and white's okay. You can take on B7, right? Yeah. White is not only okay, but white's in pretty good shape, actually. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's see if uh, if Eric sees this. Bishop G3. Oh, first oh. of all, again, shout out to Will for having the idea. He went mm -hmm. for it again. It doesn't work here, but this this mm -hmm. E4, E5, E4 idea, everyone watching take note is a very common tactical motif to kind of expose London players and sometimes win a piece with that fork. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, lose a pawn, but I do love the idea. It's like A for an effort kind of thing. Is that a thing people yeah, say? And Will, I was going to say this. Will has to be careful to not try to take this pawn on B2. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I think like Rook B1 could have been a very like, uh, or also Rook D1 is also great. Yeah, I think Rook both D1's both probably better. Good. Even. Yeah. yeah, and the reason John was advising not to take the pawn is because B7 in this case is greater than B2. It's not quite an eye for an eye here. White is white is gonna win the rook at the end of that. Although knight seven, good move by Will. Strong. Yeah. Yeah, although this looks really dangerous. I guess you can just take on B7 and maybe go back to C6. Go to C6 and Yeah, not you can so take easy. on B Take on B7, go back to C6. The knight is pinned, but okay, that you know that takes some accurate calculation there. Knight d7 was way better than any other move that kept the rook trapped. Yeah, definitely. So you and Will still stay in touch with chess now that you're, you know, you, you recommended him books and things like that. You guys still? Yeah, a little bit. He he messaged me like I think a month ago or two months ago asking about uh, asking about something. I forget something chess related, and we we caught up a little bit. It seems like retirement's treating him well he's yeah uh, yeah but how long uh, did he yeah, play no. in the league he played at the dolphins first then the ravens how long was yeah, he in the dolphins league? ravens and then i think he played with the uh oh i'm gonna feel bad if i get this one i think he played with the 49ers maybe or somewhere on the west coast 
Okay. After Baltimore. Any NFL career is a is a is a good and long career, right? It's yeah. it's yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know what the you know what NFL stands for, so yeah. All right. Well, Eric finds Bishop C6. Looks like he's uh, really trying to rebound from that match with Larry. This is a very strong move. The knight is pinned to the queen, everybody. This is tough mm -hmm. stuff. Um, in fact, okay, we'll can play rookie seven, but the problem is if, if Eric finds this, everybody's mm -hmm. overloaded. This is like literally every single piece for black is pinned, <laughs> which yeah. is a problem. Also, even if he doesn't see this, like queen queen d five, maybe could be enough. Even mm, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's hard to spot moves like bishop h four because they're on the right. side of the board. Like you're not totally, you know, it's not where you've been focused. Oh no, but he finds it. That. Yeah, there you go. Eric's like, I got you, Dan. Yeah. Brush your shoulder off. Not I should have given him more credit. It that was impressive. Finds bishop h four, looking pretty good. Looking pretty focused, by the way. Yeah. Eric Armstead. Well, Eric's, you know, he's warmed up. He, yeah. Uh, he's not messing around now. All warmed up. Now it's, uh, now it's do or die. He really needs to win this match to uh, to have a chance to, to make it to the uh, winner's bracket tomorrow. I keep calling the bracket tomorrow all sorts of things. What are we calling this tomorrow? I call it the winner's bracket. I called it the championship bracket, bracket. Championship bracket. All of the above, you all want. are acceptable. Yeah, winner's bracket is what we're calling it, though. By the way. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, you're doing right. Um, anyway, F6 played a good move to stop the bishop from pinning the rook to the queen, but the problem is now, oh, wow, bishop takes d7. That's kind of helpful for black to take. That actually keeps Will in the game. Queen, queen d5 check, like John had said earlier, would have hit the king and the knight. That was definitely the stronger approach. Um, but okay. Eric is uh, still in control. Let's remind everybody again who Eric is. Eric Armstead is uh, playing for the San Francisco 49ers, leading them in, in sacks as a defensive end. That's actually saying a lot because the Niners' defense, their offense might have some struggles at times, but their defense is brutal. You got Bosa, boy, you got Bosa, you've got Armstead. I mean, that's brutal. So um, he's also the 49ers chess champion, which is a title that I've never held. Um, and uh, also, he's uh, he's playing for his own Armstead Academic Project, which is his charity, doing awesome stuff for kids and youth and education. So. Um, there you go. There's Eric Armstead. For those who didn't know him, you need to get to know a little more about him. And I think he missed his chance a little bit, John. Not yeah, playing that yeah. queen d5 it's, check. Uh, yeah, yeah. Will Will still has some uh, has some chances here, I guess. First order of business is defending the uh, the f6 pawn. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, if Eric uh, doesn't come up with something quickly taking advantage of sort of the open king and where the pieces are this could really become an even game very quickly yeah because there's there's awkward ideas why, why can take d7 mm -hmm. and you can even get away with taking f6 and the reason is that if the rook pins the bishop to the queen you can play queen b3 check but that's already like a little bit next level level deep here just to show you can go for this mm -hmm. and this would look like it wins a piece for black if not for this check but it could be it could be hard to see to the end of that um tunnel there so we'll see if uh if if eric goes for that or not when oh, they're they're joking around they're they're laughing about something little kicks and giggles yeah He doesn't go for it. It's understandable, right? That was hard to kind of risk going mm -hmm. for that F1. I think he was nervous about that. Yeah, and now it's important not to take with the queen here. So a little trap being set by Will. And he notices this and he takes with the pawn. It's funny. You saw Will talking a lot there. I think Eric a little was a little more focused. 
Will's like, I'm just happy to be here, man. I just stepped in. <laughs> like, and uh, Eric, Eric was a little more focused, less banter. So what do you try here as Will? Do you, I guess you kind of need to def... Yeah. How do you F defend takes... here? Ooh. Yeah, that move allows a trade and then queen takes F6. And I was about to say F takes G3 was a really nice idea. You called mm -hmm. it, John, to just open up the queen and the rook on the file here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think maybe Will had to uh, trade rooks on D1. Yeah. Yeah. If if Eric takes F6, he not only threatens checkmate on F8, but he also threatens the rook on B2. Mm -hmm. So very dangerous for black. In fact, your only move is to come back to F8 with the, sorry, B8 with the rook to guard F8. Mm -hmm. So that, that could be tough to see. Uh, Symphotic Knight on Twitch. Yes, the player's... The players are in communication with each other. It is an open mic. Um, and uh, they can hear each other banter. We might be able to listen to them or not, but um, but yeah, the players can communicate with each other. Rook okay. B8 finds the move. Yeah. All right, there's still chances here. Anytime, you know, there's queen still on the board, a rook for each side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Although... this is one of those positions where the person who's down material should try to get the queens off the board because mm -hmm. the rook ending is actually probably the best chance black might have to holding rather than playing with the open king. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess the problem is that that pawn is running fast. Yeah. Real quick. Mm -hmm. Although that is a check, and I, you know how I feel about a good check. Yeah, although if he just tucks his king on h2, this is like the safest king in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't get yeah. a safer king than that. Yeah. That's like a bug house safe king. Even in bug house, you're safe. Yeah, exactly. That's rare. Um, you can't say the same for black's king here. Yeah, and I, I guess the queen just... Uh has to go back, or what do you do here? Hey, yeah. well, he's just threatening, maybe just like a check on F7 and just play E6 or just play E6. Yeah, and the problem here for white is it's not just a pawn, it's the open king. And so you can't even a coordinated defense like rook E8 because then queen F7 check wins the rook. And mm -hmm. if you bring the queen back, white continues to punch forward one step at a time. So for sure, Best play, there's a reason that eval bar says white's winning. And with that king on h2, John, it's less blunderable than it was before, right? Very yeah, safe the, for the white. The blunder factor here is very, very yep. small. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It's really hard for white. And um, okay, he plays rookie eight. Unfortunately, that was exactly the move we were worried about. Mm -hmm. walks right into queen f7 check right and this is uh yeah i guess this is made in three right oh that's right it's actually made queen f7 because... queen e8 queen f8 yeah nice little nice little pattern recognition yeah, there nice little traversal. eric sees the first check he'll probably see the second check because the rook is right in front of him and i think he's going to get the third check too Third check, and will it be mate? We'll find out. But okay, let's just take a second to appreciate Eric Armstead rebounding, right? Mm -hmm. Tough for Will. Didn't know if he was going to be stepping in today. Suddenly, he finds out he's playing a chess tournament <laughs> at the last minute. <laughs> um, and um, he's, he's pumped to be here and, uh, you know, competing in a chess tournament for charity. Gets some pretty good cash just for showing up, so that's pretty cool. But um Okay, we'll see if this is indicative of the rest of the match, though, because it, now next Will gets the white pieces, and who knows what could happen there. Yeah, and Eric's about to find the mate. You think he's going to find Queen of Fate? Absolutely. He's been playing so well. I mean, even you know these games against Larry, he yeah. he was really finding some really strong moves. I think he's going to see this. He's taking his time. 
the good thing for him is even if he doesn't, there's there's very few losing moves on the board. Okay, he doesn't see it, but anything here is is uh, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah just e making another queen is perfect. E six. Two queens are better than one. That's true. Most of the time, unless it's stalemate. <laughs> And then you just keep making, you know, caveats to that rule. <laughs> uh, but okay. Um, yeah, Will Will is uh, unfortunately not a great spot. Yeah, Larry won his match earlier, chat. So he's currently leading Group B with a with a with a head start, a full head above the rest, three points. Yeah, you know what the since I mean, okay, I think I think Eric's gonna close this one out. I hope you don't mind. One thing that was really interesting about that interview with Larry, yeah, is how just how much he expected of himself, how hard he was on himself. For instance, yeah. like uh, when he played uh, like I think this pawn f four move and he missed that, like his rook was hanging. Yeah, how sort of like hard he was on himself and just like the standard he holds himself to. It, you know, that's sort of a sign that someone is very serious about getting better at chess. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also a sign of just who he is. I mean, the guy, you know, whatever you want to call it, Hall of Fame mindset. I mean, you're right. Yeah. I mean, he could have easily been like, I won the match, right? But he literally remembered the two major things he did wrong. The mm -hmm. F4 blunder in game one and then losing on time was all he could think about. So, and he does love chess. He is very serious about his chess. And uh, everything he talked about from that was like choosing his opponents, trying to get better, right? Not just playing people that, you know, that he, that he's, uh, better than so yeah larry's dead serious about his chess improvement you can say when now you see check they look for a better move as they say yeah exactly now we're gonna get to see eric's check meeting skills yeah you, it'd be very hard to to walk into a stalemate in this one yeah it's, it's, never say it, never <laughs> if, <but> yeah <laughs> never say never Agreed. but okay now yeah Almost any check is mate. And there he goes. He finds it. Go. Queen of Fate. Very nice game from Eric Armstead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, seriously. Will's laughing. Will's having a good time. They're about to run it back for round two. I imagine we're about to see a rematch shortly. Yeah. You see Eric there? He kind of like was like, all right, I got this. I can do it. Mm -hmm. He's stretching himself out, getting ready for the, uh, the mm -hmm. comeback tour begins. He's on the comeback tour. All right, and it's game number two. And Will yep. has the white pieces. Starts with e4, best by test. That's tough. But again, you see, he's happy. He's talking, and no Berlin just yet. But Eric still. Oh, oh, Lopez. Oh my gosh! If we get a Berlin, we, we get my a Berlin. over under was a half, meaning zero Berlins. <laughs> Will we see knight f6 and see a Berlin? A lot of bragging rights on the line between me and John. No Berlin? Wait for it. Wait for Wait it. For it. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Knight f6 would be a Berlin here, everyone. It's going to happen. Any other move, and we don't have a Berlin. <laughs> it's going to happen. He's it's definitely it not through. gonna happen. It's definitely not gonna happen. I don't think. B6 makes a lot of sense. Just thinking about defending the yeah. E5 pawn. Yeah. Understandable. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, playing knight f6 requires sort of thinking about what happens if white takes your knight on c6 and if they take the pawn on e5. And it, it takes some experience, I think. Yep. Yeah. Never wanted to see a Berlin so much in my life. You never. <laughs> Didn't you also agree with me? We'd have zero Berlins or I, I also agree over. with you, but I would be so happy. I would have been so happy if we saw like eight Berlins today. Now, Eric Fienkettoing his bishop yeah. with G6. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Solid chess. Now, what, what Will should be looking to do here is open the center quickly because G6 takes an extra move to develop your bishop in a position that could become open. So not, not a bad plan from white. Typically you might even want to open the center a little faster mm -hmm. if you can there. 
It seems Will has the right idea. It's preparing D4. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. D5. That's unexpected. Yeah, that's that's risky chess right there from Eric. Although, how how would you take advantage of D5 here? I would open it up as fast as possible. Like um, takes takes rook e1 or something, or what's the yeah, takes takes and rook e1 makes sense. He might he might be going for it. And he does. Okay. Takes takes rook e1. And if e4, you can still play d3. Mm -hmm. So this is it's funny because the computer likes black, but it's <laughs> the computer is suggesting a move f6 mm -hmm. to hold the center. And no. Just no. We're not going to do that. You know what I mean? If F6 and D4, the point is the computer saying you can keep the center closed and then play things like F5, which is just crazy, man. Mm -hmm. So this is, if that's what the computer is suggesting in analysis, that's not what you should be doing as a human chess player, especially at this level. Um, and by the way, it, wait, did it happen? Wait, what's the live happen? position? Wait, what's going on in the live position? No, no, that's that's a different. Oh, game. that's we'll, the we'll yeah, back to that's the, the one board. Yeah, that was just a different. That game. that's was a cheat. Yeah, that was the game from. Yeah, that um, was a round. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But wait, wait a second. Eric did find f six. Yeah, and we did have d four. Mm -hmm. We had this. We had this whole line here. Look at this. Yeah, and we'll, it's impressive. We'll said, yeah, well said. Oh, said no. That pawn's pinned. Wow, really good stuff. Knight e7 unpins the pawn on e4 to take the knight. Now Will has to deal with the knight hanging. Mm -hmm. We'll see how he does that. This um, is such a weird game. Such a weird pawn structure. Yeah, these these guys are, uh, they, they all have like their systems I've noticed coming in, which I'll say like draw a little bit of a comparison that's different than pog champs. I, I think that some of the pog champs, you know, some streamers, of course, were like full in and, you know, never go full Sardosh. Sardosh went full in. That guy might be an international master someday. Like that guy is insane. But jokes aside, I think that, you know, you, you see more inconsistencies, I think, um, or you saw you saw many where like if they didn't have a system that they were taught by one of the streaming coaches, the openings could be really all, all over the map. I feel like these players have openings they've been playing for a long time. And um, Eric feels super confident in this Fianchetto Rui Lopez. I'm, I'm impressed by how he coordinated and stabilized the center. That was not an easy idea to find. It was the computer suggestion and he found it. Yeah. And I know the engine bar is sort of saying even, but uh, I'm really liking black's position here. Agreed. Yeah, like Agreed. white is really hurting for space. And if they don't do something soon and something precise, I think you can just sort of get steamrolled on the king side. Yeah, and this pawn is hanging on d4. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, he takes d5, which is not bad, but this is a very good center for black, like you said, and hard for white to find a plan here. Plays knight b3, though. Good move. Mm -hmm. In fact, probably the best plan here for white is some idea like infiltration on the dark squares, which is like seeing that is going to be kind of hard. I mean, you can also put a knight on this nice square and try to use your your, your two-pawn majority. But it's a, this is a very positional game. You said it's weird, John, and I agree. And now I'm going to say it's positional. This is not a lot of the type of chess you see with players at this level because you see more tactics. Um, yeah, the very positional chess right now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh... Fun Funnily enough, I think that Black should be advancing this pawn to prevent that idea of Bishop of Four here. Mm -hmm. That's Okay, he doesn't go for it. But uh, I think as soon as Black has a chance, advancing this F-pawn for an all-out kingside assault will be very problematic for White. Yeah. But, uh, you know, knight c6, 
definitely makes some sense. You're putting pressure on the D4 pawn. It asks the question, well, Will, do you want to move your knight right back to where it came from? If you play bishop e3, you're getting hit by f4. Yep. Yeah. Knight, knight c6 uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, this is tough. Um, in fact, it's hard to find a move that isn't defending the pawn with a move like knight b3. You definitely don't want to play bishop e3 and walk into f4. Maybe an idea is to play knight e2 to defend and also try to fight against f4. Oh, I like to that. To renew this idea of bishop f4. I like that idea. Oh, no. Oh, he walks into but bishop now this runs into f4. f4. This, oh, man. It's, it was yeah, such an easy mistake to make. You could see it coming. Mm -hmm. it, it's a hard thing. Probably really the best best move was like a best defense is a good offense thing, like trying to go for like a d5 pawn or something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. But, uh, okay, he plays bishop e3, and will Eric find f4? Is the question. I I'm nervous about what do you this. Think? Any plays he does, it. he does find right. it. Great move from Eric. <laughs> Speaking of Eric with an A, we've got Eric with an yeah. E in chat. Also look at just we got a CEO, front row view. What? Look at that couch of Eric's. It does look really comfortable. You're right. Yeah, the couch behind Eric. Yeah, now that he's couch. gone, you really get a full view. Everyone just take a look at that couch because I could, yeah. again. And the I, plant. Oh. Like, look at the couch, look at the plant, and look at the way that, like, those pictures are, like, aligned very aligned. nicely. Like, Seriously. Yeah, that's a, that's a well-organized house there. That's a nice looking Very well-organized. I don't know if Eric just ran to the bathroom or what he did. Um, he was, I think he was just, like, perhaps leaning to the... Oh, he's side there. Side. He's just leaning over. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Which is fine with us. Eric, could you lean back so we could talk about the couch again? <laughs> that couch. Um, all right. Bishop back to D2. An unfortunate uh, reality that faces Will Davis. Mm -hmm. And now both both the D4 pawn are hanging and Black could probably just punch F3 through. So yeah. uh, Eric captures D4 first but here comes f3 and the king side is going to fall apart good question chat with the tiebreaker if every match is tied is actually the average cap score throughout all the matches avoiding uh the idea of adding multiple hours onto the show and having these guys throw down in multiple versions of blitz tiebreakers if somehow some way we have a tie in the standings the average cap score through all the games played will um will decide who moves on so knight takes d4 i i don't think we have eric's video ready and i don't even know that it was eric i didn't think it was eric it was someone else so we'll talk about that later everyone can can wonder why and who we didn't invite to this event as far as nfl players go a little teaser um but okay back to this position knight takes d4 by eric armstead spelled with an a not an e by the way, A with an E, Eric with an A versus an E. Comments on that? Me? What's going on? <laughs> Comments know. from me? I was talking to different Eric's at different times. I lost track of where I was. I see. I like the A. I like the A. Yeah, it's actually a cool oh. spelling. I agree. Also, Eric I got to say, Will is kind of like covering it up, but I also like where Will's playing from. He's got some nice looking like design in the background he has some nice like like a nice boss behind him i don't know if you yeah. saw that yeah. yeah yeah nice blue yeah back there nice. right now he's wishing his position was as nice as the vase the vase behind him um yes. it's a very tough spot it's funny because i think it's a little more you know dynamic than the eval bar would tell us right black is certainly in great control but if Eric doesn't, I just want to paint the picture. If if Eric doesn't find F3, if Eric doesn't play aggressive on the king side, this position is also very open for black. And so if there's a world where somehow white breaks things open or that D5 pawn falls, you know, at That's this true. level, I'm just pointing out, like, this is not an yeah. over game. The tactics here could potentially go the other way at some point. Yeah. The one nice thing in Eric's advantage, in like Eric's favor, 
is it kind of looks like to me there's just like a bunch of ways for it. Like it looks like F3 is probably good. Maybe yeah. even bishop takes h3 right away could be good. Mm. Queen g5 is probably good. Queen h4 is probably good. So there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to go right, which is which is good. But yeah, if you if you do nothing, if you don't do something aggressive, you're absolutely right. The tables could definitely turn quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Agreed. In fact, every move you just listed, I'm like, wow, this is actually really hard for black to mess up. <laughs> queen G, queen G5, queen H4, even bishop takes H3 was a nice find. That could really, and F3 oh, is and the F3. most logical yeah. way forward. Yeah. The moment this pawn falls, so does the rest of the king's house. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Okay, well, Eric has rebounded at this point. If he wins this match, he would also move to a perfect score of three, meaning he won a match clearly, so he'll have three points mm -hmm. lining up with uh, with Larry Fitzgerald. So it'll come down to what happens between Will Davis and Larry Fitzgerald in the next uh, the next matchup to decide who plays in the winner's bracket tomorrow. So this game isn't over yet, but should Eric convert this game, uh, it'll it'll uh, it'll be Larry Fitzgerald versus Will Davis next. So don't go anywhere. We mm -hmm. still have another match with the Hall of Fame Larry, Hall of Famer Larry Fitzgerald right after this. Yeah, and also I I like this move Bishop E three. It's giving yeah, I do too. Black the the option to go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you play uh, sort of. Yeah, like the, if you take G two. Yeah, exactly. Here comes a piece. Yeah. And. If, if you don't take g2 even if you move the knight that's kind of what i was saying is like the d5 pawn could fall like if you make some mm -hmm. silly moves and at some point white starts yeah. rebounding like this position is very quickly look at that right it's one mm -hmm. of those deceptive positions where yes with accurate play black should win this game and blow open white's king side but how do you deal with the knight behind it is the d5 pawn mm -hmm. in fact it's actually not so simple at all and there you go, just like that. Oh wow! The game is completely right. I mean, this was, yeah, this was not over at all. In fact, we're gonna back up and show exactly what Black's win was in that position because. Hold on, I, let me let me see what the let me try to guess the win before. Okay, what I'll give you a win? few seconds. Bring up the live board there just right, to show uh, it. what was the win. Okay, what's the win? Um, does Queen H four work? So he has taken on D four, but no, the win. I, what was I the want win? to catch up. The win was Bishop, Bishop H3. H3. Gotcha. And then Queen H4 with mating ideas. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was not easy to see. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so... Yeah, not easy just, at all. Yeah, Bishop E3 was a really good defense. Yeah. It just shows everybody. I saw someone in chat saying, I don't believe the engine or like AI. That's Nothing could be further from the truth. I think that I actually really appreciate what the eval bar has added to the full information we have for commentary. Plus it's dramatic when the eval bar swings and you know, I love a good heart attack. I do, yeah. but I, but I'm always adding context to the point. The point is not mm -hmm. that I disagree. The point is you look at this position and it says that black is totally winning, but the only like knockout was Bishop takes H3. Mm -hmm. And like probably nobody in chat saw that. I didn't see it. It's not yeah. simple. And, and mm -hmm. we showed any logical move and suddenly like white was right back in it. So it just shows that, while the while the information is true without context you don't appreciate one how complicated and how awesome chess is like yeah yeah absolutely and also i think this is especially a tendency for players who like you know club players who are getting stronger yep they understand the engine eval this idea that like you know not all zero zero zeros are equal and not yep. all like plus two plus three plus four are sort of like easy conversions you know it's uh, yep. yeah everything's easy when you're a computer yeah everything's easy when you're a computer or if you're a, a chat armchair armchair chess engine <laughs> like uh when you played in the league there were lots of armchair quarterbacks you know yeah well at least and like when you are. have armchair quarterbacks they like they don't know what they're talking about at all like when you're a chess player like there's something powerful and like you know the answer and the world's right. like top players don't it's true like yep. It's a weird, like, asymmetry of information. Yep. Like, never in a football game, like, sure, someone sends me a message and says, oh, man, 
John really messed up that game. No one's going to be like, oh man, John messed up on that inside zone. He was supposed to do this, but instead he like made a wrong, <laughs> right, right. Made a wrong idea or something. Like no one's going to say that to me. Well, and plus even that would be hardly fair at times because they might even not know like the offensive scheme. Maybe you were supposed yeah, yeah. to push him out versus in, right? You don't know. Maybe someone else dropped the ball, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's it, of course, of course it's totally true. Um, And I think, and it, it doesn't mean Black wasn't winning, but we were saying like that position was flimsy and Will found a really nice move, Bishop E3, and this isn't over. People are already anointing like, oh, like, you know, Will's going to get rolled here. He's crushing in this position now. Now, this is a position where plus four is very real. And did he play 96 oh, I, to win the queen? I like if, that move. If he played he 96 to win the queen. He did. He did. He did. Will, take See, it. Is he take taking it? Oh, he did. Oh, man. Will Davis showing up here, filling in for Micah Parsons and bringing it. I like it. What a turnaround here. But again, this game was never simple, even though Eric's position was getting, you know, getting very aggressive. That's the risk of advancing pawns around your king is there's always tactics that can go wrong on these diagonals. And here we see Will Davis getting a piece, getting a pawn, and then getting a queen at the end of a discovered check with that knight combo. So, But the game is not over. Will is a little down on time. It's still complicated. Let's see. Let's see how he converts. Can, Queen e5, I like. Can you say tie breaks, John? Yeah, I'm ready for tie breaks. You ready for a blitz tiebreaker? How's Queen Will's e5, blitz? I like, and knight e4 is coming. I, I like this. Knight e4. If he sees knight e4, Will he's gonna do Davis. It. He's going to play it. He's going to play it? He's going to play it. Knight e4. If he sees 94, Will Davis might even be someone I see winning the tiebreaker here. This was not as one side of a, of a match as we thought this was here. 94 not only threatens the rook. Okay, oh, yeah, he plays rookie brings, four. Yeah, but also the rook coming to c7. Yeah, but rookie yeah. four is also good, yeah. Rookie four also good. 94 was basically lights out, but rookie four still winning for Will Davis. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, Rook F8, like you said, it's yeah. not over yet for Eric. A blunder from Will. What would be a blunder? Probably letting the pin go. If the queen goes like pawn chasing or something, right? Yeah. You know, you go over here and you go for a pawn and you let these rooks loose. Yeah. And now it's getting, you know, it's not as easy. I mean, it looks like, yeah, yeah it's not so easy. Yeah, this is... Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah, we could have our second blitz tiebreaker of the day. Will Davis wins this. We will have a three minute plus five second tiebreaker, everyone. Um, and uh, to decide who wins this match. So mm-hmm. it just takes the pawn. That's reasonable. Calm. That's fine. Nice and calm. Yep. Keep calm. Carry on. Yeah, but but Will does need to be careful. Okay, moves the king to h8, but this does not break the pin. Yep. Uh, okay, Will needs to be careful here. I mean, you might want to defend your f pawn, but like rook c2 might run into bishop f5. Dude, he oh, finds I, rook f4. I like it. I was I was highlighting it, and he finds it right as Grandmaster Robert Hess shows up in chat cheering for his boy, Will Davis. Okay, at this point, it's getting really hard to lose if you're white. But if he finds 94, then we can say we're going to tiebreakers and everyone needs Mm -hmm. to buckle up, grab your popcorn. I could go for I could go for some popcorn later. Popcorn sounds great. Yeah, I won't eat on the show. I won't cross that line of unprofessionalism. But oh, I look at that. 94 94 is on the board. Will Davis. Let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited. Oh, and Will, you see that? Will sort of like grabs the hat. Make sure it's nice. Bishop D five. That's a nice little. That's a yeah. That's tricky. Nice little fancy move, actually. Yeah. Actually, that's kind of irritating, right? Nice. If if okay, Rook C seven check would be using all. Of, oh, and he finds it. Look at him reading chess books by his coach John Urschel, using all his pieces. Very nice move, Will Davis. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Good, Will Davis. 
<laughs> that one I got. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I'm one for three. I'm one for three. Oh, man. Yeah. Rook yeah, C7 check. Yeah, it's not over yet, but uh, but I have faith. Eric looking a little a little frustrated there. Yeah, he's looking frustrated, but uh, yeah. also this is mildly reminiscent of the Larry game because they're both low on time. Yeah. Will, we don't know how much experience he has with fast time controls. We don't know how use how sort of how much he's used to sort of having to keep an eye on his clock. Yep. It's not it's not over. By the but way, this move I like. He takes the bishop takes with, with check. check. No, it's like it's that this game was like momentum here, and as soon as he won the piece, it was like mm -hmm. I don't think he's made a single mistake. I mean, okay, he had nine, that knight takes e four instead of rook e four, but I mean, seriously, this has been perfect chess for Will. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. I love I love blitz tiebreakers. The only thing that's concerning me is his clock. Yeah, but he's moves away from mate. Yeah, that's true. And and no real chance of stalemate with that a pawn. So. By the way, Chad is also keeping track of your uh, pop culture. You've got one more than Danya so far, so you're doing great. It's actually batting significantly higher than Danya, so that's just I fantastic. That. I'll throw okay, you a couple and... softballs next. All right, I'm ready. Check. And he finds me in one. Will we Davis. We're going to tie breaks. We're going to tie breaks, boys and girls. We're going to – and a fancy checkmate to end it. I agree. Good call, right? chat. That is a fancy checkmate. That's a was that? That's an Arabian mate, right? Knight and rook, doing work. Anastasia's mate or Arabian mate? I'm an international master. I should know this. Oh, I have no clue. It's either Anastasia's or Arabian. First one in chat to tell me gets a diamond membership. Um. Anyway, good to know your mating patterns. Whether you remember which Russian princess they were named after is not a big deal. But if it's Anastasia or an Arabian mate, I don't know. But you should know your checkmate pattern. Stockfish Davis says chat. I love that. <laughs> All right, Danny, I got a question for you. Who had the yeah. higher caps? What do you think? Which uh, the team is running it right now. If I had to yeah, guess, so you're asking prediction. me not to cheat. Um, yeah, don't cheat. No cheating. Um, I'm looking at featured chat as chat comes in. I will make my guess of uh, chat. So the overtime works like this first person to win goes so it's kind of like kind of like nfl overtime uh but it's going to be a blitz match meaning they'll get three minutes plus a five second increment and whoever had the more accurate games of the two by average will get white in the in the tiebreaker if we have a draw in that tiebreaker game we will play another tiebreaker game with the other person getting white so essentially if uh if the person playing black hold serve then they get to have a chance with the white pieces next so out there um yeah. kind of if i had to guess the caps then, john uh, yeah yeah who, who yeah i think that was the one yeah. so, i think well, the queen move it was just kind of necessary i guess but that's the one that you know i was just like all right well we're catching up a little bit a little bit but once i knew i got that one i said yeah it's gonna be tough to come back up to that yeah i was yeah i was uh, i definitely i definitely from i definitely from that. oh yeah with the queen i mean it didn't seem like it but it was definitely like you know Unnecessary, but definitely when you didn't see the fork, I knew like, yeah, they ain't gonna come back from that. Uh, once I moved that knight over there, I was like, yeah, take the queen out. We gonna do some work. But now nah, that was Love dope it. though. I just gotta get better with black. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, on um, black man, moving that pawn up to where I was thinking I had your bishop and the queen. Um, but I had, you know, you had plenty of people protecting the spot, and that's why I didn't really calculate that, and that was kind of a waste. Um, he just took it with the knight, but yeah, I was just like, dang. After that, just you know, once you're in scramble mode, so that's, that's a tough place to be in. Tough place to be in. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I know that hurt. <laughs> by, one, by the way, right when that one happened, that's when I kind of said. Going right now is Amari Cooper. We're still following the route runner. This game that just started is Amari <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah, I didn't think it was their game. Chat, that's hilarious. Killing, gotcha. This is Amari's game. That is so funny. I was sitting here like, what's going on? It's the Blitz game yeah. started, but it's Amari Cooper playing Blitz. He's logged back in, and he's still playing Blitz today. That's hilarious. Uh, we, will, we will unfollow Amari Cooper in a moment, but that was awesome. 
Today's All right. Not, today's not my day. Book Are you guys ready? <laughs> Amari, Amari, Three still uh, playing this game. <laughs> Will, we can go back to listening in to uh, to Will and and Eric if we want. But I would that was hilarious. Shout out to Amari Cooper. Yeah, I Never like Amari's position. Chessing. He's got good control of the D five square. Let's see. Great. So Will does get white in the first game. Um, and they are underway. We've now got that game pulled up. Oh, it's a repeat. Same position. Shout out to Amari Cooper for, for ruining our board capture because he's a chess addict. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, okay. I was right, by the way. Will Davis. Can I get yeah. credit for that? He was the yeah. more accurate player. Yeah, you're right. By by point one. Oh, wow. Okay, by point one. I wasn't that right, I guess. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're repeating. Dude. They're... Yeah. This was this is what and I said he should have played in D four. Yeah, what yeah. an improvement by Will Davis. Yeah, yeah. He sees it. That's amazing. If we want to analyze that real quick, yeah. In game one, Will had the same position and he played the move C three here instead. Sorry, not B three. He played C three, which was slow. And really the best idea is to play D four. And it's because of what you can kind of see on the live position there. The position is opening up very quickly on that on that board right below me and John, and it's already better for Will. Because when your opponent wastes an extra move out of the opening, when they could have just developed right away, often the first instinct should be, can I take advantage of this lack of development? And Will, who we know didn't listen to the show, he didn't have time, improves on his previous play, John, and is already in a much better spot. He's one upon out of the opening. Yeah, and here Will can just yeah Will can just castle this pawn on e4 is not hanging because of the threat of rook e1, and yeah this is looking so far so good for Will. Graceful rooster in chat says Will Davis rapid learner. Seriously, knight f6, okay. Remember that after this matchup, regardless of the result, Will Davis will throw down versus Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, mm -hmm. But will he be will he be playing with house money? Because if Will Davis beats Eric, I I um I don't know what happens there. But Will might have already punched his ticket to the winners bracket. If, if Eric... uh, yeah, if Will beats uh, Eric, Will's in because Eric would have less points because he has zero points from last round, right? Well, he gets one for losing in a tiebreaker. Um, but yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah you're but right. last round wasn't a tiebreaker. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Will Davis, rapid learner. I saw you, Graceful Rooster, and that was super impressive. Yeah. I mean, play D4. If Will wins this match, then he eliminates Eric's chances for the winners bracket. So a lot on the line here for Eric Armstead to keep his his top cash prizes for charity alive. Will is still up a pawn. This position's getting tactical. Yep. Will has to be careful. Move. Yeah, no, that's a great move. Hitting the knight. If the knight moves, you you have pressure on the pawn. You can't take it, but there is pressure. Yeah. What do you what do you play? Hmm. Yeah, this is not an easy position for Eric. I was looking at maybe queen d6. What's the best idea here? Bishop f5 is a good move. It blocks the queen's attack. Um, I mean... And what do you do after g4? For, I was going to say, well, I could go for g4, but that's... It's a very risky business. Um, open up your king like that. You know? You don't just suggest moves like that casually, John. Well, yeah. Well, also, it's it's getting really tricky. G4, maybe there's like bishop e4. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm just saying nonsense. I don't know. Simple chess would be just knight c3. Ooh, he takes c6. He's getting greedy with the pawn. I think your bishop e4 move now makes a lot of sense. But, oh, man, rook e8. He wants the back rank, which I, I respect it. I respect the back rank mate very much. Will's going to see it. He's got to develop, and he's fine. Mm -hmm. 
whether you take on e8 or not, you just got to develop your knight. You got to get that piece out. Both players under two minutes here, chat. This is much more drama than the than the slow 10-5 rapid game. We're already in time pressure here. Mm -hmm. Will Davis. Will's taking his time. 97 check. Nice move. If you take, you win the rook. Oh my lord. Dude, he's seeing tactics. Will Davis. And if just like king h8 what's the idea oh it's actually maybe a bad idea. king h8 i think you have to go back to developing with the knight actually um worst thing you could do is play knight takes yeah, yeah exactly that's what i'm terrified of and I'm get terrified back of knight check <laughs> and he played don't king take f5 so i really hope will sees knight c3 do not take on f5 he's do not he's, take on f5 he was smiling do not take on f5 I think Eric sees it. He's leaning up with a little no. bit of a prayer hand position. Send, <laughs> no. him, send him one up to the big man. Like, hey, make a There we go. Oh, my Lord. Well. Don't scare me like that. That was pretty funny. Don't scare me like that. Oh, man. Dude, Eric's tricky. He, like, he likes to lay, like, little threats left and right. I've noticed this. Now he saves his rook. Very yeah, so nice. now the knight's hanging, right? And Will is about to get under a minute. This is uh, yeah. this is going to be spicy, everybody. <laughs> Chat's getting active. Chat's getting active. We're all nervous here. We're all nervous. But uh, Bishop takes. Uh oh, oh. I, I don't like that move for for Will. I know it. Okay. Okay, he followed it up with exactly what you should do, but I was worried about giving up the dark square bishop, but he's all over mm -hmm. it. Yeah. This looks... 57 seconds. Yeah, these, these two bishops are stressing me out. I just want to take on f6 and take yeah. on f5. He takes f5 first. First bishop gone. And objectively, he should probably just take with the queen next and, and not right. take the bishop. But I think either way is safe for white because you've got this big advantage over here. And sometimes the easiest thing is to just trade pieces and and then use your use your extra pawn advantage that you have. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, takes him on with check first. Interesting. Okay. Now you got to take back on f5. Ooh. No, okay. Wait. Just take the bishop. Take the bishop with the knight. You got to do it. I feel like you said Eric is tricky, and I agree with you. I feel like he's just thinking of some sort of trick here. Yeah. The good news is the queen no longer covers h2. Like, back rank things have disappeared. Will is up a piece. Okay, takes a five now. Maybe something like queen c3 could really... Or yeah, actually queen h5 might just... Oh, and he plays it. Wow. Who is Will Davis and what is this horse that he has rode in on? Fill in there it in the last go. second. <laughs> Dude might be punching his ticket to the winner's yes. bracket in just moments. Amazing. Yeah. There we go. He's going to do it. Queen c2. He's going to do it. Queen takes h7. And Will Davis. Is in the Look winner's bracket. With that victory. Oh Look my gosh. That. What a comeback. What a comeback. I mean, that was like. No, that all, was a, epic. Yeah. What a, what a show up, right? Yeah. Did, did you think that was going to happen after the first game? I definitely did not see that coming. Back I didn't see that wins coming well. the, the first game was one-sided as all giddy up, right? Eric looked mm -hmm. like he was rebounding from the loss to Larry for sure. The yeah. second game was also going Eric's way. Mm -hmm. And then the wheels came off. 
and with it it became will davis's match and now with that victory we still have the match versus larry because they're playing for who wins the group a and there's other things at stake of course but first you can't win if you don't show up as they say right the first step is showing up and will davis shows up and and mm -hmm. wow yeah um I, I can't believe it well we 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 take a look at the group b results here and as we see it uh eric does get a point for losing in the overtime um mm -hmm. so he's on the board but unfortunately because both of his matches are in the books we uh we already know that both larry and will davis last minute fill in for micah parsons is dancing in the winner's bracket on sunday great stuff for him um yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to just like, uh, just be so proud of your boy after this? I know you're already, you're probably already going to text him and be like, Hey man, this is amazing. Right. Good for Will Davis. Yeah, absolutely. I'm incredibly excited. Really glad to see that he's going to be in the uh, championship bracket tomorrow. I'm definitely pulling for Will. Like this is, uh, yeah. I mean, Will's my boy. I'm just really glad to see that come back. I'm definitely going to shoot him a little text. Yeah. after our break and uh yeah i just know how much he loves chess and i know he's definitely excited to be a part of bliss champs so well and he really is i'll just say that we had we had a few kind of last minute people interested in the event and we ended up kind of keeping it small for those who don't know and then we had a couple players drop out mm -hmm. long story short this is awesome no matter what and will was ready to, ready to roll if we needed him and then he literally showed up when when we had a conflict and shout out to will sometimes that's a fun storyline scripted as the kids would say right? Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's not scripted. Will Davis shows up, plays with it. By the way, can we also just say that his blitz was really impressive there, playing so fast. And so I keep asking mm -hmm. you if you've like done more training than recommending books and you keep saying no, but really no. impressive there. Yeah, I'm, we, we're going to have to ask him what he's been doing because yeah, that was really impressive. Okay. Well, um, with, with Will stepping in um and getting that match we we know that eric will have a uh, a consolation matchup versus cave on thibodeau tomorrow um but we um his uh his his blitz champs is not over despite that loss so that's uh good to know and uh cave on cave on versus eric play a little uh play a little match predictor there john what do you think cave on versus eric I think that's uh, I think that's not a very difficult one. I I think Eric has shown us a lot of strong chess. Uh, he's shown us that he's quite tricky, and uh, I think his experience is going to pay off. Yeah, I, so. I, I agree. I think I think Eric is also the favorite. We'll bring mm -hmm. up his bio and remind everybody of. Uh, who Eric is, I believe we're going to be catching up with him soon. And and Eric um, is di did seem like he was better than these matches went today, right? Is that fair? Yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah, we both absolutely. felt that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I would also agree he's the favorite against Kayvon. I, I don't know if it's a foregone conclusion because I think that Kayvon started to play better with every game as it went, and and was kind of like aware of of you know just how tough the matchups were. So we'll see what kind of you know focus he can bring in that morning matchup, but I agree that Eric would be the favorite in tomorrow's matchup versus Kayvon Thibodeau for sure. So mm -hmm. speaking of um, Mr. Mr. Armstead, I believe we now have the man with us. Eric, uh, first of all, thank you so much for playing Blitz Champs. This has been awesome. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, know, I know these matches didn't quite go your way, but are you, are you having, having a good time and enjoying the chess there? And uh, your thoughts on, on how things have, have uh, gone today? Uh, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Um, first time playing like competitively, really. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was cool to, um, you know, see the competition. Uh, guys are, you know, obviously very, very good. Um, but it was fun, you know, fun to compete against them. I heard you, uh, I heard you had a lesson from Benjamin Bach earlier this week. Yeah, how was that? I'm curious. What like uh, what did you learn? What was your biggest takeaway? How did that go? Um, it was it was good. Um, it was one lesson, so it was a lot of like information overload. So trying to uh, trying to um, you know, use it in game situations, uh, you know, effectively. Um, you know, probably need to talk through it a little more, but 
Um, it was a great, great lesson. He's very, uh, very intelligent. It taught me a lot of things. Um, some of the things I try to implement and, um, you know, definitely look forward to continue to uh, connect with him in the future. Gotcha. Was that your first lesson with the Grandmaster? Yeah, that was my first lesson, chess lesson ever. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive, man. And you, you said it's your first tournament, but not totally true. We did our research. You actually won the inaugural and only 49ers chess tournament. How mm -hmm. was that experience, right? How, how many, first of all, how many guys were in the tournament? How many guys play chess in the, in the 49ers clubhouse? And, and how did that tournament go with you uh, going on to win it? Yeah, it was, it was like 15 of us, um, guys who play. We play in the locker room, like in our downtime. And uh, so we just decided to, you know, come up with like a round robin kind of tournament. And uh, we got some pretty good players, but, you know, I was able to win that. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of fun. And, and we have a board in, the, uh, in there. So, um, you know, playing live in, in action uh, with a little bit of a crowd can be a lot of fun too. So it's awesome. Yeah. You, uh, who's, the, who's the best other player on the Niners team besides yourself since you won the tournament? Um, got some pretty good guys. Um, Josh Hoke is pretty good. Um, we had another guy who's no longer on our team. Um, he is pretty good. Um, so we got a little bit of comp. Lincoln Thompson's pretty good. He's on the Jets now. Um, so we got some comp. We got to get a new group of, of guys for this year, though. For sure. Okay. Get it going again. Gotcha. So you're playing Kayvon tomorrow. Have you, uh, I know you both are, you know, you're both Oregon guys. Have you ever played with him before? You ever played chess? And yeah, if so, I, like, how I did played, it go? I played against him probably like six times, okay. maybe. Um, yeah, the cool thing about that, the app is you can always go and see your record. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played against uh, Thibodeau about six times. Okay, what's your what's the record? Uh, let me check. <laughs> Real All time. Right, let's see. We're getting a preview for tomorrow. A little preview for tomorrow. Oh. Um, well, while you check on that, Eric, to shift away a little bit from. Uh, are we are we going to start asking couch questions or what? <laughs> well, we're not gonna we're not gonna ask couch. Oh, by the way, how comfy is the couch behind yeah, you? Yeah, we've been talking about couch? your couch and like this beautiful plant in the background. How Two is that? Minutes now. Oh, this right here. Yeah, this this is my wife's office. I act like these uh, diplomas are mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my wife's office. Yes, yeah, so this way. So what, is, what does your wife do? Uh, she's a doctor, a psychiatrist. So um, this is her office that I I use and try to act like you know it's mine. Now I understand why, like, because I was remarking the whole time how nice it was. <laughs> yeah, it all yeah, makes sense now. She keeps it pretty nice. Um, I, I swear we play more. I think I may have played on, him on my other account, but on uh, this account, we're one and one. So should be. See what's up. Well, shift away a little bit from the uh, the chess and the couch, which is great to know. Um, it, the uh, talk, talk a little bit about the Niners. We had a, a, lot of, a lot of fans earlier in chat rooting for you, Niners fans. And a couple of years ago, you guys were in the, in the Super Bowl versus the Chiefs. How are you feeling about the Niners this year? Um, I'm feeling great about it. Uh, I think we have a young, hungry, uh, talented team. Um, you know, we're, we've been in striking distance a couple times over these past years. Um, and, you know, just want to get over that hump and, uh, you know, win a ring. So I'm excited, ready to get going. Are we going to see you lead again in, uh, uh, like you did in 2019? Uh, hopefully, you know, you never know, you know, I'm surrounded by a bunch of talented players. Anybody can pop off at any time. Um, yeah. you know, I led the team in sacks that year, but, um, you know, we have so many, so many guys who can, uh, you know, get after the quarterback that, you know, you never know. And we all love playing, you know, with each other and, and for one another. So we're all happy for each other's success. So, um, you know, we do everything as, uh, as a unit. So I'm excited to get back with those guys and get going. Will, will you take it easy on Kyler then for me? Just when you play the Cardinals? Just No, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that. Yeah, Got to get after him. He's a little he's a little squirrel out there running around. It's hard to catch. So Yeah. Well, man, um, 
again thank you so much for for doing this anyway and for being here this is great we know you got a match tomorrow versus cave on and, and we can't wait to see what happens there uh talk a little bit about the uh the charity you're playing for it's your charity the armstead academic project and, and tell us what it means to you and, and kind of how that came about um armstead academic project i started in 2019 um and we're all about education equity um i saw disparities in our country, in our education system, and I didn't feel it was fair that your zip code decided the type of education you receive. So um, we work with uh, low income and disadvantaged students to provide um, educational opportunities, um, whether that's uh, in school, um, and we started an after school program um, in which we provide STEM for students, uh, we provide uh, tutoring and homework help uh, we do college tours, we do mentorship, uh, we do job shadowing and um, kind of career days. Um, so just exposing them to new things um, and exposing them to things that they could, you know, uh, build a future in. So that's what I'm passionate about doing. That's what I love doing. It's epic. Epic, man. Well, awesome. This is uh, this has been great. And both those matches, uh, just so you know, before you got here, John and I were sitting here commenting that it really felt like you were playing great chess there. I know those matches didn't go your way, but we're super pumped to see what happens tomorrow with you and Kayvon. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, uh, I played all right. Definitely made some some mistakes. Um, of course, you know, I'm going to keep being better. And, uh, you know, I love, love playing. So I'm going to keep working at it, keep being better and, uh, you know, keep competing. I'm going I'm to I'm challenge all these dudes in daily games now. <laughs> Great, man. Well, can't wait. Good luck. We'll see you tomorrow uh, on the earlier part of the day with Kayvon, and uh, best of luck to you there, man. All right. Appreciate you guys. All right. That was uh, Eric Armstead. That was awesome. Great interview. He really did play well today. And uh, before we dive back into today and the rest of Blitz Champs, I want to remind everybody that only five weeks remain in the Chess.com Rapid Chess Championship before the finals begin at the end of August. Pretty pumped for that 16 player knockout with 150K at the end of August, but who's gonna finish there? We've got Hikaru Nakamura, Jan Napomnishi, Norderbeck Abdusaturov, so many great players competing, Wesley So. They're, uh, they're on the out, Wesley So and many others are actually on the outside looking in right now. So tune in to the RCC to see who's gonna make the cut because only 12 players will qualify uh, before four wildcard invites for the RCC finals. It's every Saturday and Sunday, and it's 9 a.m. Pacific on those days. So tune into the RCC. We will see you watching there. We're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, it's the last matchup of the day. It's Will Davis versus Larry Fitzgerald. It's more of Chess.com's Blitz Champs when we return.
Did you know you can watch top chess events right on your phone? You don't even need to download an app. Just open any mobile browser and head to chess.com slash events. You can see what's happening right now, check out top games, see results, and so much more. Try it for yourself at chess.com slash events. Welcome back to Blitz Champs. Will Davis and Larry Fitzgerald. They've been 
jabbering away. They're getting ready for our final match of the day as we close out Group B. This has been epic. It's been awesome. It's been fun. Uh, here with me, John Urschel, mathematician, NFL lineman, retired, no longer NFL lineman, um, and uh, All-American at Penn State. The list goes on. He's currently a Harvard Junior Fellow. John, has this day delivered for you? I mean, what has been your biggest takeaways day one here at Bliss Champs before our final match? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We've seen we've seen a lot of high-level chess, I got to say. You know, coming into t- today, I wasn't expecting to see what really looks like very strong chess players putting on yep. great performances. I mean, you know, looking back from uh, from Group A, we saw some really strong games. Uh, Group B, Eric's games against Larry, Will's games against Eric. This has been this has been yeah. interesting chess. I think these guys would be favorites in Pog Champs. Um, but let's talk about. You mentioned Group A. That was Notre Day. We're right now in Group B. We're about to wrap that up. Let's bring up the results uh, and talk a little bit about what's at stake because obviously both Larry and Will Davis will be playing on Sunday in the winners bracket. But what they're playing for is who they're competing against. The winner of this match will play Cheeto. The loser of the match will play Amari Cooper. I would argue that's almost a toss-up of who you want to play, right? I mean, you and I both said Cheeto looks really impressive. Amari Cooper obviously beat him in a blitz tiebreaker, which tells you how close that matchup was. If you yeah, but that, that matchup was was neck and neck. I mean, yeah. yeah, it went, you know, it could have gone either way. And in some sense, it's not clear who you would rather play against, actually. Agreed, agreed. Well, I think the players are going to play to win no matter what. And let's talk about one of those guys who, speaking of playing to win, I joked, you have to show up first. That's the first step. Will Davis got a call if you just got here. Literally like a half an hour uh, after we knew that uh, Micah Parsons had unfortunately had a conflict. Mm -hmm. And Will Davis accepts the call. Like we sent out the bat signal, right? The Will Davis (laughs) bat signal. He's like, I'll be there. Will Davis accepts the call, shows up beats Eric Armstead in a blitz overtime tiebreaker, and now he's playing Larry Fitzgerald. What can you say about Will Davis? So Will and I, we played together in Baltimore, and he's just a great teammate, all-around great guy, loves chess, and uh, just loves getting better. And, you know, you can even see, you know, you can see it on his face right now. He's just a happy guy, really kind person, and, uh, you know, he just likes having fun. And I think... It seems like he's having a lot of fun today. Well, he's about to have even more fun. This game against Larry Fitzgerald should be starting here momentarily as we uh, we get set for. They look like they're zoned in. I don't don't quite have that that game up. Make sure that we're following the players. And uh, and all right, we've we've got Larry Fitzgerald, the Hall of Famer. Playing Will Davis, the uh, who knows? Does it this become a storyline that he got a phone call and ends up coming here and uh, showing up and winning the whole thing? We're gonna find out. I mean, that would be pretty impressive. I, I would probably say Will is an underdog against both Cheeto and Amari, regardless of what happens here with Larry. Would you agree with that, John? Initially, I would have agreed with that from the first game, but these last two games have actually been quite impressive. It's uh. It's not as obvious to me as I thought it was. Like okay. looking, like looking at the blitz game. Will played that incredibly well. I'm hard pressed to think of moments in that blitz game where I would have done something differently, or where I think like, oh, he had a stronger move. I think he played quite well. I agree. No, that was super impressive. Um, the uh, borderline. Borderline perfect game for, especially for that level and what was at stake there. So um, we're uh, waiting to get the game started here. Not sure if the uh, the game is underway yet. We're okay. We're we're working on it. We're working on it, everybody. So Will's reconnecting himself to the server. That's okay. It happens. It happens from time to time. Not our first Pog Champs rodeo, but uh, anyway, as he gets himself connected and this next game will begin, um, I, I agree. I mean, I think that I think that Eric was not as strong of a player as Larry. At least that's how that match went. And I still feel like the level of chess that Cheeto and Amari were playing, I mean, only one of them won that match. But to me, that was like, 
it was 1700 that was that was high level chess mm -hmm. and so it's it's uh, hard for me to not see either of those guys at the favorite even over my boy larry at this point you know but we'll see what happens for sure yeah um, i kind of i want to get this match under our belt just so i can get one more data point on both of them. yeah from will and larry yeah 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 so I i'm going to reserve ask me at the end and i'll give you okay. some predictions because Right now, I'm not uh, I'm not fully sure like what I should be expecting out of Will. All right. Well, while we wait to get this matchup set, we keep talking about Group A, and we've been mentioning. Uh... Okay, so yeah, the game so... is started. I was just about to mention the Group A results because we were talking about Amari and Cheeto, but let's dive in here because the game is started. We mm -hmm. have lift off, as they say, and we have and E4 again from Larry Fitzgerald. Another chance for Berlin. Another chance. Another chance for another Larry. chance. Another time Larry's gonna play Bishop C4 because <laughs> he's an Italian player, not a Lopez player. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, he's thinking. He's thinking. Oh. He's just double checking, double checking yeah, his yeah. old theory, you know, his old toolbox. But no, Larry, Larry loves himself the uh the Bishop C4. Let's see. Italian. Um and Will goes for H6. Okay. Preventing the fried liver, classic. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. H six could be uh could be a really good move to sort of get a fresh position, avoid any potential opening traps. H six stops knight g five. For those who don't know, the main point yeah. is that when the bishop is on this diagonal, there's always threats of knight g five, and the fried liver itself is actually you know not necessarily a deadly weapon, but if you don't know what to do against it, it can win games in, in a hurry because F7 is the weakest square on the board due to the fact that it's only protected by the king. So H6, not a bad approach from Will, very defensive-minded, and now he's developing his pieces. Bishop B4, Bishop D2. Yeah, seems like just great, solid chess. Good I solid mean, for, chess from both yeah. sides. For Will, you could castle here. You could play d6, I guess. A lot of different options. Knight to d4. Knight d4. So this is interesting. It, it's. I'm not it, sure what common the idea is. you can you can play for these ideas, but in this position, it gives up the e5 pawn, and that could be devastating. Oh, Larry doesn't oh, take it. He takes d4. Knight takes e5 was. Very, very good for white. I think it's easy to forget that the knight was protecting the pawn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Larry's going to go for the d4 pawn. Mm -hmm. So I imagine maybe a capture and then support the pawn with, let's say, c5. Maybe. Queen takes. This is a good position for white because the pawns are doubled. And so, oh, oh, Will protects it, but it gave up a new square. And also, I blundered the same thing because I'm the one who said C5. Oh, okay. I need to, I need to do my tactics training. <laughs> okay, well, still, Larry has to see it. He, Oh, he, he didn't see nope, it. He I'm missed knight takes E5. Now he misses knight D6 check. Still in a good spot, but those are a couple opportunities that could come back to bite him. Yeah, but it's still like it's still there, and I think he's eyeing the c7 square. So at this point, I guess you just have to you need to castle as black, right? Yeah, and he does. Okay, he does get castled. If if Larry does not put a piece on d6, and Black is able to strike with d5, opening the center especially if he doesn't get castled, this is going to quickly turn around. So you see that eval bar, you know white has an advantage, but it's really based on getting this knight to d6 and just crippling black's position. The bishop is bad, the f7 pawn, he doesn't do it. Does and knight already, to, d, to c7 work? Oh, he castles instead. That's right. Already d5 is, is a really nice move to strike back at. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to take everything on d5, just play d5 to get the bishop developed and the position is already much closer to equality. Okay, what's he gonna find? Thinking about it. Thinking about it. 
Maybe he's just, you know, but he might be seeing. Okay, he goes for it, but oh, here's the go. problem. He might be looking at takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and on queen takes, mm -hmm. there's a fork at the end. Mm -hmm. So if he's nervous about going for that, then that's probably why he's not doing it. Um, but he, he did eventually play it. We'll see what he plays here after e takes d5, because taking, uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's see if Larry sees it, though. We'll see if Larry sees Let's bishop see. takes in knight c7. That's a big fork town. Big town, fork town. Larry has to see bishop takes d5 first, but if he does see it, he's winning a rook on a8. I wonder if I can drop that. Ooh, look at that. I can do that. You know, that would be oh, on wow. c7. Do you know I could do that? No, I didn't work. Look, at, <laughs> look at that little fun idea. Let's analyze that. Bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, and then boom goes the knight fork on c7, <laughs> just like that. That is a problem, but it's Larry on the clock, and he hasn't seen it yet. He's spending so much time. Yep. He maybe he might see the idea and he's just triple checking everything. Just and no, okay. Queen e5, he didn't see it. He missed the opportunity to take and fork on c7. This is now black can actually play bishop e6, and it's a completely different game. Mm -hmm. The main, the main reason is that if you go bishop e6 and after takes and takes with the queen, at the end of that forking idea, there's rook d8. Black has rook to d8 defending the bishop. Mm -hmm. No fork, no problem. Yeah, we love our we love our blitz champs, celebrity events, non-title players getting some airtime, representation for all the chess enthusiasts out there. Glad people are enjoying the event. Saw a lot of people on Twitter, too, getting at me, saying they love this event. Love seeing their NFL stars play. We're glad. Thanks for being here. All right. Will is on the clock. I know you're nervous for your boy, but... Yeah, and he, he plays Bishop East. That's the best movie. Found it. Yeah, if Larry doesn't uh, sort of capitalize here this could uh this really looks like anybody's game well now now he i think he's already really missed a chance i mean i i, I yeah i right. yeah i, I mean see yeah i don't really see the way forward for I, I don't see a knockout yeah larry was not as aggressive in this one as mm -hmm. you know he didn't miss his chance against eric armstead if you missed that game to gobble up the piece when he was given it um but uh, here, he's definitely missed a couple chances to be more aggressive, though it's a very equal and tight niche game, right? Only 30 seconds mm -hmm. separate him on the clock. This one could come down to the wire. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe you start thinking about moves like like A6 so that you can mm -hmm. bring your rook out. Maybe you think about rookie eight. What, what are some other ideas? A6, rookie eight. He's in a good spot. Uh, Amari Cooper also in a good spot. I see people asking who won Group A. That was Amari Cooper. It took an overtime victory versus Chidobi Awuzie. Chido knows. Um, looked like he was in control of that match. So, But Amari does win with a score of five points versus four points, uh, Group A. So the winner of this match will play Chidobi Awuzie. The loser between Larry Fitzgerald and Will Davis will face off against Amari first thing tomorrow. Rookie eight. Oh, wait, why doesn't it work? Wait, but the engine doesn't like it. What? Oh, there's, okay, you can play knight to d6 right uh, away. Oh, wait. Hit the rook. Okay. And the reason it's so good now, oh man, he finds it, is because it doesn't just hit the rook, John, it cuts off the queen's defense of the knight. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh-oh. Now he can take the knight, but okay, Larry, Larry missed his tactic earlier. We'll see if he finds it now. Big moment. You got to own it. He doesn't. One opportunity. Mom spaghetti. He doesn't see it. 
rookie four. First of all, what a weird looking position. All these pieces yeah. packed in the center of the board. This is like optically throwing my brain for a for a tizzy. Do people say tizzy? Tizzy. And what do you play here? Maybe knight c7? What's a good move? Here? Get the knight out of dodge. That's an idea. Yeah. Maybe. Knight c7. You could even move the knight to b6 as well. Yeah, knight b6, so b7. Knight b6 is good, good because if you take, you take, and shake and bake, right? right. You win a piece, so... Maybe knight b6 for, for Will is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really sharp position. This could really go either way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at this point, it's it, when you have like all this tension, it's sort of what? who blunders and who blunders last. Yeah. I agree. This is like you said, there's the eval bar where it makes it look winning and it's harder than it looks. This is a 50-50 eval bar that could easily swing. There's so many chances to make a huge tactical error here. Even mm -hmm. rookie four, even though it wasn't best from Larry because he could have just taken the knight. This move prepares to slide over to this side of the board, which of course you can't do. But you have to be super careful here. Any Any change in the position and that centralized queen could be really dangerous, or in turn, John, could be the biggest problem White has. And Will's taken a lot of time, I gotta say. Yeah, he's, down to he's really minutes. getting down on the clock. But uh, but this is an important moment. Yep. Yeah. Chat's gonna play ELO guessing. That's right, I was spitting hot fire with that Eminem reference. So Thank now... You. I think white can just take on d5. I don't see. Yeah, back to winning if you just take the knight. Yeah. But he, he hasn't. This is a weird position for them, too, right? We're struggling with it. Okay, Larry oh, does yeah, see yeah. it Larry, now the, the third Larry time around. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes d5, wins a piece. And unfortunately for Will, he's also mm -hmm. now down more than three minutes on the clock. So. Yeah, things are not looking good, and the rhythm just doesn't... of this game, the rhythm. Yeah, what is? It wasn't a rhythm that Gloria Stefan would be proud of. I'm now one for four. Oh God, one for four. Who is this, Gloria? Gloria who? Stefan. Yeah, who's this? Am I gonna have to Google this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Bishop takes d5, wins a piece from Larry Fitzgerald. And uh, Stefan. Ooh, f6. Danny, this, this, this chick is like 65. How am I, I supposed to know this person? At one point, she was super popular. Rhythm of the Night. I think that's what the song was. Okay, Bishop takes e6 is with check, John. That wins the queen. You could, you could actually take with the queen if you're really into fanciness. But I don't know that Larry will see that. Both bishop takes e6 and queen takes e6 because their check should be lights out. Uh, Larry taking his time. Mm -hmm. Well, well, he's got he's got the time. He's up three minutes on the clock. But but if he doesn't see taking on e6, like if he moves the queen away, I mean that's an illegal move. But if you go here to g3, oh look at that, he found it. Wow. Very look at the that. hot fire chess tactics to his matchup here Oof. versus Will Davis. Yeah, now he's going to be up a rook and a knight. I think uh, it's about time to resign. You Should might be. see a quick <laughs> resignation here. Will is smiling at the tactics Will's that Larry just uncorked. It. Yeah. Well. Also, I thought the pop references were about to get easier not harder you gotta give me you gotta throw me some some softballs uh yeah no you're right that was unintentional that was yeah, unintentional. this was this was like a decade before i was born <laughs> a decade before i was born okay but i i put an extra i put an extra time um all right now we'll see how quickly larry converts he's super confident when he's up material and uh, now played C3 pretty fast. This should be should be light work for Mr. Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. 
c3 nice move to get rid of blacks maybe only real strength left in the position the pawn center after the trade it should be easy to make a pass pawn lights out bob's your uncle we have a second game here um yep agreed you can at some point think about trading rooks maybe put oh look at that that also looks reasonable to me get rid of all counterplay and there he was um, hard on himself after winning that game uh sorry winning the match versus uh eric armstead for those who missed it because he you know didn't didn't win it effectively enough not happy that he drew the last game because he lost on time up a couple queens look at him fixing his time issue here way up on the clock yeah exactly and he's he's got a simple plan he's just gonna push him that's very clear just push this deep on make a push queen, baby and mate nothing to do will smiling <laughs> Smiling and laughing and joking. Larry, Larry's not smiling. Now. Larry is, Larry's locked in. Yeah, he's he's locked in. He's got the deep on. <laughs> I can't even hear what they're saying, but I'm just smiling because it's so cute. <laughs> just laughing. I think they're getting ready to. Uh, I think Will's getting ready to throw in the towel here, and then they'll rematch each other. If I had to guess. Yeah, Will's just enjoying, enjoying the time, enjoying being here, chatting a little, hanging out. Well, he just showed up. Now he's now he's playing in the winner's bracket. Yeah. What's the difference in prizes from the winner's bracket to the consolation? I don't know, but I know it's, I think it's a few thousand bucks. Just instantly got himself some cash money, you know, for his charity and yeah. going to have some some fun playing chess along the way. Yeah, when we get well, we should we should ask him what his, what his charity is, you know, off the top of your head. Yeah, we had his charity posted. Because it was last minute, we mm -hmm. didn't have a... Uh, uh, and on the on the image there, so we'll get that for everyone. But um, we have his charity. We'll talk about that when we uh, not just when we talk to him, but later on in the show here. So there you go. First game in the books. Larry Fitzgerald continuing to show why he's one of the favorites to maybe win this whole thing. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see it. And Will starts with e4. Danny, it's now or never. It's now or never for the Berlin. It's now or never. <laughs> okay, we're gonna find out. I have faith. Knight to c6. Yes. Okay, yes. we have a Lopez. Yes. Larry might be the guy to yes. break the bank and play the Berlin. Oh my God. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's a Berlin, baby. Wait, we have a Berlin. Well, that's that's why he's a future chess hall of famer. There we go. We got more than half of Berlin. Yeah. There you go. We got, oh my God, we're getting full Berlin. <laughs> what is going on here? Larry, future chess hall of famer. Man. Oh my Lord. Will Larry know the 96 Never go full Berlin. What's going on? <laughs> if Larry plays 96, I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. That, that would be full Berlin. Okay, so he plays d5. Oh. Unfortunately, oh no, 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 no! That's that move can get in very big trouble here. Uh, bishop takes not as good as just playing d3 right away, but still, yeah. white is in a good spot here because the e file blowing open is very, very dangerous for black. But okay, John, whoever had the bet, you know, whatever on the Berlin, we did have a Berlin. Okay. Wait, now, now we have a turnaround. Tactics. The reason now this is winning is if Black can two, spot Bishop right? takes h2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if, if Black plays Bishop takes h2 check, King takes, and then Queen to h4 check, we have 
absolute liftoff and it would be wild if i if i had to guess like this is a very hard tactic to see you know especially when you haven't played it before confidence to sack a piece may not be there but um but okay wouldn't that be something if larry goes for that yeah he kind of similar he yeah, sees yeah, the idea know. he's he's on the prowl i mean what do you expect when you get a Berlin, you know? Some strong attacking <laughs> chess. Uh, I love it. Oh, we played D3! Will misses it. There's a whole lot of ways to win now. Okay. Queen takes H2. It's falling apart quickly. Actually, after after King F1 here, this is... This actually gets a little a little funny because after queen h1 john and king e2 if you take the pawn white is actually surviving but if you play bishop g4 check first then it's over so this is a little mm -hmm. bit trickier than it seems for all those eval bar hunters out there just hold your horses okay is Larry going to find Bishop G4 check? You, you can't take G2 first, too. Don't yeah, give me wrong. Bishop G4 is enough, just lights right? out. Wow. And he finds it. Okay. Future chess Hall of Famer Larry Fitzgerald. It's the Berlin. I mean, what do you expect? It's just undefeated. Undefeated opening. Unbelievable. We just have to add the word chess there next to future Hall of Famer because Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> so now that you've seen more data points, right, and you know how mm -hmm. Amari Cooper and Chidobi Abuzi. Yeah, I played. think it's going to be tough for Group B to compete. You think even even for Larry to to even for Larry, Larry yeah. the underdog Larry's against those two. Good, he's looked strong. He's missed a thing or two. Group A was incredibly impressive. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I still think Amari and Chidobi are the favorites to beat both their opponents larry and will but i think that larry you know larry definitely has a uh, a real shot especially if he gets the openings that he knows mm -hmm. so we'll see here it's 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 force mate by the way if larry finds all the right moves i don't know that he will or needs to but yeah f3 is this maiden two or yeah. what is this? Yeah. Queen takes G2 check, and on king to E3, queen F2 is mate. Okay, Larry finds yeah. the first move. Yeah, I think he sees it. Queen F2. Oh, right. That was a, that was a quick round three. <laughs> well, we'll see. He hasn't played mate yet. No, that's that's a little bit of an awkward mate to see. Not every day you have, you know, the queen and knight working in that pattern together. So it's possible he doesn't see it. He's he's likely winning regardless with this very nice mm -hmm. attack. But yeah, I, I kind of thought he might might not quite see that one. Yeah, still completely winning in like ten different ways. But it's no longer forced mate. So that's the thing. It's what is the saying? It's not over till it's over? Or what are all the ways they used to say that? <laughs> it's not over. It's not a tumor. <laughs> okay, tell me you got that one. It's not I a tumor. So. I think so. That's your that's your Arnold impression, right? Okay, but who, what movie? Maybe it's a tumor. It's not a tumor. Oh, that I can't tell you. I'm like, I'm like one for six now. I think I might be doing worse than Danya. You're getting there. You're getting close. Uh, kindergarten cop, bro. Kindergarten cop. I've never seen Kindergarten Cop. Oh my God. That is, that is a fail, an epic fail. It's a fantastic film. Not a movie, a film. A film. Gotcha. A film. You heard it. I heard it here first. Okay. okay. Uh, will Larry see Bishop takes F3 and hope, you know, get me forgetting about what just happened in that conversation. Indeed, he does. Um, he does. He finds Bishop takes F3. Thank God. Because you were. Yeah, you're hitting me with all these like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Why don't we start doing <laughs> some like math references? That was a softball, bro. 
Um, That's not what year was that made? Kindergarten Cop. Yeah, what year was I that? I don't know. Made? Early nineties. It's okay, I'm like, it's not a I'm rat. Like it's two. A like... <laughs> Sorry, shout out to my my uh, my lovely CEO Eric in the chat says it's a ferret. That's a great line. Great line from Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> um, all right, Bishop takes this is like three. a year before I was born. Like I don't know, I don't know what you're expecting out of me. I feel like these are unrealistic expectations. Stop reminding me that you're a child of the '90s. Okay, stop reminding me. Um, all right, Bishop takes F3. Seriously, this has been really impressive. I, I don't disagree that Group A, that matchup between Chidobi and Amari has us has a spinning. Um, but I've been really impressed with Larry's play. And and I don't know, I'm not counting out my boy yet that he might have a chance to be our first ever Blitz Champs champion. Um, Will also, as we know, showed up just like it was just amazing uh that he already won one match in overtime, even mm -hmm. if he's gonna go down here against Larry. By the way, you can't take the queen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to think what's the best way forward here. Yeah, this is. Yeah, because the queen is hanging. Yeah, this is not. It's not over. Yeah. Imagine Larry plays like Bishop B6. Right. Right. And then and then Will has another epic comeback. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, queen to g3 is a good move. You can even castle. But it, it is possible, what John's saying is perhaps Larry, you know, forgets that the knight is pinned. Be hard to do it because, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Takes. He takes with, oh, the reason why Wait, is because knight takes. What was the, what was knight the idea? Knight takes would have, would have won a piece because oh. it attacks the bishop and the bishop on c5. Knight, knight takes was winning because now both the bishop and this bishop are hanging. Mm -hmm. But taking with the bishop and black is now winning again as long as he saves the bishop. But still, this is not over. It's not over. Yeah, I mean, okay. It's not like, it's not so obviously winning to me. Like, white starts developing it. Yeah, though, this is a game again. No, I told I told you, and I had a feeling when 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 you don't when you don't see the checkmate with Queen F two mm -hmm. because it was a tricky checkmate, it was mm -hmm. already like every move you make was closer to a position that could be a real mess. And I think Will has a comeback here, especially because guess what, he's up a minute on the clock. Wow. Okay. 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 Craven. At this point. Okay. Is this another reference? It's, <laughs> That's it's it, right Kramer. Away. Come on, dude. Oh, Kramer. my Lord. And why does root beer make you burp? And why is burping so much fun? I'm doing so badly. I'm just failing left and right. This is... Okay, you know what I want? I this... want us to finish this match, get Will on here, and let's see how many of these references Will gets. Okay, I'm just gonna run like through I'm, the I'm claiming a generational gap here. Okay, that's fine. That was Seinfeld for the love of all that is holy on any form of primetime television ever. Dear God, I'm claiming a generational gap. Just know this. <laughs> okay. um, we can quiz Will when he when he's done with this game. All right, that'll be fun. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, Nice C3 played. Larry is taking his time. And jokes aside, we should dial in here because we've thought this game was over, hence me slipping into Seinfeld impersonations, um, unappreciated by my co-host. But this is a game. This is a real game here. Look okay. at that. He hangs the D5 pawn. Look at that. Is it hanging? Look at that. It's not over. Um, yeah, I guess it is hanging. Yeah. Knight takes D5. Yeah. The, the knight's still pinned. This is completely turned around. What? Oh, this is this is uh, why we play the. This is why the game is played, right? It's not over till it's over. And he takes it. It's a good question from Nen SM, but you know it happens. Like he didn't see the win, mm -hmm. and he felt like it was slipping, so he traded queens. But you know for sure. I mean, he he missed the checkmate. Should have kept the queens on the board because White's king was in danger. So you're not wrong. The criticism is not wrong, but um. 
but yeah, all that matters is now we have a real battle on our hands. Mm-hmm. Rekarovka. Dude, your boy, your boy's on a comeback, John. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, what should Will do here? Um, okay. Like, yeah, he's even things up, but this does not look that easy to play for me. No, it doesn't at all. I think if you give a check on E7, and if Larry yeah. puts the king on H8, suddenly you've got, like, all kinds of mating nets over here on the H file, even with yeah. the rookie. That, that could be... That could be super tricky. Yeah. Probably. A, yeah. If he was, if he studied his uh, art of checkmate, you never know. He's got to watch out for these uh, night F2 ideas though. But, uh, but yeah, hundred. I can't wait for your interview with Will, by the way, I feel like you're going to have so many questions for your boy. I mean, d- does he, Oh, we're just going to be hanging out. It's, yeah, I, love I haven't like talked to him in person and like uh, it's been a minute. So it'll be good to see him. Larry has four minutes. In 32 seconds. Um, Will, five and a half minutes. Objectively, probably the best option is a move like C4, John, to like protect the knights and even mm-hmm. even maybe prepare ideas of trapping the bishop. Um, so I'm just, you asked what Will should do. I think a check. I think, I think C4 makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Wait a second. Rook to G1. Uh, oh. Knight F2. Well, now you can do you can do anything actually, and you've got problems here. Like Knight F2, you could you could even just take D2. Oh right, yeah, that, no, yeah, that's even better. Knight E. Although it's D2. it's not totally over. Why is that? Let's let's analyze that real quick because what happens if if Knight takes D2? Yeah, maybe Knight. Don't F2 you have Knight E7 check it's... at the end? I don't understand why this is just winning. I guess I guess in the end you have d4. That's why. Okay. But that's not I mean, that's not just like winning a piece or anything. That's not so yeah. simple. Hmm. Wow. Computers deceiving us. It's not so easy. Will's fighting back. Never let go, Jack. Never let go. Come on. That one I got. That one I got. Okay. Thank you. I I mean, I I literally have to give it to you on a silver platter. (laughs) (laughs) See, this is this is my level. I will take like pop culture references on or around the difficulty of like Titanic level. Yeah. Like this needs to be you need to give me something that like 98% of people would know. I'm getting your level now. Okay, he plays your knight of two check, which was which was also good. Maybe not as clear as knight d2. But Larry does seem to spot this idea that we've got we've got a whole bunch of knights on the light squares. Mm-hmm. Yep. King E3. And again, the uh I think I think the idea should just be to take here, even with the fork. Black can play like knight g4 check at the end, and you've got a lot of pawns, right? So Larry should be in good shape in that endgame, but with only three minutes, I don't know, man. I have a feeling we're going to get a blitz tiebreaker. I just yeah, I think that's what the people want. Yeah, Larry has shown us before that time pressure might be his uh, Achilles heel. Indeed. He is getting down on the clock, and uh, yeah, this position r- remains complex. I don't see a knockout, so... Yeah, and it's not secure yet. I mean, <clears throat> Larry secures a win of Group B if he wins this game or if he draws it. But if it goes to overtime and Will wins, Will can still – I think he can still tie Larry in points, and then the cap score he can win. Yeah. So I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> um, what was that? Oh, let me think. I know You're this. saying there's a chance. I know this. Come on, man. Come on. You can do it, John. Oh, my God. I know this. Every time I think you can't do anything dumber, you go and do something like this. Yes. Thank you. What is it? Dumb and dumber. Nailed it. 
There we go. I needed. You gave me a lot of help there. <laughs> like clearly, I sh I should have been spending less time like studying math and like more time like with my pop culture references. You knew I'm, what was good for you. I'm not gonna I'm, lie. I'm failing right now. <laughs> I like. I I get an F at this point. All right. So what's the count? Full dis full full focus here. Right. We've got five pawns for black and four for white. The real reason why the position is even trickier for white is that black's pawns are kind of easy to get going. Mm -hmm. As soon as the smoke clears in the center here, which, by the way, will probably clear in black's favor if, if you can take D2 and win another pawn, Larry should be in a, in a pretty safe spot to push. But yeah. a minute and 52 seconds, dude, I think yeah. that Will is in a really good position here. Okay, attacking the rook. I would love to see moves like rook H1 getting ready for ideas like 97 and like laying some, Dude. some threats. This is why I, I want to see Rook H1 in 97. Uh, and then, and for those who don't know what John is threatening in that position, I'll let you pause the video and think about it as if it was a video, but guess what? We're standing. It's Twitch. We're live, baby. Not going to let you pause after Rook H1 97. White is threatening Rook takes H7 and Rook H1 mage. Let's go to the back cave and show this tactic show these kids how we do things downtown. Let's say black does something random. Here comes 97. You do something random because your rook's attacked, right? Here comes rook h1, and you're like, oh, I'm going to attack your bishop. Whoop, check mate. And this is Anastasia's mate, not the Arabian mate. Boomtown, black's king is checkmated where it stands. Sorry for stealing your thunder there, partner, but that was a pretty sweet tactic. I want it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm grasping for things here because I'm trying to find ways for Will to to let Larry go wrong. I mean, really, at this point, maybe just keeping the game going. C5 was a great move by Larry, by the way, just yeah. because it the the more this game becomes about an open tactical affair, the more that the more that uh, White will likely go wrong because this king is in a in a really precarious spot on a diagonal on a bunch of open mm -hmm. files. The pieces have sort of been, you know, shielding the king. But once the smoke and mirrors are gone, the white king is naked right there. And there's going to be all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. Larry should take with the knight, but he should move fast. That's the real problem. Larry has to start moving faster. He does. All right. At this point, just to be practical, you probably got to take the bishop. Yes. I know I want these 97 ideas, but you got to take the bishop. Yeah. Otherwise, we all want a good old fashioned family fun checkmate on the H file. But, uh, but yeah, not going to work here. Just take the bishop and get out of the check. The point is that black has too many checks here. You got to get rid of that bishop. All right. I mean, he's thinking the time disadvantage is getting away from him. <sighs> Come on. Also, you might just want to trade some pieces because White's <clears throat> King is really on the open right now. Rook's about to come to the E file. Yep. This is, yep. This is looking scary. Last game of the year, Dan. Can't hold anything back now. Yeah, I'm, that's a that's a zero for me. Oh. Oh. Last game it. of the year, Will. Can't hold anything back. He loses the rook. Oh, he shakes his head. He knows it. Just keep playing. That was Waterboy, by the way. Fail. Um. Anyway, Bishop takes. You're gonna take G1. I, I saw Waterboy. I saw that movie. Okay. Well, you clearly, clearly you didn't mean? see it enough. I didn't pay attention. <laughs> enough. All right. If Larry takes the rook, he's in a good spot. He's up material. Mm -hmm. But I still don't think this is over yet. I mean, where's the knockout for Black? If you attack the knight, Will's going to defend it. He's going to play it. Look at that instantly. Yeah. This is not I an mean, easy game at all. I mean, I guess you just you sort of go for f4, f3, and try to tie down White's pieces. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think I think pushing the f pawn is the is the money play. That's the mogul move. Um, but thirty eight seconds, a really well centralized knight. It's not hard to play white here either. 
you can advance these pawns and do it very quickly. Wow, rook f6 okay. by Larry taking advantage of the pin for the win. Okay, but why? Does he want to go like rook a6? Let's go rook g6. Rook g6 is a smart. Larry really knows that when you're winning, you want to get pieces off the board. And so he's doing everything he can to trade. But the problem is that Will's, look at that. 27 seconds and counting. Five, five head by will to keep the pieces on the board i think we're going to have a blitz tiebreaker mm -hmm. i just i don't think larry's going to be able to handle the time pressure and i think we're going to overtime folks buckle up change your plans do your stretches don't throw out your back Ugh. yeah i thought i was going to be in bed by now this is yeah we're going, going overtime enough. we're going overtime yeah. okay <sighs> so, you're like so sure that this is about to wow yeah, you called it. Wait. Not only do I think... 0.4 seconds left. Not only do I think we're going overtime, Yeah, I think that Will probably wins the Blitz tiebreaker because Larry yeah. just, just struggles with time pressure. Unfortunately, he just... This is not Larry's jam. Losing on the clock is oh something Lord. that's going to happen with these, uh, with these fast games. And I think your boy Will, punching his ticket to overtime, could have just punched his ticket to showing up at the last minute and freaking winning group B, bro. I literally think that he's the favorite <laughs> in the Blitz tiebreaker. All right, so Larry's definitely getting white, right? Like that goes with For sure, because he was better in both games, even yeah. in this position where he lost on time. Yeah. Yeah. Larry for sure gets white in the Blitz tiebreaker. So that means we're getting another, we're getting another Italian. We're going to get a nice little slow jam. And uh, this could be difficult because... It's, that blitz goes quickly. That time, you know, it yeah. goes fast. It's, it's is... possible sometimes people play faster in blitz because it just kicks a different gear. So mm -hmm. maybe Larry manages his time differently. But if I had to guess, any mm -hmm. real time scramble is going to make Will the huge favorite. And and I think that, I think that wow. But what's, what's crazy is this. Actually, mm -hmm. Larry could lose the overtime tiebreaker and still be the top seed. Why? Because he's probably going to have a way higher. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah, but um, he, still, Will Will gets the match victory and the pride. Yep. Um, yeah. By the also, way, we'll for, talk about for, it when we likely catch up with Will um, as one of the only interviews we haven't had mm -hmm. after the the uh, the matchup. But his uh, his profit is the, his his sorry his charity is the Spokane Speed Academy, which is a nonprofit youth sports organization. So we'll talk about that just because I saw questions. Asked about that. Showed up at the last minute, but came prepared with a charity and all and some good chess. That's Will Davis. Um, all right. Well, the team is getting ready here, everybody. We've got we've got more chess, just like we told you. Um, and by the way, again, it's not to rub rub salt in the wound at all, especially not for for Larry. He's my boy. But let's remember that there was mate and one on the board in this game. At yeah, one point was, in this uh, game, yeah. at one point in this game, there was mate and one on the board for black. Mm -hmm. And again, it, I think it's hard. This is not a pattern. We talk about chess being a game of pattern recognition. It's mm -hmm. it's like a language, and you either read the position or you don't. So sometimes it can be easy to judge. But um, I mean, one of the most famous stories of a of a mate and one pattern. It was actually a mate and two pattern. John is the story of Kromnik. Um, losing uh in the in the man versus machine machine match long ago when man could still play with machine in a galaxy right. far far away right. he, he lost blundered to, some uh he lost to ribka in a match he blundered a mate in two mm -hmm. and um let me answer this question real quick from chad about the cap score so the cap score is the computer accuracy precision score and it's the score that you get at the end of a chess game on chess.com when you hit that game review you click analyze and that percentage score you get is your cap score, which is our algorithm measuring your level of chess against the computer's suggestions. It is not cool. it is not pound for pound our cheat detection system. It's way more, you know, that that particular algorithm is way more um, 
robust, if you will, than that. But from a snapshot perspective, it can be very indicative of just how well you played, how well you matched up with the engine. So it's a tiebreaker because if all other things are equal, one fair way to measure who played the better chess, regardless of the time on the clock, as we've seen Larry lose, or maybe a big blunder, not reflective of how well you played, the cap score tiebreaker makes a lot of sense because it tells us who played the overall higher level of chess. So there you go. That's the cap score. Also, we're we're in the blitz. Yep. Larry leaves the Italian behind, goes for 2d4, early queen development. Yeah, and I don't think that suits... I don't think that suits my guy, Larry. I think um, I think uh, the earlier he gets in a position where he's having to think, it's not the right approach. But, um, <clears throat> you know, again, he could he could lose this and still be the person who is with the one scene. And again, I don't even know who you want to play, Jadobi or Amari. I think it's debatable. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway. Yeah, no, I like how Will's playing this. I do, too. And just to quickly tie a ribbon on that story I was saying, before you judge Larry missing the main one, again, we're talking about world champion Vladimir Kromnik in a match in the early 2000s versus Ribka. You know, a position where he was worse, but it was maybe holdable. There was a blunder of a mate in two, and it was because it was a very odd, unique pattern that you just don't see, even at the highest, highest levels of the game. And that's one of the most famous stories people use when they talk about how pattern recognition is so important, regardless of how easy the position might be to a computer. If it's not familiar to you, then you're not reading that particular language. That's how it goes. Yeah. So, okay. H6, this is all gonna come down to how fast Larry plays, I think. Yeah. Well, they're even on the clock now. So, so far, so good. Yeah. So. Also, speaking of like, you were talking about blundering this mate in two. I, uh, I just saw, so Ben Feingold had a really cool like uh, video lesson on like great blunders of like from grandmasters from like Kramnik to Magnus and uh, yeah, so I actually just saw this Kramnik game like a week ago. Oh, okay. The, the mm. famous mate and two blunder. Yeah. Courtesy of Ben Feingold. Courtesy of Mr. Feingold. Okay, good move to take with the pawn. Keeping the queen on this guy maybe threatens e5. If you can see e5, you're still in business if you're Larry. Um, and he does. Okay. Even though the computer is, you know, objectively, yes, black can actually well, do a number of things d6, here. You just play d6, right? Or like, what do you do here? g5 d6 is a move. d6 is a move. Uh, if g5 takes, you take with check. If d6, you're undermining the pawn. So yes, objectively, black is still actually in good shape, but but I think those are some hard moves to see potentially. I think Will, yeah, oh. and he finds d6. He finds d6. And what's funny is, is Larry can turn one pin into another if he sees castles long. Oh, that's true. This is probably is the best move, is castles long, put the rook on the d file, mm -hmm. and get the king out of dodge. But like like Will's d6 move, that's a hard move for Larry to find. Yeah, I did not see castles long. If white castles long, what is black? Oh, okay. And yeah, now you're in trouble. Will's going to start yeah. taking pawns. Yeah, and he does it. Larry's playing fast to his credit, though, at least right now. Mm -hmm. If white castle long there, what was black's best move? What would you have done? Um... Hadn't done a lot of calculating. Um, Castles long, that's a hard move. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Because I proposed d6, but I didn't think about castles it, long. It might even be like a peace sack or something, like like 95. I mean, I think I think castles long was white's best chance to stay in the game, but, mm -hmm. but white's king is also very open over there, too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Knight takes e5. attacking the queen mm -hmm. and Larry is now down on clock for the first time in their blitz tiebreaker game. Yeah. So 
the accuracy score is actually calculated based on the rapid games and because they've already done the so, math even and it's through all four games not just the games with each other it's for you know the matches versus eric armstead as well even if will wins this larry actually has already clinched that he's playing chidobi awuzie and that will will play amari cooper will's so we're just here for playing, the free chess will's playing g5 do it yeah he's gonna do it can we make a shirt that says, I'm just here for the free chess? Okay. This was this is a very good move, actually. Bishop g4, rook d1. Okay, nice little move right back at you. Attack the queen. And uh, what do you do if you're if you're Queen C eight maybe? Yeah, Queen C eight is good. Even Queen E seven is fine. Yeah. Again, it's very. This is a very hard position for for Will. Uh, sorry, for Larry. Because how do you get the king out of the center? I think mm -hmm. as long as as long as Will doesn't get two down on time, I think that it's more than likely Larry will make a blunder here. This is so dangerous to have a king in the middle of the board. So many threats here. By the way, yeah. you can move. Also, the D five is still. Being threatened. Okay. He takes it. G takes F6. I feel like G takes can be a hard move to think about. Yeah, that's very Queen fact, takes is very natural, you know? Takes with the Even queen, but this is kind of. Yeah, your pawns get doubled anyway. Like, I can understand. It's a natural move. John, this was kind of like Larry trading queens in the last game when the king was in the center. This could help. Yeah, yeah. Will gets the queens off the board. Now, if Larry plays a move like King of Two or something and gets out of dodge, it's a complete. This is a a brand new game again. Yeah, although I guess it stays scary. Like King of Two, maybe you just take on E two. Yeah, take E two, but still, it's it's just a whole new game. Yeah, so to yeah, me, this no, is... yeah. Still, the reason I would take Will in this matchup because we've just seen Larry in the time scramble and has not been his. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, and uh, that was a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Although. All Will needs to do is double rooks. Yeah. Know that Will can also lose on time as well. So they're both getting low on time now. So. But I just get the feeling that he's got a little bit of spiciness with the mouse there. Look at him. Practically pre-moved rookie eight. Castles loses a piece. Black is uh, now winning both on the board. Not up on the clock, but from a practical perspective, we've seen will be better in time pressure so far. Up a piece. Not really a whole lot of uh, whole lot of threats that Larry can make here. At this point, I think really the only way Larry can win is on time. I don't know what you think. Uh, agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. And you don't want to trade Rooks, but I don't know that he's going to come up with anything better with no time on the clock. Yeah. Oh, never mind. He does. Okay, it's, you know, there's pieces on the board. There's still a game going. Is that like a cliche a, a coach would say in football? There's time on the clock. There's still chance to win. <laughs> yeah, your uh, your football references haven't been like uh, haven't been that cringe today. You're like trying to make up for it. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, um, we play the game oh, to win. <laughs> Playoffs. <laughs> All right. Okay, rookie four, if you're Larry, you got to play quickly here. But I think that Will is cleaning up and doing well. Yeah. Although we haven't seen Will's endgame technique yet, so it's... We haven't. That's fair. Let's see how he converts this. Okay. okay there's a pin. It takes a... a, a it would take a... Uh, I don't know. Take take something. Take a miracle on on yeah. on, on board. Yeah, Will Will knows what he's doing. 
yeah, it's, it's playing itself at this point. The A-pawn runs, and as predicted when the Blitz tiebreaker happened, Will Davis shows up, and then he glows up. He's all glowed up. <laughs> Will Davis shows up, glows up, and, and punches four. his ticket. To we just got to avoid stalemates. To winning Group B. All right, and Larry's playing for stalemate here. Unbelievable. Amazing, amazing stuff right there. There we go. That is fantastic chess from Will Davis. I would golf clap if it was a golf tournament, um, but instead I'll just, just cheer. I mean, wow, it was... I think really high quality chess from Larry throughout, as we know, he had the best mm -hmm. cap score and he actually does take the one seed regardless of that victory because of how accurate he was in rapid. Uh, but mm -hmm. Will Davis, you know, I think won the hearts and won the group as far as the people are concerned with that epic overtime victory over Larry Fitzgerald right there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But let's take a look at the results and where it shows them. They both have four points at the end of this Saturday. So they finished tied atop the standings of Group B. And again, uh, we have to have a tiebreaker of some kind. I think if we played another Blitz game, that would probably be a tiebreaker that, that favored Will. Um, but Larry played the best overall quality of chess in the uh, rapid portion, which is why he takes the top prize on our cap score tiebreaker. Uh, but seriously, Will Davis, man, your guy. I, I, yeah. I want you to just save your thoughts because we're going to be catching up with him soon. But your thoughts on what we just witnessed there in Group B. Absolutely amazing. Two huge comebacks right in a row. I mean, Will, he's just been clutch. He's been yeah. waiting for his chance. He finally got called up, and he's he's delivered. Seriously, he finally got called yeah. up. <laughs> he got called up to the majors like, hey, give me Vaughn. Give me Vaughn? No. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. Let's, uh, instead of, we're going to move on to talking about Sunday's matchups instead of watching. John. Let's talk about some, some math references. We can talk about <laughs> the new fields. There's no such we thing as a that. math reference that anyone knows. Anyway, what we do know is that we now have our seeds set for Sunday. Amari Cooper will be playing Will Davis. Larry Fitzgerald will be playing Chidobe Wuzier. John, I want to get your thoughts on both matchups. What does Will need to do? to, as it would seem to be the underdog, take down Amari Cooper? Make the most of his chances. I mean, Amari's a very strong player. We saw that from Group A, but Amari does make mistakes. And the thing that got Will these two match victories is recognizing when his opponent gave him opportunities and making the most of it. Fair. Take his opportunities. Let's go back and talk about Larry Fitzgerald and Chidobe Awuzie then. That's the other matchup where... You know, I, I think that the chess-wise, I feel like is very close, but I have to give the the nod to to Cheeto Nose just because of the practical kind of speed of the rapid portion. Your thoughts on on what Larry would need to do uh, to maybe he'd have to get a win in the rapid portion for sure because he can't afford a blitz tiebreaker. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, I, I agree. I think he needs to uh, take better care of his clock and also. I think he's uh, he's playing a little tentatively, I would say, compared to some other players. And, yeah. you know, not be afraid to, you know, take your chances when you think you might have them. You know, sometimes you see a move and you don't know, does it work out? Doesn't it work out? And not to sort of dismiss moves that could be very strong too soon, I think. Yeah. No, I think that's a, a good piece of advice. I think he kind of played a little bit too slow, kind of overthinking it in some spots, mm -hmm. right? Being very careful and plays mm -hmm. a high quality brand of chess. We saw Larry had the highest cap score, maybe of anybody. I actually don't know if we checked what Amari and Shidobi put up, but he had a very high cap score despite losing a couple games on the clock. Um, the only other matchup that will be going down that we haven't talked about yet is the consolation matchup. We got a couple of Oregon Ducks going against each other, right? Eric Armstead and Kayvon Thibodeau. I think Eric's mm -hmm. the favorite, but... Kayvon, Kayvon got to get some confidence tonight and uh, see if he can bring that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'll be an exciting matchup to watch as well. Yep. We've got a lot going on tomorrow. Again, it all starts at 1 p.m. Pacific, I believe. Um, but there you go. That is going to be the matchup um, once the championship, sorry, the winner's bracket 
kicks off. Um, but first thing we will have, as we said, uh, Eric Armstead going up against Kayvon Thibodeau. So um, I, I, I literally have been blown away here by what we saw um, from the guy who literally came in off the streets, right? <laughs> they say like they drafted him off the streets, all the cliches, a walk-on, a walk-on from uh, walk-on university. Um, and uh, Will, Will Davis showed up, and if you missed it, he put on quite the show here, winning two matches in overtime mm-hmm. over Eric Armstead, the 49er, and then the Hall of Famer, Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, both Larry and Will move on from Group B to challenge to Doby and Amari from Group A. But uh, boy, was it awesome. And we're about to uh, catch up with that awesome player here in just a second. Um, John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to let you kind of lead because he is, uh, he is your guy. He's your, he's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Will, what's up? How you doing? How you living, man? Oh, man, man. It's so good to see you, man. I'm doing good. Obviously, uh, still trying to wrap my head around how I won two games and uh, didn't get a better seed than Larry Fitz, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. We need to, uh, Danny and I will talk about that offline. We might need to <laughs> adjust those tiebreaker rules. Yeah. You win that makes sense, bro. <laughs> yeah. You win both your matches. You it's crazy, we can talk man. about that offline, but this but is seriously, crazy. dude, you're, you show up off the street. <laughs> you, you, you filled in for Micah Parsons at the last second. For anyone just tuning in, we sent out the bat signal. You're Batman, right? You show up, you you answer the call, and you win two matches in overtime, man. How how thrilled are your Sat- are you about your Saturday here? Took a turn for the better at some point a couple hours ago. Honestly, uh, one, I was just excited. Obviously, I did want to play. You know, talking to John, I was really excited to be a part of it. And then, obviously, I guess when Micah was going to come back, I was like, dang, you know, but at the same time, uh, being on standby and I got the chance to watch, uh, Amari Cooper earlier. So I was watching that and I was like, man, that looks fun. So I was really hoping, uh, but it looked like everybody had, you know, all the guys there. So I actually went, um, was just like, Hey, little man, uh, you know, went to the movies with him and my girl. And then we had the movies and I said, Hey, we might need you. I'm like, what <laughs> you're watching minions. And so literally I was just like, you know, Hey babe, I gotta go. <laughs> and she <went> and, uh, <laughs> uh, called an Uber, bro, made it back got some computer and man, I uh, was glad to be a part of it. Obviously game one didn't go how I wanted, but man, back against the wall, uh, had to come up clutch both, both times and uh, made it through on the tiebreaker. And then uh, I'm confident in the three minute, you know, making quick decisions. I can, I win both those and I did. So yeah, it was huge. Yeah, that was incredibly impressive. First of all, thank you for missing the rest of minions for us. That's, uh, <laughs> that's no small ask. It's a no great movie. I hear. Yeah. I hear minions is good. I heard it was good too. My son said it was good as well. So was my girl. Yeah. yeah. Somehow, Danny, I've missed all these. Like my my daughter like doesn't know that television or movies exist yet. So we're trying to keep it that way. Yeah. We're, we're gonna that's see that. how long this lasts. <laughs> well, I mean, Will, are you are you surprised by this at all? We you walked us through. You told everybody the the story, right? Walked away from Minions. Obviously, mm-hmm. no prep was done. You you answered the call and came in. But I mean, are you surprised by how this went, or do you you said you feel confident with your quick decision making? Do you feel like in these fast time controls that your uh, your confidence is is pretty high? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna lie. I came into it uh, very confident, only based off the history of playing uh, former teammates, uh, former NFL guys who say they play chess. Uh, so I'm not gonna lie. It was actually uh, dope to kind of come into a place where, you know, former NFL or NFL guys who are playing now, uh, actually do play and play, play good chess. So, um, yeah, like I said, game one, honestly came in, um, started off well, and then, uh, put myself in a good spot. And I like where I was at and got a little too aggressive, played fast and didn't really, you know, pay attention to the little things and see, uh, that he had the cover spot, uh, that spot covered by a few pieces. And so, uh, yeah, right there and losing the pawn, I knew I was like, oh man, I need to slow down. And so, um, yeah, but coming into it, definitely thought, but these guys can play. Um, so I was definitely shocked by how good they played, but, um, definitely glad I came out on top sort of, I guess. You know, it was, I mean, these were, these were two epic matches to win, to win game two in both matches and then win the tie break twice. It was really exciting to see. Yeah. I'm sure everyone watching at home is just, uh, <laughs> it was fun. Um, Larry making that second mistake in game two against Larry, uh, really hurt. Cause I really had a good game plan. Um, saw everything that, you know, was coming through. Um, and then 
you know, instead of checking every, you know, single box, man, I just saw one little thing, you know, three moves ahead and it really, it really hurt. Um, but by then that's when it's just like, okay, look at the clock. And I knew he was going to have to start pushing it and he was taking it slow. So I was like, okay, he's going to start pushing it. And when he wasn't, that's when I kind of knew I said, Oh, we're going to see a game three. We're going to see mm. a game three for sure. I love that, man. You, okay. So let's talk a little about it. You, you and John are boys, right? We, we know the story. You guys, you guys played with each other um, at the Ravens. And I know John is, John won't admit it. He's a very strong chess player, right? Uh, but did oh, you ever, God, did you ever get a nice. game? <laughs> did you ever get a game off of John or is it, uh, was he instantly in kind of like coaching mode for you? All right. Let me tell you how it went. So obviously I'm just playing chess in the locker room. Uh, John sees, and then, um, I was like, Oh, you know, you play and you know, no, I knew he was a smart guy. Okay. Hey you, buddy. Yeah, hey buddy, your fun. dad won. <laughs> yeah. I won though. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, and then, uh, I saw him and then, um, yeah, he played a game with me. Um, and he, I can tell he's kind of filling it out, uh, but he ended up dominating me. And then uh, he told me, yo, you have a good foundation. Uh, do you read like any books? And he gave me some book suggestions and I was all for it, took them, read them. Um, and honestly, it helped my game a ton. That's when I realized like, wow, there's so much depth to the theory and memorization of this game. And I was just like mind blown. Um, so I definitely took years off and just really got better. But I always wanted to kind of play him again, you know, in time to be like, okay, how, how is it now? Um, but yeah, we played a few games. Uh, we played for the Ravens, man. He, you know, he always won. It was solid. Uh, push some close ones. I was really just trying to, you know, one day I can do a draw at that point. Um, but man, it's been, a, it's been dope. Just elevating my game and then seeing a lot of other people now playing, man, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So what sort of things have you been doing to get better at chess? Because I remember the games we used to play when we were both on the Ravens and looking at your games. Now you're, you're a much improved player. Yeah. What would you sort of credit to? Uh, that bro, improvement? honestly, um, the books, uh, you know, it's cool playing a lot. Of, obviously chess.com just playing a lot of chess. Um, tournaments um, there have been fun every day. Um, you know, I definitely make at least a move a day. Um, but when you see those lessons, especially opening, um, I realize there's so much power in just uh, getting yourself really in a good position, you know, after a few moves, five moves. And so uh, really focus on that and then focus on just, you know, I, right now just picking something I like and opening I like and just uh, really getting, you know, expert at that and seeing all the different depths of that instead of trying mm -hmm. to learn all these other ones and be mediocre at it. I really try to excel at one. And so the Rui Lopez is one I always liked and um, I always like kind of putting somebody in a pickle early, uh, taking the Bishop up there and uh, making them make a decision. Um, especially, you know, if they do the regular opening, put the night there, I was like, all right. Yeah. And um, so ever since then, I was just like, really got good at really Lopez and dialing on that. So whites um, definitely a lot more comfortable with, but as you can see, black's been a little bit of struggle um, outside of game. Um, game three with the tiebreaker with Fitz. Um, and that one I decided to, um, one, he plays the E4 opening, which you know, I'm more comfortable with as black. Um, but instead of uh, him not taking uh, or moving, uh, I think it was like, well, use of the pawn up, he decided to, um, on the other side, uh, bring the knight out. And that's when I was like, okay, we got something interesting. And I, you know, he played it different, but I, you know, yeah. honestly like it. And so I uh, worked my favor in that situation. Um, and, you know, messed around, it worked out, but um, yeah, it's just, it's been dope, man, getting better at chess. And uh, now being a part of this, man, it's, it's an honor. And I'm just glad John hit me up and, uh, you know, just like I text him back. I was like, bro, you know, I'm ready, man. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and you literally, you saved the day uh, for the event. You did making making an amazing thing happen for the charity but before we get to that i want to i want to go back to one of the first things you said at the beginning you said you were watching amari and yeah. thinking that looks so much like so much fun well twist ending you're playing amari cooper tomorrow uh and so what are your what are your thoughts on on that matchup right you were impressed uh, with his play and what do you think you got to do there uh personally and this is no uh no shot definitely not amari um i did feel like um was it chidobi did i say it mm -hmm. yeah 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 honestly um he was in a great spot. I feel like honestly, he lost those games. Um, yep. And it's taking no credit from Amari, but uh, those are two huge mistakes after being in such a great position. Um, and obviously, how Amari finished it was huge and clutch. Um, and that was dope watching that too. But uh, getting put in that situation, I think it was a tiebreaker one. Um, you know, uh, Chidobi had it. So, um, and I hear from basically, I didn't watch game one, but from hearing you guys, uh, you guys were even excited about Chidobi and how he's playing. Yep. You guys praised a lot of praise to him and gave him his flowers. And so, honestly, I feel like when I look at it, um, uh, I'm playing the better opponent in the sense of the person I think I would rather play going into this. So, uh, honestly, the tiebreaker probably worked out in my favor, not going in my favor of playing Chidobi. But I feel like Chidobi had huge mistakes. But if he dials that in tomorrow, 
uh, he'll he'll be playing nice chess. And I feel like um, I got Amari, and um, honestly, I, I feel like I'll match up better against him. Fair. Well, we... go ahead, John. Yeah, I'm curious. Can you uh, you share with everyone what you've been up to since uh, since you hung up your cleats? What are you doing <laughs> these days? Uh, man, so since hanging up the cleats, obviously, I think you know it's tough for anybody to kind of leave the game when it comes to that. But um, I've always loved photography. It's something that I've always been a part of around. Um, and so when leaving the game, I had so many you know photographer friends and videographers, and uh, eventually, man, I you know not to two mile horn, but you know, I'm a pretty good looking guy. And so they all wanted me to kind of model some brand <laughs> they're working with. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, I want to shoot, but all right, you know, I'll, I'll stand in, help you guys out. Um, and then it kind of carried from there. Brands started seeing it. They liked the look. And then uh, next thing you know, man, I've been in front of the camera a lot more uh, doing a bunch of uh, modeling for different brands and marketing and stuff like that too. So uh, it's been fun. It's been a fun world and it's, uh, you know, here in LA and uh, so it works out. And then obviously since black lives matter, you know, a lot of companies need more color, man. And so um, it was a huge opportunity that kind of um, boost, well, you know, what I had to offer. And so, you know, I was here for it. Let's go, let's get it, I, you know. And uh, and then I picked up golf. And so now it's been cool kind of going the golf world, working with golf brands. Um, just finished this shoe with Adidas uh, Golf and their new Chaos shoes are coming out with um, and did a little campaign thing for them. But uh, man, I've worked with, you know, Xbox. I worked with uh, Fabletics. I've done behind the scenes stuff with, on Netflix films. Um, even recently, the um, uh, Colin in Black and White. You know, what I'm saying uh, some stuff like that for his Netflix show. And uh, man, it's just been yeah, kind of here in LA and just you know doing all that stuff. So it's been fun. It's been fun and uh, definitely a dope transition. And just having something you can go to and actually love doing. And it's hard to find when the game's over. So I'm just blessed and glad I found out. Yeah, it's amazing. And. Else, retirement looks good on you, man. That's quite the stuff you got going on. That that's ridiculous, dude. So, anyway, well, um, we know it was last minute and amazing, uh, and, and we can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. But talk a little bit about the uh, the charity that you're playing for, uh, the Spokane Speed Academy, and and what that's about for you, and and what that means to you. Uh man, it's one that obviously I was, you know, growing up and went to high school in Spokane, born in LA. Um, Cecil, uh, he's like the founder of it and everything. What he's doing. Uh, with the kids out there and the minority kids and uh, basically those you know where it's you know it's tough to kind of move on uh, educationally especially with finances and whatnot um, so not only is a great trainer and gets these kids right and um, get some opportunities to succeed uh, mainly in track and field um, and you know if anybody knows you know track and field is a great uh, great sport to do whether you're doing basketball football I mean it just assists in um, your other sports if that's you know, your main thing but obviously if you love track it's a great thing for track too but um, so yeah, my speed training, everything was done by him uh, growing up to see him still doing it and still have the speed Academy and still going, um, it's helped a lot of kids, you know, make it out of uh, Spokane and, um, and give them a better light and better shine. And then obviously the ones that, you know, necessarily didn't get a scholarship. It's cool that they also offer scholarships to help these kids, you know, further education, even after, you know, sports is over, let's say for them. And, uh, man, so it was one of those things like, you know, obviously I was frantic kind of thinking about first thing I thought about my dad's church. And then after that, I was like, all right, well, shoot and then i thought about that i was like yo it'd be dope to help him out what they're doing in spokane you know being a product of it so i love what he's doing back there it's awesome man super meaningful personal that's that's super cool well who yeah. knows what you'll be giving them right i mean it was it was going to be 10k no matter what maybe you'll take home the full 25 grand dude so uh this is this has been awesome i can't wait to see what happens for you tomorrow and best of yeah, luck man I'm, I'm excited uh <laughs> this is gonna be dope uh one uh, just to keep going, uh, whoever seen the finals, not to knock off Amari, um, but I'm really excited, man. I'm really excited to see how he plays and play it up front. It's definitely different than watching. Um, and, but I think, you know, watching them, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty geek. Now if I get Larry again, you know, I definitely want to get him, you know, heads up and yeah, do that again. So I'm excited. It was awesome, man. Well, get some advice from your boy, John tonight, you know, oh, text sure. about it, good, luck, good luck, dude. We'll, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, for sure. John, man, it's good to see you, bro. Uh, for real. Danny, hey, nice to meet you, man. This is so dope. Let's keep it going. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, man. All right. See you first. That was Will Davis, the man of the day. <laughs> really just shows up and just cleans up, man. And he is going to be in the final uh, with uh, with a matchup versus Amari Cooper. Can't wait to see what happens there. But uh, that's, that's the bracket before your very eyes. It starts at 1 p.m. Pacific with the Constellation matchup first that is not there, but that will be Eric Armstead versus Kayvon Thibodeau. And then all bets are off. Those four guys competing for the top prize at twenty-five grand for the charity they chose. 
tune in. It's going to be epic, man. John, uh, this is uh, wrapping up an epic eight-hour day of chess with NFL players that multiple matches going to overtime and and interviews it was a long day man but i hope i hope you have fun and um your your biggest single takeaway before we say goodbye i was just incredibly impressed by the level of chess we saw you know oftentimes people think of nfl players and they think okay they know how to play football and that's it and i think we really saw some players with some real potential in chess yeah I completely agree with you. And also real passion for the game, right? And I'll, I'll give my biggest takeaway, even though you didn't, I'll just ask myself. I mean, I loved like the amount of like con the consistent communication about life after the game, right? I mean, hearing Will's story, what he's gotten into with photography and then the modeling stuff, obviously Larry's kind of inspirational words about, I just love what he said about how he treats, you know, his story with his kids, right? He doesn't rest on his laurels, even though his laurels pretty impressive as a, as a hall of famer, right? He's like, look, if I'm still reliving the glory days, then I'm not living my life right, right? I just love that. I love seeing the players outside of, you know, the genre that they're known for as they should be because making the NFL is pretty hard, John. I don't know if you've heard, it's pretty hard. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I love that consistent story and I thought it was epic. So um, that's gonna be it for our group play. I wanna thank everybody. I uh, thank our chat for being so awesome with us throughout this whole day. The whole crew working super hard, not hardly working. This has been a lot of stuff going on, and we we had a great time, crushed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you tune in tomorrow as we crown Chess.com's first ever Blitz Champs champion. And until we see you then, have a good night, everyone.